in the middle of fixing my hair so after all this mess i came back just looking like uh, insane <laughs> um, so we're back and don't worry we're not as uh, frazzled as i appear to be um i think we'll we'll give everyone a, a check out dwarven moss hey how about that um chris siddiqui and aurora brown tried to take us down but uh we are stronger than ever and we will not let them destroy us. Yeah, I'm getting a note here uh, from YouTube. It said that we were too hot for YouTube, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, not us. Chris and Aurora Brown were uh, yeah. uh, too hot for YouTube. And unfortunately, uh, YouTube just couldn't handle it. So they kicked us out the kitchen, you know? But we started our own secret stream. So you guys here that are here now, you're in on the secret stream. Yeah, uh, they tried to take us down, but we um, got pulled back in, is that Al Pacino? Whatever. Um, so we're back, yeah, for anybody that is just tuning in uh, somehow, uh, we we did get attacked viciously by YouTube for the dub portion because they thought that we were stealing movies, but we weren't, it was just a hilarious bit that Chris City and Aurora Brown were doing, dubbing over classic films. Um, but anyway, now we're back. So let's let's freaking get the energy back up. Let's 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 do it, man. Let's. I haven't eaten all day. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm running on. Uh, I guess my body is just burning its own fat at this point for energy. <laughs> so we're doing it. Um, yeah. So what's coming up next, Mike? What's next? What's next? What's happening? Oh, Actually, that's how I remember it. Uh, yeah. So those folks were in our uh, studio before, but. They uh, will need to come to this new one. Cool. Let's work on getting them back. Uh, I am in the meantime, right I want to say uh, if you were watching with friends, give them this new link. And if uh, you are just joining us, make sure you subscribe because the next 12 days are going to be uh, live streams every day at 9 p.m. from your favorite Sonar Pods. Uh, and every day we're going to release something new on our Patreon from the participating shows for the 12 days. So uh, I believe we mentioned that I think Chris Locke is filming himself eating breakfast or something to that effect. Uh, Nostalgique is doing too many episodes. Um, on a Dark Cold Night is doing something for the Patreon that I uh honestly don't want to reveal too much i would love for you to be surprised when you get there so become a pod pal uh and uh you'll get access to all of that plus we released our new premium show today uh with special guest jay baruchel can you even believe it canadian icon jay baruchel pitched a podcast to us and uh wow. so you can hear that you can hear his pitch uh and uh and hear his his idea because it was pretty revolutionary right. you can find all that on our patreon patreon.com slash the sonar network become a pod pal do it come on become a pod um, pal <laughs> uh so later on we have uh we've got tons coming up so we've, we're gonna have that's how i remember it now in a couple of minutes let's let a few people roll in um uh, we're gonna have alessandra coming on to she's she's the co-host of that i'm watching a movie um, with Alex Kalenko, and she's coming on to take us through her top crushes of 2020, uh, because that's important. I think it's important that we all know who Alessandra is currently crushing on um, and why. What else we got? Oh, well, we got Secret Supper coming up right after that's uh, right after Alessandra. Oh, good Lord. Which I have just made my order to Shargel. So, you did? Already? Yeah. 
I can see Chargers backstage right now. I've made my order. I've scheduled it. I've scheduled it to arrive around 530. Oh, God. Um, so, Chargel, you've got some food coming up. Uh, don't open the package until it's time. A uh, special, nice, fun surprise. Uh, so, yeah, a secret supper where we, are, where five of us are all secret doing secret Santa, except we're torturing each other with uh, Uber Eats, something from Uber Eats. So, yeah. Can I tell you? I'm peeing my pants. I'm scared. Because of Griffin? Yes, uh, because Griffin, of Griffin. Because Griffin specifically said that he has a bit in mind, and I yeah, don't know what that means. I, like, I have, I'm so afraid that he's going to send just like a live boar to my porch. <laughs> <You're like, "Yeah, laughs> <eat> <laughs> and I have to hunt and kill it and eat it. Like, I yeah. don't know what's going to happen. This is insane. I am, my dog's going to freak out when the food comes, so that'll be really fun. I, I, I don't know. I don't, well, she's a hound dog. So honestly, if I do have to hunt something, she might come in handy. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> um, uh, I yeah, want so... to say, sorry, I really quickly want to say a big, big thank you to Stacy McGonagall, our creative producer, who is putting this, she, she is uh, legitimately the glue that is holding all this together and we could not be doing it without her because we're stupid people. I we're mean, really, dumb. in the we're head, dumb. we're dumb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and she is uh, brilliant and uh, creative and smart and tech savvy to uh, yeah, so, a point we can't reach. So, so we did get a copyright strike from YouTube during our yeah. last segment. Uh, and we all just scrambled in the last few minutes to get this new stream up. And very much thanks to Stacey, who I don't know if she can even hear us right now, but but thank who you, Stacey. But, um, you know, rest in peace, Stacey. Yeah, she's passed this away. Is in memoriam. Really, but you know what? The show must go on. <laughs> um, can I also say uh, some other things we got coming up? So uh, Truths Be Told is a podcast that was a very, uh, a lot of people loved it as a Lindsay Mullins uh, storytelling podcast. Uh, she ended her run after her after 30 episodes, uh, but she agreed to come back uh, for this marathon to do a like little bonus live episodes. Uh, so that'll be happening around 6:30 uh, today. So she was. It's called Horny in Quarantine. Is the um, the theme is the topic the theme, and she'll be having some great guests, including Shargel who is coming up in this next set as well. A double feature for Shargel. Double feature. Yeah. Um, and uh, I also want to plug that Chris Locke is coming on later on with uh, a few of his friends. Uh, Mike Belazzo is going to be there. Um, uh, Nick Nemroff is going to be there. I think he's got a few people coming on. He's got a few um, really fun people. And... I don't know what Chris is doing. Uh, I didn't ask. It's like with, with with Chris is one of those people that I don't need to ask. And I just know whatever it's going to be, it's yeah. going to be weird and it's going to be funny. It's going to be great. So yeah. it's that's something to look forward to. That's at uh, seven thirty. Yeah, that's seven thirty to eight thirty. And we've also got Selena Vile and Vicky Licks coming on later at ten to do their uh, Squirrel Talk podcast. Which um, small announcement, I guess. I don't want to. Uh, ruin big surprises, but we are uh, having them come on the network sometime in the future shortly. We, you know, we got a lot going on these 12 days. So, you know, hang, right. hang on, like yeah. slow your roll, but they are joining us and uh, that'll probably be sometime in the new year. And that's very exciting for us yeah. and them. Yeah. So basically tons of stuff to look forward to. Uh, so definitely stick around. Subscribe to us on YouTube. We're desperate for subscribers. We're we're juicing for it. Oh, we're juicing for subscripts. And you're definitely want to gonna, gonna want to be here at 9:30, where Alex Kalenko <laughs> and Philippe Dimas do the get Tom Hanks on the phone in 20 minutes challenge. I can't. Uh, which that. I have no doubt that they're going to be able to do that. It's it's a freaking shoe in. Like there's yeah. it's absolutely no doubt in my mind that they're gonna get Tom Hanks on the phone. Um, and hopefully ask him something crazy. I feel like it, I think they had a question prepared that I don't even want to reveal right now. I'll let them do that. Um, and cause I think it was inappropriate as well. So I'm looking forward <laughs> to that. <laughs> yeah. That's at uh, nine 30. So, so yeah, lots of stuff coming up and then we got Santa Claus coming in at the end to uh, answer all your 
deep, dark questions. Yeah. And then, of course, after at the very end, we're just going to play Quiplash with Santa. Like you do, as you do. Yeah, with, as you with do. Santa Claus. It's going to be fun. Um, we got so much stuff lined up. But uh, first, we're going to be doing uh, That's How I Remember It uh, episode, live episode of a podcast that I'm a part of. And I somehow have to have the energy to do it right now after this disaster we've just gone through. <laughs> hey, it's fine. You know, whatever. I'll start getting people over to this link as yeah. much as we can while you're doing that. So let's get to it. All right. Hello, and welcome to That's How I Remember It, the podcast <laughs> where we improvise <laughs> movies. How are you guys doing today? Lovely people. Doing great. Doing great. Doing, doing great. really good. Awesome. Um, anything interesting happening in your day, Mike? Anything uh, Anything of Not note? much going on. Uh, I was doing this live stream today, and uh, Chris Siddiqui <laughs> brought on some copyright materials, and my whole world exploded in a matter of moments. <laughs> <laughs> was it like copyrighted music? Is that what um, it, no, was? it was? the film RoboCop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, It wasn't something that, that, like, uh, get that like, stuck around behind them. It wasn't something that, like, just got by them. It was like, oh, how could we miss that? It was like, oh, we the forgot future. that Bigfoot is copyrighted and Bigfoot was walking <laughs> yeah. That's so uh, funny. I got lucky that we were, like, I was behind the scenes, so I was you watching see it. it all and I don't know that they knew it was cut off, so they was I know, the only yeah. one watching <laughs> their show? Yeah, Stacy texted me and told me what was going on, and she was like, "We'll just tell them when they're done." So they were just improvising for nobody. <laughs> oh, neat. I got the watch. It was a little show with Chris Siddiqui and Aurora Brown just for us. So. I watched it so good. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I just caught the end of it and was so confused. I wasn't sure if it was a bit or if it was really <laughs> cut off because I, I I showed up for the reveal when they were told. That things were <laughs> falling apart. No, not a bit. It was actually a living nightmare. Yeah, oh, that's no. so fun. Now, can you get past that stuff if you like slow down the audio or speed it up? I think it's a bunch of things you could do, like invert it, slow down the audio, make it smaller. Also, yeah, yeah. yeah but it's all first Next of all, time. you shouldn't, Chargel. And why are we talking about what you could do? <laughs> exactly. Because, you know what? Corporations <laughs> need to make money, and you need to shut the part up. <laughs> <laughs> now more than ever. Yeah, now more than ever, now we than have ever, to think about... Honestly, it's a COVID world. I, I also got to yeah. say, I love this setup. Shargel, you're standing. I'm standing. I, I got to stand. Oh, you're like a standing I'm, desk boy. I'm a standing desk because I got this uh, laps, laptop stand That's for awesome. free right. from oh. Nadine's cousin. Um, so, yeah, I just want to use it. Here, let's take a look. Here, awesome. let's, uh, this might be... Uh, it's really... That? Yeah, it's wicked. Really really cool. <clears throat> You know, while, while we, uh, uh, now that we've caught up and uh, we've given a chance for people to to join the stream, uh, yeah. why don't we why don't we play the intro and get our guest in here and start it up for reals? <sighs> All right. Yes. Okay. Yes, please. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are we gonna play our uh, RoboCop intro or what? <laughs> What's it gonna be? And there, that was a da! Liz. <laughs> Devin? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Music, rock and roll, dudes. What a journey. I am. Um, well, this is amazing. Liz Johnson, our amazing, incredible guest. And um, I'm going to say it, my best friend. How are you doing, Liz? Uh, good. good. So sorry I haven't returned you. The calls, John. Hey, you know, <laughs> in this time of COVID, everybody gets busy. I get it. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you can't return a call for two, three years, and it's yeah, fine. But you done. know what? We're best friends. No, too true, too true, too true. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here. I I came in at the same time that John did, and was like, "What's what happening?" The? Yeah. But I did <laughs> think I was witnessing some of the more meta comedy that I've seen in a long time. So, also yeah, I enjoyed I, the show. If it yeah. had been a bit, I was into it. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I wish it was. <laughs> Let's stop talking about it. I'm it's really over. Happy. We've got a new stream. We're rocking and rolling. Yeah, and I like looking at our, our video and seeing, you know, uh, Mike owns a, 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 a podcast network, 
and he and I are the two with the least professional equipment in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Raul this, has a great... This guy. You see this guy? Hey, oh, yes. Oh, oh, oh nice. Oh, yeah, you know, you're on are you, you're not using it right now, though, so why... You, <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> Be a long day. It's gonna be a long day. Uh, it's an Amazon Basics for, uh, uh, microphone. Great. Well, oh, nice. I bought how much? And now I have a fancy stand that that goes Ooh, like cool. it does this. Wow. Oh my god. Wow. Oh, nice. We talked about trying to get one of those stands while recording our podcast for five years, mm. and we never did it. Well, Connor, Connor did get this. I bought the mic a while ago, and then Connor got the stand. So we're now. How did he find that? What did he Google or? You know what? I think you can go to... on to. Um, did Nadine's cousin give it the to the internet? Him? Yeah, 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 and you can find it that way. Speaking of stands, I uh, so I got a laptop stand. So uh, yeah, <laughs> so you see it? Yeah. Is this how uh, this part doesn't go on to the podcast, right? The oh, visual no. part it, where it, we talk about it's, our... It's the only part that goes to the podcast. Oh, well, sure, just got and a then movie. And the movie just for us. I do uh, like the idea of listening to a podcast where people are like, and check this out is what I have. <laughs> <laughs> and look how nice that is. Watch this. Yeah. Yeah. The best part is people listening right now in the future <laughs> are hearing us talk about how we shouldn't play it for them. <laughs> because you know I'm what? not cutting this out. <laughs> I will say I did, John. I was listening because I haven't heard the podcast in a little minute. A little mm -hmm. minute, and there's some changes that have happened since I last was listening. And um, I will say, I listened to the last one with Trisha, which was so fun. Oh, it's super fun. And I just kind of happened to hop back through a few, and I caught there were a few moments. One in particular, where I was like, it was a, it was a, a long, long talk on uh, pedophilia, as I recall, <laughs> and how it should be cut out of the show or kept in, and whose fault it was, <laughs> <laughs> who supports it, and does the Sonar Network, and that was just like. I happened to scroll through to that one. Like, <laughs> and it was literally in the whole, the discussion of should we cut it out? Yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> but I, know, did. I don't think it's too late. What, what's your opinion, Liz? Should we cut <laughs> it out? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I'm not going to tell you how to run your show. Fair and enough. So indifferent to pedophilia. There, is, there, is, okay. a joke, there is a joke at the end where you're like, Whatever, it's fine. I'll edit this out. And it, it made me laugh out loud, for sure. Um, it's one of my favorites. All right. Things. Well, that does bring us into our next segment, Pedo Talk. Um, um, no. <laughs> poor Mike. For those listeners at home, Mike has aged 17 years um, in the last five minutes. So apologies to Mike. Oh, I'll stop yeah. talking about that. It has been a day. <laughs> yeah, you started out uh, wearing your onesie as a little playful baby. And you've slowly grown to the age of a 75-year-old man. Do you like my onesie? It's red and green for Christmas, but then sriracha for my spicy personality. Mm -hmm. Very <laughs> good. <laughs> I've been saying that exact thing all day. Uh, so. And, you know, it never fails to get a laugh. Yeah. And yeah. never fails to make sure I'll screen freeze. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Am I freezing? Is that, is that what's happening? You're okay right now, but it does yeah. keep freezing, yeah. There was a moment where you, you froze, where you froze when you were pointed the camera at your stand. So we yeah. got a real long. Look I think at the it. internet couldn't handle how good your stand was. So don't that's think that's true. don't show us it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> also, it wasn't a freeze. I was just standing still. I just wanted you guys to take it in. Oh, okay. Yeah. All in. Yeah. Uh, uh, doing all manners. <laughs> Liz, what what? Uh, how are things? How have you been holding up in this uh, stuck inside world? I mean, the same as everybody, I'm sure, you know, there's the peaks and the valleys, um, uh, a lot of hiking. Um, oh, nice. Nice. That was, no, that was just a peaks and valleys joke. But I, I got it, but I, I, I still think we well. could... It didn't go well. Uh. Let's cut that part out too, John, if you don't mind. But I, um, <laughs> what have I been doing? I don't know. I've been doing some online shows, which is fun. Uh, Sonar's previous home on YouTube, Bad Dog Comedy TV, has been fun to do stuff with. And Absolutely. what else? I don't know. I'm trying to make things Good. like all of us. I didn't but mean also... to put pressure on you. You don't. I know we're no, used no, to ha being asked like, "How are you doing?" You got to come up with. You don't you have know... to come up with anything. I just meant. Do you feel okay? Do, and are you judging yourself? Because you shouldn't be judging yourself. No, John. No, 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 no. Okay. Bad Dog's not our previous home on YouTube. We still love Bad Dog. And Sorry, no, no, I meant, but you yeah. have a new home on YouTube, which is exciting. 
Well, we are, yeah, we are. We're, we're pushing our own uh, YouTube I'm channel now. To, I'm trying to amp up the channel. Okay. Mike. Yeah. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. Yeah, I hope Bad Dog dies in a fire. <laughs> no, obviously, Bad Dog can be previous and not dead. It's it's also oh. going to live and be fabulous, but uh, oh, so is Sonar. Yeah, I'm getting yeah. a literal oh, nosebleed. Which one? <laughs> we, <laughs> you all decide which one we want to win at the end of the po uh, episode. Okay, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Um, anyway. I will say that I legitimately am getting a nosebleed. So if I have Are you to really? hop off, oh. oh my god, you guys, the weather. If you want to talk how I, I'm doing, who I haven't had the weather. I have I gotten three nosebleeds in the last month, and I haven't had a nosebleed in twenty years. Yeah, I, I don't. It, you're right. There's something in the air. Well, first of all, for migraine sufferers out there, it's yep. been a rough go. Pressure changes have been wild. Pressure and changes then, and in the yep. And then it's so dry. Anyway, whew. For, for those of you, you know, struggling, I hear you, I'm, I'm there. If you want tips, I've got them. Do you have any tricks? You know, the key trick is, and nobody likes it, John, but the, mm -hmm. but the truth is, and, you know, your, your, your ENT will say the same, which is, uh, you know, put some moisture up there before bed. Stick yeah. a finger. If you're uncomfortable doing that, which, let's face fact, no one is, uh, if you want to use a Q-tube, you can do that. Put mm -hmm. some moisture and then Vaseline before you go to bed. Vaseline, yeah. Yeah, seal it right up. And yeah, <laughs> it does help. It does help. What um, about like a blistex? Is that okay, or does to it... put in your nose? Yeah, yeah, you'll have, you'll suffer a different issue, but give it a try. You know, okay. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it'll wake you up a bit or something. Raul, what's the last thing you put in your nose? Uh, last thing I put in my nose is like not necessarily in my nose, <clears throat> but sometimes a little bit. It's some uh -huh. vapor rub because my nose gets stuffy, yep. and then it drains uh, it out. It drains it out. Some might say I'm a little abusive with how much I put it there. What? Who might say that? And who, who are the some people that say that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he froze. I thought he froze. Really yeah. like yeah. <laughs> yeah. really <laughs> no, uh, but yeah, I do. Uh, one time I was with, I was with Ashley on a, on a plane. Uh, we were leaving Disney World, and. It feels I'm like ahead. you're bragging about doing things during COVID. <laughs> it wasn't like, during one COVID. Time I was on a plane. And it was, it was Disney World. This and I was COVID. with another person. And none of these things are things that you can relate <laughs> no. to anymore. It was it was it was pre-COVID. No, but I, it, this is related. Yeah. I put I like she had criticized me for like putting a bunch, and I do put a lot of vapor up on my nose. Yeah. I thought it was like not too noticeable. We got on the plane and I was like smelling a fishy smell. And some people on the like are, like next to us were like, Do you smell that? Smells like smells like so strong, and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's like fish, right? And they're like, no, no, it's like vapor rub. What is? How, like, <laughs> <laughs> so you do you think you put the vapor rub too far up and it interfered with your brain and you started smelling fish? Yeah, I think it gets me high. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. Okay, hot tip, everybody out there, turn off your camera. Go stuff vapor up up your eye. I think you. Uh, I think you said hi, and <laughs> get yourself high as bum bums. Yeah, great. Charge, please. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really just don't gag. want your uh, your uh, returning audience to be greeted by uh, a blood um, bath. So uh, <laughs> I just wanted to pop off screen for a minute. Those of you who are watching. I really do hope I'm getting some <laughs> sympathy likes from the other nosebleed sufferers out there. So let me know where you are. Pop it in the comments. Uh, yeah. And mm -hmm. again, Liz isn't judging herself, so you shouldn't judge Liz. Send Liz. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On any of my... <laughs> yeah, you well, put up her email address then yeah, as well. Okay, yeah. Send Pop Liz. Pop up my personal email phone number. <laughs> Send Liz sympathy. Yeah. yeah. In fact... Let's do this. Can everybody email Liz a picture of you with a napkin up your nose? Be, it's, it. it is actually, come on, it's a it's a soothing lotion tissue. Of course. But oh, it's wow. funnier if I say a bigger thing. It is true. I prefer the blood. Thank you, Scarborough. <laughs> oh, my nose. Oh, my nose. Okay, well, you're going to see it. Uh, anyway, I do have, a, this is a movie podcast. I do, I did take a photo. Did you see it? Oh, my God. I did take a photo once. I had the worst nosebleed of my life where I, this is, I don't know why I'm sharing this, but it was like, it That's was the do. Godfather. 
I shit you not. I was, can you swear? Anyway, I was, um, yeah, no. lying, I was <laughs> lying in my bed and I woke up and I was covered in blood. I oh. were all my entire pillow, my entire sheet. It oh. was like, I should have woken up <laughs> because I was dead. Like I should have <laughs> bled out. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, I took so many photos of it because I was like, no one will believe me <laughs> how much? when I tell them how bad it can be. And, uh, oh, yeah, and it was, it was, it looked like the Godfather. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Look at right that's there. the horse, horse head, head and all. Yeah. For all yeah. you the horse fans the horse out head there. Scene. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was that, uh, was Green anyone got shot in the eyeball and then a horse head happened? <laughs> I don't know. Was anyone else around when that happened? Like, or were you alone? No, I was, I was alone. Oh yeah, can you imagine a partner in the bed? Like, ah! that, would be, yeah. that would be the, if they the woke up before you. No, just Liz lying her face. <laughs> what did I do? What happened last night? <laughs> I have certainly bled in from my nose, dear God, in intimate intimate moments. Oh, it yeah. can be rough. Yeah, one time I had this. Mm -hmm. We're I always have nosebleeds. I've had them while I'm making out with people plenty of times. Sure, sure, sure. Sure, sure, sure. And um, I remember one time it happened. You're known for making blood. out with a lot of people, right? A lot of blood makeouts. Yeah, only blood. But um, when that happened, I remember I, it was in university, and the guy was like, "Oh my god!" And then I realized it wasn't me; it was him. And I was oh. like, <laughs> "Yes, this is great. Don't worry about it. Oh, you needed to shoot." And he like had a panic attack. He was like, "This is oh my god, I can't believe this." He like left. I was like, <laughs> and I just could not have been more like, "I love this for us." Anyway. <laughs> was, was really now, fun. during those makeouts, though, does it like drizzle onto the other person? Well, usually, what? sure, Jill, thanks for asking. I mean, yeah. <laughs> this is a hard-hitting question. Really Don't worry, we're going to cut all this out. We're going to cut all this yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it really, you really do start to feel it when it pools because you're, you know. Yeah, so exactly. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll pool mm -hmm. here, and that's when you really notice. And that is that is how you do a lot of your kissing. Well, you yeah, get, you gotta, yeah, John, um, if you're not getting a, a bit of a limb shelf, <laughs> then you're not making Please uh, send John your sympathies. Um, yeah, send John your sympathies for <laughs> If you could send me pictures of you making duck lips. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Why don't we uh, Why don't we dive into a movie, gang? Why um, bother? The movie's right here, and it's called Nosebleed After. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, yes, I'm ready to talk about a movie. Sure. Uh, we talked about it a little bit beforehand, that uh, it might be nice, since it's Sonar's 12 Days of Sonar, live, Christmas, spectacular, holiday, welcome, sweaters. I think that's the official title. Uh we should maybe do a holiday movie. I looked through what ones we've done in the past, and we've done several, mm. uh, but we've never done the holiday movie, which is to say the holiday. Yeah, the, the holiday. Is anybody the familiar holiday. with Jack the holiday? Black. Yeah, that's uh, Vince Vaughn, yeah. uh, Jennifer Aniston. No, no, no that's uh, the breakup. Yeah. Doug Jones. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Jones, the famous VFX boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the holiday is a Nancy Myers classic. Okay, uh, you're seeing a Trip. incredible score from Hans Zimmer. Ooh. Oh, you got about some... somebody that writes about, well, not... and you have musicians, uh, composers in it. Yes, Jack Black, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm, fame, mm -hmm. the infamous blockbuster scene, which I yep. will be doing verbatim in this. <laughs> um, honestly, what is the Jack... to bat and beat, ooh, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. <laughs> It's when he's like. <laughs> That's when he pulls out all the DVDs and he's like, oh, do you like this one? And Scrabble, are you embarrassed by this game I've started to play? Which is the Gone with the Wind soundtrack. Yeah. And then he moves on. Oh, Driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> Great stuff. Great stuff. <laughs> pulls out Two Jaws. Notes. But um, there it is. John and I are really, <laughs> we're best friends. Uh, we are. I, yeah, I went to see The Holiday in the Theater um, all alone. But you know what? I made a best friend, and I brought them home with me. Oh, my God. Who was that? And that was himself. That was Liz. That was he me. Finally, I was there. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. finally learned to love himself that day. Oh. But The Holiday, yeah, it really is. It, uh, I will a, say um, it might, it, it's three quarters of my favorite holiday movie. I think the uh, uh, Kate Winslet, Jack Black storyline is terrific. It's incredible. I like, what's think, his name that plays the older man? That's a great question. He so plays a, he's the oldest man in the world. 
and I don't, don't know his name. Wilford Brimley? No, he's like a Don Amici type, but he's he, not. Yeah, he plays, he plays um, an old screenwriter. Who, like, you know what I'll tell you? He does. I watched um, the original Magnificent Seven uh, recently after having seen The, the Holiday, um, and he plays the villain in Brownface uh, as the, me the evil Mexican boy. Oh boy. Uh, which is very <laughs> crazy around. to see a sweet old man play the evil villain in Brownface. Um, Eli Wallach? No, that's not. That I him? think that's right. I think that's right. Yeah. I think it's Eli Wallach. Huge. That was a great huge. poll. The good, great. the bad, the ugly. There you go. That's wild. Yeah. Uh, but, oh, oh, my point was yeah. the Cameron Diaz storyline. I'm going to say Cameron Diaz isn't great in it. She, listen, <laughs> I've had this conversation so many times and no, she's not a great actor. But Cam, if, <laughs> but if sometimes she you're does. listening to this, I want to say that you are very watchable. There's a certain you know, a magnetism to you. So we're going to watch, but, you know, it, it is tough Yeah. in that film. It really is. There's like a moment where she is having a freak out. And John yes. Krasinski is the minor character. And what's her name? The other great character actor are both there like, whoa, she's freaking out. And literally, it's just Cameron Diaz walking back and forth quickly. And she just goes, I mean, my God. <laughs> it's so bad. I just, I, I was just curious to see if she's got any upcoming projects. So I just Googled Cameron, Cameron Diaz, Diaz. And the first link is, what the fuck happened to Cameron Diaz? <laughs> and, it's, and it's an 18 minute video, YouTube video. Wow. Fans <laughs> opinion that's growing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I hope the best for her. Yeah, I just I do think I, there's a lot going on. You know, I think yeah, there's certain movies where like she's well cast yes. and it works perfectly, but I don't think she yeah. got the the warmth out of this one that she needed. Maybe I think she's a good comedic actress. You know, like yeah. we enjoyed. We're gonna enjoy something about Mary. You know, we're gonna enjoy it. We're we're gonna the enjoy mask. it. We're gonna enjoy the mask. But <laughs> yeah, but. I yeah. Don't know. The Nancy yeah. Myers, Nancy Myers just in consistently writes Diane Keaton. Yeah. For every character. And when you can't have Diane Keaton, they have to do some version of Diane Keaton. And Kate Winslet did a wonderfully British version of Diane Keaton. Yeah. Cameron I, uh, Diaz could not. Cameron <laughs> Diaz did a poll. The, it does have in the, in this Nancy Myers vein where they they have to have a quirky, cool job. It is the weirdest one of. Cameron Diaz plays a trailer editor, a film. She's the world's greatest I love film film. trailer editor. So you she get, has to edit the film. I five forgot there's a the movie and they have Lindsay Lohan and who is it? James uh, Franco. James, Franco, James yeah. Franco as it just the biggest cameo, tiny, tiny. And they just yeah. act out this action movie trailer. It's incredible. I, and it and it's exactly like you picture. It's every movie within a movie, where they're totally winking at the camera. It's doesn't feel real. It's a joke. I can't stand movies within a movie. I just feel like that what part didn't bother me as much. Like the trailer thing, I was like, that's fine. But what killed me was that, and maybe there's a cut out there of Nancy's that has far more of this in it but there was mm -hmm. a and I hope everyone watching is as into the holiday as we are John um, <laughs> but there is a cut <laughs> um, yeah, it's very good love, very... Love him and... Rob Hill oh, Rob we're gonna Hills. we're gonna enjoy the mask. Mwah, the Rob. alternative title for Eyes White Shut. Very good. Just for our <laughs> listeners in the future that is a great comment great Rob joke. thank you. We're but, not reading all the comments out loud, but yeah. If you're th yeah. if you're listening to this in the future, we're talking about the great pandemic of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you leaned in. in the time capsule. <laughs> or us, fine. or us oh, watching. Wait, okay, no, but wait, listen. There was this. The part is that there's yes. twice, and only twice in the film, there is a voiceover that happens for oh. Kendra's character, <laughs> which is where, insane. where she, where, where the like narrator of her life comes in and is like. Oh my God! What is her name? It's like frig. I can't even remember Cameron. Yeah, Diaz. it's whatever. whatever it is. It's like Cameron, yeah, yeah, like Cameron Diaz is a woman on her own. Can she find love? Like it, it does the trailer voice. Yeah, it does her. the in a world voice. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then she's like, and then she hears it in the film. She's what? like, what? What? Ugh. 
Yeah, oh, that's oh. how she knows. That's how she knows as a person, as a character, yeah. that it's time for her to go on vacation and change things up. Well, it's she because she it, hears a voiceover. She has it on the plane. And then she has it in the tub. And then end of, no one else has anything like that. There's nothing like that for any other character. And yeah. she never engages with the voice other than like, wow, that's strange. It comes back and then and then disappears. Yeah. After the first 40 minutes of the movie, it's gone. You never see it again. It's three quarters of a perfect movie. So bizarre. Yeah. But of course. <laughs> let's talk about Rose Hill Cottage. Oh, now, my God. Charming. Myers heads out there are going to know what we're talking about. Nancy Myers, <laughs> known for her best kitchens. <laughs> you know, people go and look for houses that have Nancy Myers kitchens in them. Most of them are not real. Yeah. We all remember the Meryl Streep kitchen. From, it's complicated. It's Absolutely. Complicated. What a top kitchen. I mean, wasn't the storyline in that about her fixing the kitchen? A huge thing. It was her winking yeah. to everybody. We all saw something's got to give. Everyone wanted that beach house in that kitchen. You telling me you weren't a kid and saw friggin' Father of the Bride and didn't want that kitchen? Come on. So Come on. So Myers has a, has a wonderful aesthetic, which is treasured by white women everywhere. And um, I think <laughs> that Rose Hill Cottage, like, stepped it up because it was a whole little house. And if you go, anyone wants to Google now, and you go, yeah. like, the holiday, the first thing comes up is, like, cottage, rent. That's like, it. people are obsessed. But they How do I go there? Yeah. Uh, they yeah. built it for the it, thing. Um, we're going to start the movie anytime now. <laughs> Honestly, for a while there, it felt like me, Chargill, and Mike had tuned in <laughs> to a podcast <laughs> where you guys dish about <laughs> Nancy Myers. It, it honestly didn't... sounded like someone describing their own fever dream. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sure you're glad you're standing, Chargill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I apologize for the extremely long Nancy Myers. No, no, no. no, no. no, no. It's perfect. It's perfect. They, it they, they needed to hear it. They needed and, to hear it. And we're, yeah. we're going we're gonna to dive right into this movie. Um, you ready, gang? Yeah. Do you want yes. me to do some of the music from the film with my mouth? I, as long as you don't match the pitch perfectly because I'll get YouTube channel shut down. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'll be helpful. It's the only way to play the classic Zim tunes from it. Uh, Great. So you know what? You lead in, and then I'll do a voiceover leading us into our first scene. Oh, wonderful. I do also know the Kate Winslet beginning, but I'll just do the music. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we we have 20 minutes left. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> just before we get started, though, John, I did want to touch... <laughs> So funny. <laughs> okay, okay. I will tell you, this is very fun. I'm having a lot of fun, and every once in a while, I do look over at Mike, and I'm afraid that he's gonna be upset. So we got to move forward. No, I'm not. I'm loving it. I'm having a great time. He's, Mike's been talking all day. He is excited to have a totally. second where he doesn't have to be treading water. It's true. Yeah. yeah here we go. And you've been doing an awesome job, Mike. Oh yeah, Mike, yeah. Oh, this is Mike, incredible. honestly. Yeah, I mostly mean it's not I just apologize. me. It's all Stacy, but uh, like uh, Stacy, Mariana, are all you guys, all you guys, all everyone. Mike, Mike Stacy, yeah, Mariana. Also, this yeah. background is adorable. This yeah, yeah, this was made by John Lashinsky. Oh, mm, John oh. Krasinski. Does John Krasinski. John Krasinski. Another another small bit part. He made the sweater. We love him in the holiday. <laughs> oh, <funny. laughs> he, he is in it. Okay, I'm ready. Great, Jack Ryan. <clears throat> Here we go. <clears throat> Logo. And then the theme. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it goes. Oh, shoot. I already messed it up. Never mind. John, do the intro. In a world <laughs> where one woman has a job, we see her doing that job very well. Clack, 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 clack. Everything I know about love. Ever be, to be written about love is true. Journey's end at lover's meeting, Shakespeare wrote. And that's right, blah, 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 blah. But unrequited love, that's the worst. And I've hey, been in love with that man. I was just seeing you right over here. And I just wanted to say, hey, good job. I'm so excited to keep you at arm's length and as a friend. Hey, no, wait, no, don't, because I'm Kate Winslet, though. Oh, yeah. Hey, do you, do you, I have you... something very important to tell you. What? Please stand under this mistletoe with me so that I can say, Yes? Look deep into your eyes and tell you, Yes? 
I'd really love it if you could drive and pick up a wedding cake for me, because I'm getting married. What? What? Uh, no, excuse me, I have to get on a train. Now I have to walk to my home. <laughs> I have to go inside. Oh, where are my keys? God damn it. I'm just going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile in LA. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I think the trailer works perfectly fine as it is. I mean, it's a, just a movie. It looks good. Why, why can't we just call it a cut? Why, don't we, why can't we just call this done? I'm John Krasinski, I think. <laughs> Okay, I can't speak to you, John. Listen to me. My my boyfriend has been cheating on me, haven't you, Phil? Yeah. What? I didn't I know did for it. sure. Get yeah, out of the well, house. it's time for me to finally say the truth. I've been sleeping with me. That's right. <laughs> Your nemesis. Your Lindsay assistant? Lohan. <laughs> Your assistant, my nemesis, Lindsay Lohan, is in our house. Get out of here. You'll never get me. <laughs> Lindsay, why are you? <laughs> She's dressed in a full gingerbread suit. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes outside and climbs into Herbie and drives off into the sunset. <laughs> Herbie like rears up like a horse in the, in the, it, facing the setting sun and honks. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, honestly, I hope she's going to Ibiza. Uh, I don't. I don't mean to be a stickler, but uh, Ibiza. I'm. I'm being paid by the hour. You, what did I is, say? You said Ibiza. <laughs> no, I said Ibiza. Yo. I'm Cameron Diaz. <laughs> no, I. <am. laughs> anyway, I'm an editor. Now that he's long gone. I can't believe that I can't cry. <sighs> Not a tear to be seen. She starts Cameron. having a nosebleed. Aww. Oh, shit. <laughs> Wait, I'm listen. sorry I had to tell you this right here on Christmas Eve, but it's true. Me and Lindsay Lohan are going to be together, and I'm leaving. I'm sorry. Goodbye. You're not leaving. I'm kicking you out. Oh, but this is my house. <laughs> you wish this was your house? You write music like a doyoy. You don't oh. make the big bucks from movie trailers like me. Speaking anyway. of movie trailers, did you want me to hit cut on this? Or should I? Should I? Leave? I feel like I'm intruding. This no, point. John Lazinski. Don't you ever feel like you're just you're not doing anything in your life? You know, I I, I I should be relaxing. That's what they say, relaxing. I buy all the books on the reviews, but I never read them. Cameron just... Diaz is a woman. Who's <laughs> that wit's end? Oh. Will she be able to pull it together, or will she go to HouseSwap.com? HouseSwap.com, bringing you your famous houses, swapping them holidays. It's a ho it's the it's the holiday. What Honestly, you're watching the holiday. John Lazinski, can you just stop doing that voice for a I'm minute? I'm sorry. I'm I've sorry. Had, I've had a great I thought idea. I could trick you into letting me go home for the goddamn holidays. <laughs> I'm just I know you're paying me overtime to be here, but let's just say this is done. And I've I had can my go own home great my... idea. You stay here, look, John Lazinski. I'm going <laughs> online to homeswap.com. We tap, cut to tap, tap, tap. Uh, the sun. Lindsay, Lindsay Lohan, <laughs> as I live and breathe. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan, in flesh and blood, as I live sun, and breathe. The yeah. sun is just is just sun. pouring scoops of raisins into a giant box and putting on sunglasses. The sun, the sun in the sky, is what we're talking about right now, right? That's it, exactly. <laughs> the giant as blue okay. orb. Uh, you right, right. Why I was confused. <laughs> Up in the sky, the sun, right. the blazing hot sun up in the sky that Lindsay right. Lohan flew to. Yep. <laughs> oh, there's a part there I was missing. <laughs> did, did that okay. not happen? Yeah. She went right. up into the sunset. Cutting back and to England. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you back, Shargy. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, oh, what's, no. this? Oh, what's, what's this? What's this? Oh, God. What's going on? It's a Vaseline. Oh, the Vaseline, the vaporate. And his eyes. Vaporate. 
rub, 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 rub. I don't matter enough. Rub. That's <laughs> We cut to a side-by-side -side shot as Cameron Diaz and Kate Winslet chat with each other and read their chats aloud as they type them. Of course. So the four of us will be typing noises and Liv will be the <laughs> two people talking. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Okay, where do I want to go? Here's a verbatim line. Where do they speak English? England. Okay, England. Hmm, the Cotswolds. Oh, wait, I'm thirsty. Okay, shut down, shut down the website. Shut down the website. Homeswap.com. That looks cute. Oh, a delightful English cottage. Hmm. Hello. Can I get some tapping? Hello. My name is something, and, and I, 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 your house looks absolutely perfect. Could I come for the weekend? Uh, uh, I have to stop crying. Oh, look, a ping on my computer. Oh. Can I come to your house for the weekend? Sure, but I'm afraid it's only available for home exchange. Home exchange? What's that? Where we trade home and everything. <laughs> Meanwhile, later, you know what? Let's just cut. Let's just say the word later. No, John, I'd like to finish this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it starts to fade away and then it fades right back. <laughs> We trade everything. Homes, cars, pets, yeah. etc. Wow, sounds exactly like what I've been looking for. When can you come? Is tomorrow too soon? No, let's do it. Pick da my ding. ticket. Boom, ching. Boom, boom, wow, 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 wow. This is a printer. Oh, God. Perfect. <laughs> uh, we see a couple of planes take off and land. All off. Wow. <laughs> Excuse me, is this England? Oh, is this England? You bet you're right. Did you somebody bet. ask if this is England? I, I I'm can... English too. Oh, wow. Do any of you know how to get to Rose Hill Cottage? Rose Hill Cottage. Oh, did somebody say Rose Hill? I oh. think it's time for us to do our song, boys. Oh, they put it to me, sweet hat. Oh, you do walk down the line. Well, you can eat this candy cane. Well, oh, oh, you're going to interrupt me? Uh, uh, there was sure, no, I, no, I'm going to. I'm going to head out, but thank you so much. Well, what did you think? I'm sorry? What did you think of our direction? Well, uh, some of you were doing hand gestures for it. Um, <laughs> the majority of you were just saying bum 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 bum. Did you like it? Are we uh, are we gonna get into one of your trailers? Uh, what do you uh, think? How did you know I was a trailer? Can I know I you. I've get seen out of you here. on Time Magazine. That's what? right. Don't you know anything about British paparazzi? You Americans, paparazzi in the world. You I've got to get to that cottage where she said there were no men at all. Run, run, run. <laughs> Cameron Diaz is getting out of a limousine. <laughs> She's Hi. running across the field as well. John. But then after that. Thank you. Cut back to LA. Wow. Oh my goodness, a house. I've never seen one before. Pum, she pum, wakes pum. up to the killers. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, the song, the, the musician, music. Is there, is there a murder story? No, Mr. Mr. Brightside. Mr. Brightside. She oh, yes. up to the That's song, Cam, Mr. for sure, but yeah, why not? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Stone, to take you down the line. Wow, this house is now. absolutely incredible. I can't believe it. Oh, no, is that someone at the gate? Who could it be? Uh, she Ding opens dung. the gate, and Jack Black speaks to her now, and it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Hey, hey what's what's up? Oh, hi, hi, sorry, trying to figure out, fuck it, trying to get the gate, got that, fuck me, shit. Okay, got the gate open. <laughs> ah, all right, seems like someone's new to Sunset Boulevard. Ooh. Sorry? 
Looks like someone's new to Sunset Boulevard. Ooh. Oh, yes. No, sorry. You just drove away from the microphone as you said it, so I missed it. <laughs> but now you're here in person, so that's nice. Nice to meet you. Hello. Nice. Um, what are you doing here? This isn't my home, and I don't think it's yours. It's not mine, but it's my part-time job as a butler to this home. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, I didn't know there was a part-time butler. Hey, what, what's this music playing? It's beautiful. Did you compose oh. it? Uh, that's right. I came up with the bum bum part while I was in the bathroom, the boo doo 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 when I was in the living room. It's just some of these inspirations come to me when I live in this cottage, this L.A. cottage, as they say. Wow, it's so different from an English cottage. It's got so many rooms. Sorry, Amanda's not actually here, though, so I don't know. Maybe I could give you some, some of the things you've come to collect as a butler later. Or I just want to make sure you are who you say you are. You know what I mean? Because oh, it's you... like, you know, I just got here and you were coming here and I don't know who you are and I buzzed you in the gate and then I'm like, okay, do you, you know, do you want to come in? But then I don't know. And it seems like you have someone with you in the car. So it's a bit much. I suppose oh. I could let you in um, if you wanted, but not that I really should. You know what I mean? Should I check with Amanda? <laughs> because Maybe. if I don't check with Amanda, <laughs> it feels as though I'm allowing a stranger into a home, even if you're not a stranger. And you didn't even say your name. What's your name? Jack and if Black. I don't know a person's name. <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> then how am I going to know the person? I'm sorry, I'm talking too much. Anyway. Sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> Jack Black turns back. He was in the process of walking away. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Please, please wait. Um, can you come back tomorrow? What? I said, can you come? Can you come back tomorrow? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll be back tomorrow. No worries. What? I'll be. Let me just get a little closer. Hold sure. on. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's my tap dancing horse. <laughs> what was that? So, uh, yeah. So I'll I'll be back tomorrow. No worries. So, uh, just to make sure you don't need a part-time butler for today or ever. No, well, maybe I do. And when you come yeah. back tomorrow, maybe you can come in and clean up some stuff. Wink. Oh. I'm, I'm Iris, by the way. You're Iris? Like from Iceland? <laughs> what? We cut back to England. <laughs> oh, no I can't no believe matter. I'm finally packed in this tiny house. Cameron wow. Diaz is now named Amanda because Liz remembered her name. Her name is Amanda. <laughs> and I'm, Kate Winslet is Iris, which is Amanda accurate. Woods. Listen, wow, I don't know if I can stay here. It's cold and small, and I've already drank and drove on the wrong side of the road, so I should probably just go home. Blah. A drunken Jude Law bumps into her, and it's not me. <laughs> uh, bumped into me in my house. Who uh, are you? My name's Jude Law. <laughs> who, who are you? Uh, I'm I'm Amanda. I'm <clears throat> I'm I'm staying in this house. Wow! How did you get? Oh my gosh! It's totally fine. Come in. What, what do you? Uh, what I've do never you... been more smitten in my life. What? I've never been more smitten in my life. Daddy, daddy, um, daddy. I'm sorry. Are there children here? No. Children? Get out of here. Oh. oh you daddy. get out of here. <laughs> You kids, get out of here. You're so funny, Daddy. We love you, Daddy. I want a popsicle. Oh, well, well I, I've never had children around me, but why don't you two have a couple of treats I found in the fridge? Oh, she's oh, funny, good. Daddy. You should marry her, Daddy. Oh. Where's Aunt Iris? Where's oh. Aunt Iris? Oh, uh, I don't... Are, are you... You're her brother, then? And these are the nieces. Yes, I'm her brother. Would you like to have sex? Sorry, what was that? She's just asking saying, if you want to have sex, Daddy. No, that's not what I said. That is not what I said. I said Put a napkin on your face, Daddy. It's so <laughs> funny. Well, put a napkin on your face. It's ever okay. so funny. Okay, I'll put the napkin on my face. 
<laughs> Mr. Hank, oh. handkerchief face. It's I stick very, my thumb through the handkerchief. Yeah, it's very cute and fun. It is the the imagery is evocative of something much more troubling, but it is. Uh, it is see, if bit. it was actually a handkerchief, it wouldn't be. <laughs> it was just that I did <laughs> have one on large me. white napkin. So I really use my it. hands. <laughs> anyway, uh, I, I love uh, your family. Do you want well, to go for lunch? I'd love to, but you must know one thing. What? That my nose bleeds when I get too excited or intimate. My nose bleeds too. What? Yes. Mine too. Oh, so <laughs> me. And I'm a daughter. Okay, again, can you, would you mind, I just would like to have S-E-X. So, if you could go to the kitchen. You want to have the kitchen? Not That's with you, I is. want it with your dad. With your very hot, nose bleeding dad. Yeah, yeah. please stop talking about pedophilia. Yeah, that was it. I yeah. don't know what. Come I don't want you to. Let's go to the kitchen. Let's go to the kitchen and get pudding. <laughs> uh, hello. Um, hmm. Uh, I wonder when that nice butler will return. Uh, excuse but... me, have you seen my house? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you in trouble? I've I seen just... you. I sometimes forget stuff on account of I'm old. When you've been around as long as me, you, you know that sometimes you you seem like a very nice young lady. Oh, you know I've <laughs> you know I've, I've been in therapy for dozens of years and no one has ever put it that clearly to me. I am a nice young lady. You're yeah. my new best friend. Hey, you shouldn't judge yourself. You should not judge yourself. What's okay. your name, Iris? I have a, I have a second sight. I know it's Iris. It is. It's Iris. Yeah. Do you want me to walk you to your home? All old men can see the future, and I'm an old man. I well, don't lick your lips, sir. I'm sorry. I don't have any Blistex on me. I used oh. it all in my nose. Oh, I've done that. I've done yeah. that on the plane. <laughs> you yeah. got sometimes you have to because of altitude. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. We'll take, anyway, and the wind blowing here, the Santa Anna's. Do sorry. You know, the what? The Santa Ana, so in the winds that blow through LA is occasionally. Santa? Is that something to do with Santa? No, the Santa Anas. Some people say they bring good luck and change. Oh, you ever uh, bring good luck to your life? Oh, I, wish... I don't know. I've been in love with the same man who hates me, but but pretends it that he loves me. It sounds like you need something to blow some change in. Well, I need something to blow some change. <laughs> that's for sure. Listen. Have you uh? Yeah. Met anybody recently? Cutely. Oh, no, you see, I'm a screenwriter. Really? And we, we call that moment in the movie when two people meet each other cutely. The meet cute. Meet oh. cute. Ah. Oh. oh. Hi. I'm Who's back. <laughs> hey, uh, Jack. It was Jack, right? Yeah. Oh, my Jack gosh. Uh, this is my new friend. I'm sorry. What was it again? Eli. Eli. <laughs> this That's is my right. Name. It's my new friend, Eli. He I'm the world's oldest man. He has an Oscar. Did you know? Oh, um, wow. Anyway, uh, sorry, I totally forgot you were coming to my house today, but it's funny for us to bump into each other and, and, and meet so cutely. Are you that boy that's been hanging around here pretending to be a butler in order to get access to the movie trailer house's lady in order to become a famous film composer? Uh, if you're no. not, you could just say no. Uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm a, I'm a real part-time butler. Eli, oh, what are you saying? I... I don't know. I'm so confused. I'm an old man. Jack, are you, are you really a butler or are you just a composer? A filthy, stinking composer. The dreck of the movie industry. <laughs> That's right. <gasps> you caught me. Oh. Uh. I am a composer. Oh my goodness. A composer not only of music, but also of a lie. Oh. A lie sure. of being a part time butler. Oh, a lie. I, gotta, I didn't understand what he said, but I, I hear it now. Jack, yeah, a you composer hear it. of lies. Do you, a composer. Yeah. I think I could get over the lie if you were. I really like you for just you. And if Eli's taught me anything, you can't judge yourself. You what are, some of, what are some of your favorite movie tunes? 
You know what? You guys go and talk about it in that blockbuster video. I'm sure I'll find my house just fine. I'll rent you a video, Eli. You stay here in my driveway till then. Come on, it's Jack. It's 2005. Go rent a movie in that blockbuster. What? Meanwhile, in England. Oh, no. I slept with Jude Law. The, the sheets are covered in blood. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> What did you do? What did you do to our daddy? Nothing. No, don't look at me. Don't look at me. Where is he? Don't don't look at me. Oh, Oh, he's alive. He's alive. Uh, Was that as good for you as it was for me? It was. It was pretty amazing. I um, I'd never felt this way before. I know this is strange, but I've never (laughs) cried, and I almost cried last night because of intense orgasm. Um, I feel like I should. Okay, not. get out! What did I say? There's We're gonna a go get some pudding. We're gonna go get some pudding. Get out of here! Get out of here! I know you're cute. Okay, just ask wait him for to us. put a handkerchief on things. No, no. <laughs> All right, listen. I um, I'm not used to doing this, uh, especially with someone who has kids. That I can't believe you didn't tell me first thing when we met, even though they were with. <laughs> they were right beside me. <laughs> but I don't know. What are you doing for New Year's? <gasps> what, what? New Year's? Yeah, New Year's. You want to well, be together? Apart from maybe drinking some more, I'd love to maybe see you again. Really? I'd love to see you too, but I have to go back to L.A. So maybe we'll try long distance or something, okay? Here I go, getting into a car. <laughs> Wait, I don't have a phone. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Slam. <laughs> Amanda may have finally found something to live for, but is it her that she's missing as she drives away? Real or is it the, the, the change in life? It's the holiday. Well, you're watching the holiday. Oh, real tears. I have to go back. Stop the car, sir. Sir. Yeah. Could, could, could you start? stop the car and turn around? All right. Thank you. No, just turn it, just to... Just to... <laughs> oh, God. It's one of you again. I'm getting out. I'm getting out and running. <laughs> and we crossfade back to uh, uh, L.A. where Eli Wallach is being given a man of the... Uh, not a man of the year award. What is it like a yeah, lifetime, lifetime achievement? achievement. Lifetime. Yeah. Thank you, Jack Black. <laughs> I just want to say I never could have gotten up here if it wasn't for the hope that was inspired by my new friend Iris. I thought my life was over, but now I see that my life isn't over as long as I can help other people start their lives. Because oh oh god, I have a heart. My heart. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. okay. Let's get him off the stage. Come on. I'm okay. Okay. It's okay. Get the hell off. Just wait. Give him the thing. Give him the injection. Eli, if it's your heart, your left arm should be numb. Oh, he went night night. Listen to me, Jack. I wonder if I am. Have you ever been to England? I have once. Oh. Didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you just weren't in the right place. Like, where did you go when you were there? Birmingham. Oh, no, that shit. Come yeah. to me. Come visit me in Surrey. Maybe we could see each other for New Year's. In Surrey? In Surrey. So do, do we fly back together? Yeah, let's or... come. Yeah, that's fine. Or you can meet me after. You know, I can go ahead. You can meet me. It's, it's not for a few days. So okay. I mean, just because I've come across like a lot of like empty promises. So I mean, do you mind if I just pull up like here? Here we could just check out some airfares and no, we could just think... really just commit right now. Do you no, have a I, date? I, I, do you have a date I, yeah, in it's mind? New Year's, Jack. New Year's. <laughs> yeah, New Year's. Thing. So we would be going for the I don't know the thirty first for... land there and then have the the night On together. The... Okay, and with the time difference, because you know sometimes you lose out on. Okay, so we'll you know, go on, on the thirtieth. Da- Jack, just thir- come with me, with my family. Okay, I want you to meet my family. I'm in love with you. We'll leave Eli here. He seems fine, right, Eli? I'll be good. There I'll we go. Okay. Eli, we'll- <laughs> I'll find a ride. 
I'll find a ride with we'll one of We'll come back and people. see him. But Jack, I, I really think it would be wonderful if we could be together for the, uh, the next holiday. Holiday? Yeah. Um, I'd love that. Great. Okay. Smash cut to <laughs> Holiday 2 coming <laughs> 2021. <laughs> <laughs> Big hand hanger ending on that one. Yeah. <laughs> and then as, as a holiday 2 holiday comes two. up on screen, Cameron Diaz says, we want that title to be 50% bigger. <laughs> well, this woman's got a sequel. Okay, wow. That's, that's exactly how I remember how, it. That's exactly how it ends. Yeah. I'm very happy we got to that uh, blockbuster scene that you said you wanted to do, Liz. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> uh, great. Well, I mean, uh, that was it. That was the movie 100% accurate. Absolutely. So if you haven't seen it, you have now. Yeah, no, um, need, to, no need to go watch it. Just burn your eyeballs. Uh, um, because <laughs> watching... <laughs> Watching's done for you for the rest of your Honestly, life. Honestly, I do think if both Jude Law and Cameron Diaz suffered extreme nosebleeds throughout, it would, it would have, have made, made it difference. better. Yeah, it, it would have, have made, made the handkerchief make more sense. Why he's carrying one? <laughs> oh, that's a thing he it's does. Just a napkin. He puts a napkin on. Oh, his Mr. Napkin Head. Yeah. It's a paper napkin. Yeah. That's all I it is. It's a and cloth that's why, napkin, if, by if the way. If you look at the, if you look at the image of it, it's it's a bit wild. It's but a. But he does a funny wild. bit. He uses a spoon as a pipe. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's a good impression. Anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks so much for joining us, Liz. Yeah. Sorry, Liz, you're so funny. Yes, yeah. that was a lot of me, and I'm sorry to everyone. No, my God, I loved it. Um, so I good. If anybody no, so wants good. more of Liz, so which awesome. I'm sure is everybody listening, you can check her out uh, at Bad Dog Comedy Live. Is that what it's called? Well, <laughs> Bad Dog Comedy okay, TV. Well, Bad Dog Comedy John TV on YouTube. It up. Mm. Oh no, but uh, we're, 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 Bad Dog is on a bit of a hiatus for the holidays, but um, we will, if you want to catch up, I, I hosted a show called um, Our Next Guest, and it was very fun. Sharjal and Nadine were actually fun. guests, and it was super funny, so it was check so it out, fun. Our Next it Guest so on YouTube. Fun. I've watched them all. It's great. Yeah, they're all on the Bad Dog TV YouTube channel, uh, and they're, they're great. That, that show's great, and all the shows, are, we, do, we do some shows there, too. Uh, but there's so much there that there's yeah. tons of great stuff there. Go check and it out. Such a shame after that, you subscribe to our YouTube it's channel. It's such a shame that Bad Dog TV is no longer a thing. And um, <laughs> we've decided. That's not true. That's not true. I'm sorry for any kind of uh, thing I put out there that none of it is true. Everything All the Bad Dog shows are canceled. Okay. Just subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. Oh, Thanks so much. We love you. Bye, Bye everyone. Everybody. See ya. Listen to the holiday soundtrack. Treat yourselves. Treat yourselves. That was grand. I liked it. Oh, I liked it. Bye, my. Hello. <laughs> Hi. I didn't know how to do it. I started doing it wrong. I'm sure Stacy's like, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, no. Um, you trying to take over? Uh, you did well, great. You did great, Mike. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, thanks, that was fun. Thanks, dude. Thanks, dude. Now, please, this is my time. <laughs> um, um, uh, that was, that's how I remember it. Um, yeah, that was so much fun. So, um, so next up, we got coming uh, Alessandra's Vitae's uh, Biggest Crushes of 2020. So that's going to be fun. And I, I do have an update on the Secret Supper, which we're doing where uh, five of us are sending food uh, to each other um, to torture each other. And I've just got the alert on my phone that uh, Shargel's food is en route. Uh, so I can't wait for him to open that at 545 right after uh, Alessandra's thing. That's um, exciting. Yeah. Can you hear so me? I think, Am I here? I think, uh, think that's it. Yep. Yeah, so you're, you're here. Talking. We can hear everybody. Yep. Yeah. Everything's awesome. the best. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, uh, great. Yeah. So I'm, I think we're just going to jump right into. I'm, I think I'm lagging a little. And all I was going to say was I'm not looking forward to what I will have to eat. Um, yeah. Let's jump right into Alessandra. Oh my goodness. Hello. Hi. Oh, I'm so excited to uh, be here joining the Sonar Marathon with uh, everyone that the shows have been so funny today. So I know that um, 
comedy is usually what happens on this show. And so if you think like, oh, my biggest crushes of 2020, because that's what this is. I'm counting down my biggest crushes. And you're probably thinking like, like joking wise, but these are very sincere and honest and true. And they got me through a rough year. Um, but no, really, they really did. So I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to start. Uh, it's so weird. Just, just so I say it once to be completely alone talking in my room and then pulling up pictures of boys that I think are attractive. It's, it might be one of the sadder moments of my life, but you know what? It's all going to be, it's all going to be loose and good. So, um, Vite, let's get to, I'm also yeah. here. I'm sorry. Oh, I just up, you're say, actually in it. I, I can be here with you. I just want you to know you're not oh alone God. and you look full fire. You look so oh good. God. Thank and you. <laughs> I've been like boned up and revved for this hour. Are you ready so for this? I'm so ready. So whenever you just, oh if you God, need perfect. anybody, I'm here. We're in the chat and we are ready oh to God. just get horned up. I love it. I thought for sure it was going to be a matter of like me talking and then you sending me a, a, a little message. So this is great. I'm excited. Oh, yeah, I can talk right to you. So without further ado, <laughs> Vite, do oh your absolute goodness. magic. All right. We're going to get started into it. Um, so we got the first one up. Uh, it's a pretty obvious one if you follow me on Instagram at all. And if you don't know who I am, like if you look at my Instagram page for a second, um, it's Paul Mescal. So if you want to pull up some pictures of Paul. Um, he's from the BBC Hulu sensation, Normal People, which I found um, at the end of April. Wow, AJ just, <laughs> I really like AJ's uh, comment there. Um, uh, dur during Normal People. So basically, if anyone hasn't seen Normal People, it is a show that has eight minute sex scenes in it, like at a time and it's wonderful it's actually also very emotional and good and like all that kind of stuff the acting is really good the chemistry is good it's based on a book which i also read i, I was very literary this year you know i read i read eight books in the summer and then never again but anyways paul mescal he's really hot he's irish i never saw him before this is his first movie role he is just so emotional and soft and sensitive. And I, I liked him so much that I dressed up as him as a paparazzi picture uh, for Halloween, which we also have in there. You saw a quick, quick glimpse of what he looks like. He's got them deep blue eyes, but he's also just like very nice. Now, is he shockingly younger than me? Yeah, he is. He's 24 and it's very upsetting. And when I Googled that, and then the girl in it, Daisy Edgar Jones, who plays Marianne, she's freaking 21 but she has like a crazy long time to be anyways it's just a lot of information uh in terms of uh mixed feelings of happiness and like horniness but also realizing that the babies i guess um stacy stacy do you like paul mescal do you feel anything towards him um i feel everything that you feel i mean the sex scenes in normal people i think i'll take to my grave like they are <laughs> so sensual and you know all he needed was a place to stay for the summer and i just wish that he oh could he just asked. opened <laughs> oh we could have had sex all summer like i mean that's what i'm saying it's uh it's it's one of my favorite uh reasons why love stories like get in the way and that's because just pure lack of communication there's no physical obstacles in their way they're both single available they go to the same school both high school and college nothing standing in their way there's nothing i am gonna yeah. have you and paul mescal together oh, yes, yes. i uh forgot to upload that one so this is it's oh don't coming. worry about it <laughs> He's, he's um, very sensual, but do you think, does it bother you that he might be short? No, Stacey, I, I, okay. I only date short people I've, I've discovered. <laughs> short, like, short, like five, seven. How short are you, are you gleaning that this guy is? I think he might be like five, three. No. <laughs> I think he might. I, you I'll think he's shorter than me? I'll look it up. I'm, I'm of average height. See, this, when this you put it, so this was my Halloween costume. I just need everyone to know that when I um, saw this paparazzi picture in my mind, I literally like did a checklist of like, I have all those items of clothing. So I will be that for Halloween. And the Halloween was just the picture because there was no Halloween this year. But, um, but he was uh, so uh, great in the show. And he sometimes looks at my Instagram stories when I tag him. It's what? crazy. Wait, yeah. wait, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 wait. And this I've been like... tagging you today, but. <laughs> yeah. Are you freaking kidding me? Mm -mm. 
No, Paul Mescal looks at my Instagram stories when I tag him. He's not like oh an active god. viewer. Oh my god. <laughs> this, this is huge. But, but do we think maybe it's because like I'm like in the top 0.5% of fans and then that makes it feel dark in a weird way? I don't know. I don't know. This, this is huge intel, Vitae. Like, have you been sharing this on the gram? I, I shared it the first time and then and then I was, oh, 511, thank you. Anyways, you know what? Height's not a big deal anyways. I doesn't, but 5'3 seems shocking to me because I've never dated someone shorter. I've just dated people of height. So, but um, yeah, no, I, I've shared it. He is, um, he, he, and then he looked again when I like tagged him during the Emmys, which was a uh, great time, I'd say. you think he would be busy because it was the Emmys, but he's looking at Instagram stories. We should move on. Okay. He's not the only one. He's not the only one. But yeah, so that's that. Um, so I was him for Halloween. That's Paul Mascal. So this is going to lead to mostly British men, FYI. Uh, and so I don't know if you guys watched The Haunting of Hill House and then The Haunting of Bly Manor, but there was one guy in it that was, um, I would say, shockingly good looking to me, and it's Oliver Jackson Cohen. I don't know his name. I have to read it. <laughs> I only know his face in my memory. Um, there's something about how cute he is. This is going to sound outrageous because when you see a picture of him, you're going to say, like, that is a mainstream, literally blonde hair, blue eyed, like if you were to draw a handsome man. But I feel like there's something achievable about him. Like, I sincerely feel that. So I, if you can throw up the picture, maybe I can, I can explain myself it's a little bit. Legal. It's coming up right now. Is it, is it live? Okay, so this is actually a very beautiful picture of him. But do we see? Thank you, Sonar Network. I could get him. I need it to be um, on notice that I could probably get most. I just need, uh, you know, in the, in, oh, he's 6'3", since it'll come up. Uh, you know what? I'm not one of those people on Tinder that cares about uh, height. I'm not. And, and when guys write, if that matters to you, it doesn't. So don't worry about it. But anyways, yeah, there's something about him that seems approachable, and I like that. So he was in those uh, shows, and he had, like, a crazy thick Scottish accent in Bly Manor. And I don't know if it was good, but I liked it. Like, I don't think it was, like, maybe good acting. <laughs> but he is a very good actor, and I like him a lot. Um, he's very charming and hot. Uh, and then also, yeah, there's just a nice little blurry picture of it <laughs> at Netflix uh, original. No, but he... Um, He's just one of those people that uh, it's the reason why you keep watching the show. I'm not going to lie, because I feel like that show jumped, jumped the shark a little bit. But that's that's my opinion. But anyways, so that's it on Mr. Oliver Jackson Cohen. Also, happy Hanukkah to him because he's Jewish. Good, good for him. Um, okay, so, uh, okay, the next one. Okay, so just a big FYI for my next guy. I watched the first three episodes of The Crown season one when it came out four years ago. And I thought... I fall asleep every time. The show is too boring. Go on without me. But then this season, um, it was the Diana year. And I was like, you know what? Let's give it a try. I really like Diana. She has a beautiful soul. Uh, and then I saw the guy that plays Prince Charles. And I need to make a very big distinction. I have a crush on the actor, Josh O'Connor. I do not like Prince Charles. He is a monster. Yeah, don't say Charles, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Sonar Network. I never would. He is my enemy. He is evil. And listen, I understand. He's a sensitive man who was put through a system that no one could win in. But this is Josh O'Connor. Oh, he's gone. Bye, Josh. Um, Josh O'Connor is a very good actor. Uh, from season three, he's this like sensey little boy who then morphs into King of the Rats is what I'd like to call him by the end of season four. He is um, very charming, very lovely and gives way too much to Charles. Charles does not deserve him. He's also in this movie uh, on Netflix that one night when I had insomnia and I couldn't, sleep. he is not 6'1". That's shocking. Thank you. Thank you fairy tales for unwanted children. I would have, I would have assumed that Josh O'Connor was actually 5'6", to be honest. There we go. Uh, he, um, yeah, he's in this movie on Netflix where it's kind of like a realistic Brokeback Mountain. It's like a more emotionally deep Brokeback Mountain. I have a lot of Josh O'Connor pictures because I collect them like a little girl decorating her locker because I also think he takes very beautiful photos. So I just had them on my phone. So I thought I'll go through all of them. Um, but he's great. 
that movie is incredible. God's all own country. Yeah, he is exactly my type. Thank you, Sonar, for understanding that. Yeah, he's um, just small, I guess, is my type, apparently. Uh, but he's British as well. Who are these people? And why is Hubie from Hubie Halloween not number one? You know what? Whew. Over my head. I don't fuck with Adam Sandler movies on Netflix. I refuse. It's not good for my health. But anyways, uh, Josh O'Connor, great, great crush. Good actor. Watch God's Own Country. It's really dirty. Like, And once again, like long sex scenes. Wouldn't really call them sexy, though. They're... Physically dirty, I mean that like there's mud. Uh, let's move on, okay. Oh, okay, so this is like an old crush from back back in the day that has like come up again because of pandemic and uh, quarantine, let's say. So this is uh, Hugh Grant, just a classic. You could throw up a picture, but people know what he looks like. Now, sometimes I feel like my theory on Hugh Grant is like, maybe he's not actually good looking. And like, this is what white supremacy is, is telling me that I'm supposed to find this person good looking. And I don't, I don't like that I am into that, but you know what? He's too charming. He's supernaturally charming. And uh, my one wish is that he made more romantic comedies in his prime. And I understand he's given us a lot. Oh, that's Hugh Jackman. That's the twist. Talking about Hugh Grant over here, but they're both Hughes. My apologies. Uh, no I, it'll worries. be up in but a second. Hugh Grant, I love. Are, Do you love Hugh Grant? Are we a lot? I mean, he gets me every year in love, actually. Like the, the dance. I want to kiss him. He's very um, beautiful. Like he's just, he, yeah. I, I would, I would uh, live a loveless marriage with him because he would get me every time <laughs> with how charming he is. I know, like the Notting Hill of it all. Like, okay, I'm going to pull up this photo. It thought it was spam for a second. And I was like, how dare you with Hugh Grant? Like simply how dare you? <laughs> it might be spam. I'm no, it's <laughs> Okay, I'm, gonna put it I'm sorry if it's spam. But yeah, Hugh is great. He's such a good man, but not really. Also, there's a part in The Undoing. So guys, watch The Undoing, or also don't, because it really falls apart. But it's a good time for the first few episodes. Uh, where Nicole Kidman's just yelling at him, telling him what a bad person he is and how could he have done this to his the family, blah, blah, blah. And you know what? He's been yelled like that before. It was obvious and it was shown in his acting work. And there's something about that that I find very hilarious and tragic that I'm very into him. Anyways, I would probably uh, defend him in a murder trial too. That's my problem. Anyways, okay, let's do a twist. Okay, so, uh, oh yeah. Sir, that's I, I just had to put Hugh this Grant. up. This is it's classic so Hugh Grant. No his one hair has is, his hair anymore. His hair is shocking. There's a part in, Hugh, in, um, in Notting Hill where there's a guy who has his exact haircut that he's in a scene with, but his hair is not as good as Hugh Grant's, but it's like the same haircut. Anyways, it's fine at a very emotional moment for me. Uh, let's keep moving on. Guys, I only have 20 minutes in the slot, right? Do I have to like speed it up? I don't know. We'll find out. I think you're doing uh, great. You don't need to rush. Am I doing great? No, this is great. This is like, we need, we need this. I'm going to keep going. Okay. I just, yeah. Tell me when to stop. And then, I will and never. Then, <laughs> I will never. You know what? Tell me when to stop. Okay. Let's do it. We're moving on. Okay. Let's just, this is just a freebie. We got Hugh Jackman. He's a man of all seasons. Now, am I sexually attracted to Hugh Jackman? Not, not really. I just love him. I love him a lot. I have like genuine affection for him. Me and Philippe Dimas went, we watched him live singing what I would call a man's, we, we paid money to watch someone who turned 50 and was like, I can do a one man show, I will do a one man show. And then he did, and it was amazing. And he had moments where he like sang to his wife, like he did a whole like montage and it's just songs like that he likes, like none of them were original. And then um, there was uh, like an intermission and he just like played a bunch of clips of Les Mis Oh, and he played his Tony Awards acceptance speech. It's ironic, but it's also true and sincere, the love that I have for Hugh Jackman. And I spent over $70 on merch when I went to that <laughs> concert. Ah, oh, fuck, I should have worn it. You know what, I might have the, the two great, yeah, I have the two great here. Yeah, here we go. No, I can't figure this out because of the backwards. <laughs> yeah, that's the merch, we got it. Um, oh, and how many willowy British men could be on this list? There's more. <laughs> okay, we'll do we'll do a twist. Twist. Uh, Hugh Jackman, first of all, Australian, and he tap danced to ACDC, also Australian. Um, 
Oh, okay. You know, okay. So this is at the beginning of quarantine. I saw on Amazon Prime that Dawson's Creek was on. And you know what? I missed it as a kid. I never watched it. But then I called my friend who has seen the show and likes the show. And I said to her, I said, just tell me the part where Joshua Jackson hooks up with Katie Holmes. Cause I think that's all I'm interested in. Cause I got no time for Dawson. And so I basically watched the third and then halfway through the no, the second and halfway through the third season. I ha I didn't even get to when uh, Katie Holmes and Joshua Jackson do it. Sorry, the characters, not the human beings. Uh, but I really enjoy Joshua Jackson, but you know who I enjoy more than, so that's Baby Pacey. I enjoyed him, he's very charming. Once again, very charming man for also just being what I imagine, like just a white guy with eyes and a mouth. Um, but his wife, Stacey, do you have the other picture? That is the true crush. Oh, Her yeah. name is Jodie Turner Smith. And I've never seen anyone more beautiful. She's in a movie. Um, yeah. <laughs> She's stunning, right? Her skin is glowing. And I know that they put that lotion on it, but still that lotion's better than most. Um, yeah, she's in a movie that was, oh fuck, I forgot, whatever. Oh, something, it's Queen and Slim. And it's supposed to be very good. I haven't watched it, but I will because I find her, I like literally just like looking at pictures of her. She's very beautiful. Um, so yeah, Joshua Jackson, Dawson's Creek. Do we like Dawson's Creek? It's very boring. It's I'm sorry. yeah, it's it's boring. It it's there's some really good seasons one through four. But yeah, then, yeah. I don't like Dawson. I don't. No. I don't like their general vibe of human being. I don't. But but Pacey, good. Keep it up, Pacey. Oh yeah. Uh, cool. Okay. Oh, okay. So this is a this is a crush of many seasons, not just 2020. And he's hosting Saturday Night Live tonight. His name is Timothy Chalamet. This is another mainstay. Okay, so I, I posted this picture because I would like to get married in this suit, even though I also like dresses. But it's too beautiful. The color. He's like a little angel boy. But anyways, this is a this is one of those uh, like Paul Mescal is young. Yeah, there we go. And then we have to throw Army Hammer in there as well, who is technically the better looking of the two, but it's just. I don't know why it's more fun to have a crush on Timothy Chalamet, though I do respect how left Army Hammer has been this year. And I hear that's the reason why he broke up with his wife is because he's super left wing, which I really like that. And apparently she's right wing and he's like always like defund the police and all that stuff. So that makes me like Army Hammer. But Timothy, sometimes he's so handsome and sometimes he looks 13. So it's a real struggle, I would say, having a crush on him. <laughs> It makes me feel uncomfortable, but also whatever. Everyone likes him. And apparently it's a millennial thing to like him too. Like the young kids, they don't like him. It's like 30 year olds and up are into him. Um, and good, good for him. Dune is gonna be on TV. I don't have to go to the theaters to watch that, which I guess is sad, but oh, Army Hammer is way too typically hot. That's true, but he won me over because like when he used to be on Gossip Girl, I was like, eh, I don't, eh. But then when he was in like Call Me By Your Name and he got like a little bit like, I don't know, tanner? Is that what I needed from him? Just to get a little bit more tan? Uh, we're gonna move on though. So Timothy, love Timothy. I'm gonna watch Saturday Night Live tonight. It'll be great. I'll cry. Oh, okay. So uh, going on to crushes that are also, I believe, too young. This kid's name is Austin, Austin Abrams, oh boy. And Guys, I think a picture doesn't really do him justice, though he is um, a good looking person in pictures. If you see this show, Euphoria, which I think might be the best show I've ever seen, but also the worst show I've ever seen, Zendaya is very good. Um, everyone's really good at it. That kid is really good. And he has like the minute you watch it, you're like, I'm charmed, I like him. I, But like also maybe I'm charmed and I like him because he is the thinnest boy on the show. It's just so bad that this is my type. He looks so unclean, but that's okay. We're all winning, you know, but he's good. And then he was on, oh, the Manny Moore show that I sometimes watch. Life is this, what's it called? This is us. <laughs> this is us. Mm. Yeah, the, yeah. Mm. I'll watch that intermittently. And he played the abusive boyfriend of, uh, he played the abusive boyfriend of the daughter um, I forget what her name is. Oh. And he was very abusive and he was very, Damn. I hate to say it, like a very good actor. I was very disappointed that they wrote him as abusive because I was like, of course, of course, the actor that I got excited to see is the is abusive boyfriend on the show. I've, sorry? No, no, I was, I was just going, <laughs> no, hmm. no, I was just going, hmm, as I was looking at his picture. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 
I think you gotta look. You gotta watch Euphoria. You'll be into him. He, he's Barbie Ferreira's love interest, and that makes me like him even more. Um, but yeah, literally every man on This Is Us is a beautiful, like, this is how a man is supposed to behave and they learn from their actions. And I'm like, yeah, Milo Ventimiglia, he's super hot. And uh, uh, what's his name? The hot guy who's on the show as well. The guy that was, oh, Kay Sterling Brown, he's super beautiful, but uh, they don't do it for me. And it's like, yeah, give me the abusive boyfriend. Uh, would you consider Miguel Angel Sylvester of Sense8? You know, I've never seen Sense8, Sense8 or Spain's Velvet. So I feel like maybe I would consider him. How thin is he? Is he British? Let's move on. <laughs> um, oh, okay. Now we're going to the honorable mentions category. So these are guys that are just like, they're in the, they're in the space and they just helped me get through this year. Um, Jamie Dornan, guys, look at that face. It's so weird that in his biggest, most famous movie, Fifty Shades of Grey, he's not hot in it. I, VK, thank you. Yeah, like he's not hot in it at all. No. He's too clean shaven mm -hmm. and so physically uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. that, did we watch a movie where two people were forced with money? Like <laughs> when we watched I, Fifty Shades? I, yeah, because I can't imagine him in that like smacking a butt and being like, do what I tell you. It was just, <laughs> I didn't believe it. I was so excited for Fifty Shades because I refused mm -hmm. to read the book, but I needed to know what was so kinky okay. and what everyone was turning, like, what's going on here? So I I was dating <laughs> I had my, my boyfriend at the time, Ben. He's a good, he was a good boyfriend. He came with me. We watched it in IMAX, so we dropped like 20 bucks <laughs> each. <laughs> yes. I needed to. I needed to know. And I was like, well, if I'm going to see a movie, I'm going to see it in IMAX. And then it's like light slapping. Mm hmm. Agreed. But then normal people takes it there. So normal there's people no takes excuse. it there. I know. I and she gets totally naked. And we with him we see his what do we call it. Oh no, Vite is frozen. She will come back. I think she was gonna say. Oh. Oh, you're back. You're back. I was I back. Think, oh, just I as you're about to say penis and I, or whatever, <laughs> Dick, and then you froze. And I was Actually, like, no. <laughs> What I said, yeah, they don't want me to swear. I actually said pubic bone, pubis mound is what oh, I said. Oh, pubis mound. You, uh, because I don't believe you see any penis. You just see like the slant of where a penis is about to be. Lame. And she's completely naked and they didn't like each other, which is a shame because once again, he's a good follow on Instagram. He okay. dresses up in like his daughter's clothing and like plays with her toy instruments. He's good done. Oh, okay. Jesse Williams. You just have to throw him in there. He's so handsome. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I barely, I, you know what, to be honest, I don't watch Grey's Anatomy anymore. I watched the first like three seasons when I was, I don't know, 14. That show's been on for a long time. And uh, he is just so pleasant to look at. And once he accepted an award at the BET Awards, and he had the most amazing speech in the history of speeches, where it was basically like, if you're gonna critique Black Lives Matter, and this was like three years ago, this wasn't this summer. And he was like, if you're gonna critique the Black Lives Matter movement, but you don't have any like knowledge of our history, sit down. And I was like, yes, yes, Jesse Williams. So I like him a lot, I think he's really hot. I think he stands for things. I've heard, I've heard like snitches of him not being very nice to women, but I'm just going to Ignore that because guess what? I imagine Hugh Grant, the slant of her penis is about to be, yes. I heard that Hugh Grant is probably mean to women. You know what? I think it's safe to say that all the men on this list might be mean to women except for Hugh Jackman. Yeah, I'll take it there. Okay, another honorable men mention, Jeremy Strong or Kendall Roy from Succession. Just in this picture, yikes. This is great. Wow. Gray hair. Yeah, he's, right? He's unrecognizable, but I love this. Yes, isn't it stunning? It was yes. for the Emmys. He, uh, this is when they did a spotlight on the Emmys, and he won the Emmy, and he's very good, and I love Kendall Roy. Ooh, when he raps at his dad's, like, retirement party or whatever that was, he's great. He, he might be, Kendall Roy might be the, like, the, definition like the through line for all the men that i have crushes on they all share kendall royisms and isn't that and i admit it it's fine they're all wiener boys i admit it it's good uh oh robert pattinson you have to mm -hmm. throw up 
our past. That's a great I like this art. Yeah. Me too. I was like, is this going to be my new iPhone background? Because it's, it's really cute. <laughs> I just think that his performance in Twilight was 100% like meta. Like he was never really in the movie. And I appreciate that about our pets. And he's adorable and he's funny. I don't know. I think he was made for my genre of man. British, white, thin. Isn't this sad? Okay. Oh, I've got one more. We got one more. Sasha, Baron, Cohen. I just think he's very handsome. I don't like 100% agree with his comedy, but I also don't hate his comedy. I'm somewhere in the middle. I, but I'm I think that, on your page, that's so yeah. True. He's so handsome though, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it's really funny when he plays Borat that he must like shave this part of him so that he uh, like has hair, but he doesn't have sideburns, and it's very funny. <laughs> I don't know why that's so enjoyable to me, um, but yeah, that guys, that if was my pick. List. But if you yeah. had to pick but one, like this is like an extensive rundown of very sexy men. And yeah. but if they're all in a tent, like who's surviving? See, this is hard because I, know. I have um, very, uh, I'm very fickle. Mm. So like there are some people that it's easy for me to like not think about. The ones that are in like the top three would be Paul Mascal, Oliver Jackson, Cohen and Josh O'Connor. Really? Yeah, Josh O'Connor, maybe Josh O'Connor, which is like the dark horse of the crew. He, I really like what that guy does. <laughs> I think he's such a good actor. I mean, I think that's a good call. They're all, those are all really sexy picks. Yeah, you know, what are you gonna do? Just, this is my locker and I just put up all the pictures of these men. <laughs> I will say, I know I'm a weird voice with no face, but Vite gives the best kissing show suggestions and the best crushes to have. I do. I like, I really um, well, well, okay. So with my podcast that I do with Kalenko, mm -hmm. uh, I'm watching a movie for everyone out there. Um, I realized while watching all those movies that I formed my sexual identity through film, which I don't think mm -hmm. I'm alone. I think a lot of people. And it's just a, I just really put that on Kalenko every week when we watch a movie and I go crazy because I was like, this is the movie where I love that guy. And so yeah, I don't know. But he's guys. very you supportive. Won't... He's supportive and you're not wrong. You will not, not steer anyone clear. I'm yeah. not wrong. I think, I think I like them for genuine and true reasons. Sure. <laughs> 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 guys. Can I just thank you so much for allowing me to do this? It was a, a, such a pleasant compilation of finding pictures and uh, talking. Vite, anytime you want to come back and talk about <laughs> sexy little beefcake British boys and the shows with the best sex scenes, don't even ask. I, of course. I won't ask. <laughs> we refuse to ask. <laughs> don't even ask. It is demanded that you do it. It's the oh, best. I can do it. I, you know what? At the end of the day, I think I... I like I like impale. What are, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I like impale. What That's are you a gonna? Great quote. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I wouldn't even say white. Just like sallow, like unwell yeah. looking. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah. But anyways, uh, where, where can it, people follow you? Oh, they're gonna follow me on Instagram at at Alessandra the Vite. That's on Instagram, and then on Twitter it has to be shorter, so it's Al the Vite. Uh, and then please listen to our podcast at Shh, I'm Watching a Movie. Uh, and then on, on Twitter, I think we're just Shh underscore movie. And then on Instagram, we're Shh, I'm, a, I'm watching a, that's what it is. Just type, in, just type it in, you'll find us, we're there. Great, yeah. well, thank you so much. And we'll put all thank the links you. below so everyone can follow and subscribe because it's really, truly a hilarious podcast that everyone needs to listen to. And you're going to be back on the 12 Days of Sonar watching. I'm going to be back. Flick, so that's exciting. I mean, I'm going to chill with Lindsay. All right, I'll see you guys later. Uh, bye. <laughs>
Do you know what she is? She's like, she's like, I don't know. You know how like in high school, this is a generalization, but like, I feel like in high school, there were girls that were kind of boy crazy or something. She's like that, but in the most um, like lovable way. I am I'm obsessed she's, with it. She's the best. She's just truly <laughs> the best. And we like, we are all, the internet is so thankful for her and just really giving us like a boned up horny little 5 p.m. Oof, oof, oof. My, Honestly, that favorite? got my juices going. That got me energized for the rest of this thing, I think. Who's your favorite, would you say, from her list? I'm too embarrassed to say. What? All, of, because, these, all of them are so hot. No, they are all so hot. But I have to say that, unfortunately, Timothy Chalamet does look 13. And I'm embarrassed to say. Ew, what? Now I don't like that picture. No, that suit like is gorgeous, picture. but she's I don't right. Like this picture. That suit it's is everything. It's a beautiful suit, but his cheekbones, his cheekbones are too sunken. He looks like mm. he's been starving for the last six months. Okay, well, I will tell you. For me, I've been rewatching Dawson's Creek, and this is my whole vibe. And no one can come at me about it. This is delicious. Sasha Baron Cohen's so delicious. I, maybe Paul Maybe Delicious. I'm an old fart or something, but uh, I can't let go of my crush on two people. One is Mark Ruffalo in the olden days. I mean, he, he has aged well, I will say. Wow. Sometimes very well, sometimes not great, but for the okay. most part, really well. And also, um, Kate Blanchett is the most beautiful creature on this planet. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Those are good polls. Those are interesting polls that I'm glad are here, but I wouldn't have thought of um, Mark Ruffalo. That's such a spin. Yes. But yeah, you're right. He's attractive. He's mm -hmm. rugged. Mm -hmm. And Kate Blanchett is just so classic. She's gorgeous too. Mike, who's who's your favorite in the list? Um, Timothy Chalamet. You, okay. You love a purple suit. We love that. There's no so way that's true. So coming up now, um, we have Secret Supper. Do we have a Secret Supper update? What's going on with that? I'm. Do let's let's get Mike. Let's get the 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 participants back here in the backstage. Um, yeah, none of them are here yet. So. Yeah, let's advance. start gathering. And in the meantime, I mean, I don't want to show what I have received yet, but I will say that I do not believe it came from a restaurant. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's really nice but that's really nice that is all i will say for now um michael uh have you received something i have received something i, I don't want to say anything about it i'll wait till everyone's here but i did receive something uh Charles okay. delivery was having some issues so i hope he got it oh have, have okay. we heard back from the supper crew that they have received Yes. Some of us have. Yeah, most of us have, I think. So just to reiterate, we are, uh, if you're tuning in now, we are, we have ordered each other. There are five of us, me, Mike, Chris Wilson, Griffin Toplitsky, and Shargel Rasul, and we've ordered each other food to eat, and we don't know what's inside. So um, I think most of us have received our orders. I have gotten mine, Mike got his, I believe Chris uh, and Griffin should have gotten theirs. Shargel may or may not be delayed, but uh, let's give them a few minutes anyway to get in here, and then we'll start showing off our goodies. That's a how are you way. all? How are you all feeling so far? I mean, we've really had a full day. We're coming in now at five and a half. Yeah, we're we're bumping up at the halfway point. Oh my god, I feel, I feel like oh, we're almost done, but not even halfway. <laughs> it's only five thirty. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's dark outside. I feel like I could fall asleep at any moment. No, next time we yeah. are going to do a twenty four hour marathon, though. Yeah, uh, that's next time, though. Now, just to reiterate, Mike was very excited by the twelve hour, and you were like, "I want to do it. I think this will be fun." How are you feeling now about this choice? I I still think it's fun. I think it's a, a good way to just have fun and get as many people, fun people in the community involved all at once in one big blast. Um, so yeah, no regrets except for having to be 
having myself to be a part of so much of it is exhausting. (laughs) You did schedule yourself into a lot of things. And I I think just for like, sort of uh, the sake of uh, making the schedule a little easier, but you must be tired by now. (laughs) Yeah. I will say yep. you are killing it. Um, yeah, uh, are. My my top knot does look like this. I will not adjust. We will not fix. Um, you I don't never to- apologize for a top knot. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Get on the Bachelorette already. Um, no, and Marianne, how are you feeling about everything? I'm good. I got a little bit of rest. I was enjoying uh, Vite's uh, top crushes. I was laying back and watching and it was uh, relaxing, I must say. It was kind of nice to just be whisked away. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's really inspired me to maybe start watching normal people again, pick that up, get some like, you know, get some sexiness up in my living room while I'm I'm wearing a Hanes sweatshirt sweating profusely. I think it's time. I think it's time. Light a candle. Light a candle, draw a bath, make some tea. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Also, I have an update on our first stream. Yeah. Oh, yes. Let's hear it. Um, so it is still available. Um, YouTube, it was just like, hey, hey, girl, it's okay. Um, it can stay up now. And so it's still up for your viewing pleasure. Um, you can see where it goes awry. Um, and it's very fun. And it's it's up there now for your enjoyment, everyone. Yeah, uh, for those who don't know, for those who don't know what happened, uh, we got a copyright strike or we got uh, shut down because of copyright we were showing. Chris Siddiqui was and Aurora Brown were doing a fun little like they were dubbing over the movie RoboCop and they were doing some film dubbing thing. And it was yes. so funny. I was laughing so much. It and was really funny. Stream got shut down. So uh, lesson learned. Lesson learned, but YouTube was really nice about it. And they were like, hey, this is like actually not a big, this is just, you know, it's just not a huge, it's not a huge shenanigan. We're not infected. Apparently our channel impact is we are not affected. How nice is that? It's, you know what? It's a holiday miracle. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Okay, so we do have one participant here. Shall we bring them onto the stream? Shall we wait till everyone is here and ready? I say uh, let's bring him in. Let's bring him in. All right. Well, we have the the lovely and wonderful Mr. Uh, Chris Wilson. Hi. Oh, that's what I look like? <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Which way? What is your preferred way to flip your hair? I don't know. It's got a, there's a mirrored thing happening right now. It's freaking. Oh, yeah. There's so when you guys see sonar, it reads sonar or is it backwards? behind me no, no it all reads the, right all of that reads right except for something with me is mirrored yeah cool but it doesn't matter i mean you just have a different version of me it's, it's more like a dark timeline me yeah yeah you got evil chris now mirror world oh, no. well now we have uh i'm gonna remove <laughs> myself and just become a little voice because now we have a griffin and are you ready to come in griffin or do you need a sec oh there he is hello are you uh, decent? Am I audible? Yep. Yes. Perfect. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Cool. This All is right. exciting. Oh. Has everyone so, received something already? Let's not show it yet, but let's oh, I, 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 And I I know, uh, so uh, it's it was on the outside, uh, like the name of the restaurant. Oh, yeah. I figured that some, yeah, you you're going to know where it's from. Oh, that's okay. I think um, I've, I know it from it. I've made some guesses uh, based on that of what my experience is about to be. Oh. Yeah, I think I think <laughs> your guess is probably just you know it's just dead on. Yeah. <laughs> so let's um you know we we won't mention which restaurants because we don't want to shit on anyone, but we can mention sort of uh, maybe uh, once we open up the containers uh, the the person who ordered the thing can say what it is, uh, or you can guess. Maybe we can guess. I'm a little concerned about mine, um, cause I don't, right. it doesn't, <laughs> I mean, I will show everyone what came to my door. And in fact, they didn't leave it on the porch. They knocked on the door and they said, for Griffin. And I said, <laughs> yeah, and they handed it to me and it did not look like it came from uh, an establishment. 
<laughs> it looks like <laughs> it looks like you packaged something and sent it to me or something. I don't so know what you happened. could do that. A homemade thing. I will say a little peek behind the scenes. That one thing I know is that Griffin texted me early, early today to say, uh, "Can you let me know who I have as soon as you know?" Because I have a whole thing planned. <laughs> so, <laughs> I so yeah. So I had to plan out what restaurant I was going to get you something from, and then I had to order from it. Uh, and it sounds like the guy brought it to your door, which is awesome. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that is good service. Right. Yeah. Okay. We've got Shargel. Like yeah, Shargel's here. And he's in a different location oh. this time. And oh, he's that's crouched. Cool. Look at this, Shargel. You look so rich. <laughs> Thank oh, you. <laughs> it's a... I looked at that differently. I thought you had a massive tie. but that's... <laughs> <laughs> Like here, right? There we go. That was like a nice little tie. Like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. That's so funny, right? There it is. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Big, wide tie. That, that is a a tie, nice, right? very tight. Le Chateau tie. Hey, you got color. some plants behind you, some rich mahogany I see back there. And guess what? And a floating bicycle. Oh, and a floating heart. bicycle. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. And um, how do you get it? Up San Francisco. <laughs> San, Fr San Francisco. San Francisco. Right. Is rich. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. Where's yeah. Rachel, uh, yeah. can you tell me what are the scents of candles behind you? Are those candles in jars? Oh, jars. Only jar. No candles. Are the cool ones? Oh. They're there just jars is... full of stuff. You can Where's throw a the... flame in anything. There... Yeah. <laughs> there is a menorah somewhere. So. <laughs> For real. <laughs> We've been lighting you. What about a scented menorah? And every That's candle has a different smell every night. Every single and it's a surprise. Uh, what candle are we that sounds lovely. On the menorah. Yeah, that could be huge. I think that could be huge. That's a good you should go to the shark tank. Yeah. Or Dragon's Den. Or Dragon's Den. You know, Depends on where you're from. Yeah. Yes. Or Rat's Nest, which is a new podcast. Check yeah. out Greco. Check it out. Um, <laughs> what is that for? What? 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 The new Rat's Nest podcast. What? What is it? <laughs> what, what it is? What was the question? I think it was what, what company is that for? I'm country. not sure. Not what this one. Is. We're not talking about it oh, anymore. The country. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the country. Yeah. Yeah. Got it, got it. I have no idea. Yeah. I mean, Jacob Greco made it. We should ask him. Well, Montreal. Yes, yes. the it's country of the country Montreal. Um, who, well, where did Shark get rich? Oh, great question. Who? That's me. Who uh, where? Rich? Yeah. Um. So, who, where, what did? So, who is me? And then the where is um, uh, uh, tech stocks, and what <laughs> money? So there we go. Hopefully that answers all three. Oh, um, cash rich. Yeah. Cash. So, Fully cash, yeah. Let's get into first impressions, okay? So, Shargel's food came, and I don't know where it's from, I don't know anything about it, but it smells good. And I was like, this... Interesting. I, I, because I had to get something for Shargel, and I'm like, this smells good, so hopefully uh, it's bad. <laughs> hopefully I don't so feel here's guilty the thing. for what I got to Shargel. Well, here, I, I, I might have done this wrong. Because, uh, like, in the thread, everyone was just like, oh, we're going to be messing with one another. And I saw this after I put in the order. Um, so, <laughs> so this you might be, this was a sincere. A nice meal? Just a lovely meal? <laughs> just a lovely meal. I think it's going to be a lovely meal. Like, this is, <laughs> this meal actually has meaning. So, uh, yeah. And that's, that... I thought of doing that, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not poor. Look at the. I got plants. I got. I have macrame plants. That's not a poor thing. He's not poor. Like, he's just mirrored. He's like fifteen dollars each just for thread. Yeah, he's just in reverse. <laughs> that's all. Great facial hair, sharks. Oh, thank. Oh, Nicole, thank you. Thank you Thanks, so much. Don. Thank you. I also like it too. This is. It's. Yeah. Uh, yeah I don't know. I this like is, it too, but like probably just a little bit more than how how much you like it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. If okay. we could get like a number. Part, like, yeah. yeah, like I'm like a 10 or whatever. You're probably Griffin, like you, have, yeah. you have a nice facial hair too if you want to throw a Thank you. Yes, I thought point. it was for me and then Shargel took the credit and I immediately backed off. <laughs> <laughs> sharks, right, right, right. That's right. Griffin, sharks, that, that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That shark sense. joke. Shark joke. Right. Shark. Griffin, so, shark. Oh, yes, that's you. rich. There you go. Wow. You get all of it. The who is me, the what is mustache, uh, the where is 1105 Ossington. 
<laughs> I know. The funny thing is, it's Griffin, never <laughs> Griffin never misses an opportunity to tell everyone his address. Yeah, that's right. I'll yeah, always remember the house as a beautiful shower. <laughs> yes, we do yeah. have a very nice shower. The very powerful. Yeah, <laughs> there's great. a YouTube video about it. You're, you're gonna love it. The YouTube um, video is about the sink. My oh, house is what? full of plumbing. <laughs> You just see water rising oh in the background. <laughs> 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 okay, should we get to? Um, should we show yeah, our, let's our, our food yeah. container? Let's start yeah. slow. Let's just show the outside. Let's savor the it. Savor so I'll moment. go get mine. It's savor. hefty. Ooh. Great. Oh yes. Okay. Oh, I'm going to go first. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to go first? Okay. Wait. I'm going to grab mine. Yeah, I can... the receipts off so that uh, I don't. This is what I've received. Oh wow, that's shoes. Oh, it's wider than it looks. Maybe yeah, it's and it says my name on top. Yeah. yeah, when you said it, it didn't look like it came from a restaurant. I, I see why you would say that. Yeah, that looks like it's from a shoe store. <laughs> yeah, they, but yeah, it, they it weird like packaging. Griffin put some sort of food that he made at home into a big box. And then he's going to collect 20 bucks from someone. He's just trying to make money. Yeah, from it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I'm scared because what could Griffin possibly have in his home that is... I'm allowed to go to stores. He's allowed. Yeah. Dog You're butt. allowed, I guess so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dog, dog butt. <laughs> that's my dog. Dog butt in there and there's dog butt in the shot. <laughs> Show us your dog. <laughs> Okay, sure. Looks like a German Shepherd. Oh, she's not a German Shepherd. She's uh, some kind of hound mix. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. Hey, you're famous. Oh, hello. You're so nice. <laughs> Good so <job>. <laughs> Stacy's killing it on the sandboard. Yes, yeah, Stacy. That's Ginger. She's very right, happy. So Ginger's so cute. Uh, this is what I got. How do I make myself go on the main screen? There you oh, go. There we go. Oh, there he is. What a beautiful face. So just two, I mean, it's, first of all, it feels heavy uh, and it smells great. Uh, <laughs> and I actually think I might know what it is by smell alone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Are you going to uh, open it? Yeah, we Yeah, will. I mean, should I open it now or should we, let's go through everyone's. Uh, I think oh, I'm yeah. going to go down the line and open it. Let's talk about our packaging and then open it. Yeah. Really savor this. Yes. <laughs> next. So mine is a small bag, very light. Um, no idea where it's from. I have these cryptic numbers and letters. So it's probably an order off of some menu. Hmm. So I think this is a side. This is a side order. I'm gonna guess. Like not a. This isn't a meal by any means. I um. um I, know, I can like say that it is. Um. If this was a packaged hot dog i wouldn't be surprised like if it's just hot dog in tin foil maybe mm. but that's yeah, what what's it's the code like. on it it's like maybe it's a sausage i don't know like it's what's just the code on it's it sort of like look look at that <laughs> well that's okay, what it out. let me explain <laughs> why let me explain why like, um, it could explain also why. be bread or something it's so little because it's something that i feel that you might not want to eat tons of <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah um but i That's don't know where i, I went know. with it too <laughs> i don't know that you might love it you might love it and you might want more and in in which case i'll tell you where it's from and what it's called at the very least i can say that i feel okay confidence wise because it is from a restaurant they sell it so mm. it's edible yeah it's not from banker's box <laughs> yes, it's not, being, it's not shoes that you've yeah. boiled. It's not boiled <laughs> shoes. That you've uh, I've got. I had yeah. seen that it was a a wing restaurant uh, yeah. when I saw the bag. Uh, taking out the paper bag, I can now see that wh whatever the flavor is is Armageddon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, and I don't know my wing flavors, uh, but I have a guess as to what what this experience is going to be. It's, uh, it's clarified on the receipt, no dip. <laughs> uh, when requested. Yeah, it said that it was like, do you want to give a side a side order? And I was like, no. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, You're not dipping I it, it, You know what it I is. Saw, when I saw it with wings, I thought uh, that I should look around my house in, in case I had any milk, uh, which I do not. Uh, and Good. also, I can't. I can't deal with like medium spice on things. Uh, so I think this is going to be exciting. <laughs> Yes. Yes, we know. Okay. We, everybody okay. knows. That <laughs> this is why we do this, ladies and gentlemen, and yeah. people of the world. Uh, this is why we do this. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna let Charge will show his. But while we do that, uh, let's go to the chat for uh, who do you want to open <laughs> it first? That's why it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Mike was asking uh, if you want to write in the chat who you would like to open and eat their thing first. Mm. Let us know. Shargel, what, what is Shar Yeah, there? what is Wow, what that is looks Shargel really great. Have? So it just depends on perspective. So this could either be <laughs> like a, a, a yeah. plastic bag full of firecrackers. So I might need like yeah. a lighter or, you know, one of those big uh, lollipops. You know, like those novelty <laughs> yeah, just like it. suckers. Yeah. With the multiple sticks. Yeah. Either way, a winner. What's so, the weight? I don't know. The weight. The weight. It's 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 pretty light. Mm. It's it's pretty light. I'm getting whiffs, um, but I don't want to guess. I don't want to guess what it is <laughs> because yeah. I want it to be a surprise for everyone. That's a okay. yeah. Um, so I but was there's but it comes in a but there's a this part I don't understand. There's a cup at the top. There's a cup, but it feels like an ice cream container. Do you know what I mean? Like an empty ice cream container? Oh my god, okay. So I think it's supposed to be sitting like this. So that, which is why. So they, they've Whip. placed this. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, the, uh, the, the, the votes are in. Everyone wants Griffin to be open his Yeah, first. it seems yeah. like awesome. unanimous. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Because that way we can watch him squirm okay. like for the no next dip. little bit, right? No dip. No milk. I was wrong. Carrots, carrots and celery. Yeah, oh. right. That's that not part of it. I should have said no carrots, no celery, <laughs> <laughs> no garnishes. All right, just the goods. Uh, let's see. We got a nice red sticker that says Armageddon. Yeah. Oh, there's not so many. This could be uh, delightful. Yeah. I, uh, nice. so it's, I do I do not. I begin? Do I take a bite? Yeah. You begin with no dip. All right. Yeah. I was like, no, I don't want to uh, have him have any blue cheese sauce to uh, stop this. <laughs> stop I want it to be full Geddon. No, like dairy. This is, this is the first it's bite. To smell. Oh, Does it right. smell? Yeah. Yeah. You said you yeah, had was... good plumbing, right? Yeah. I remember you said it, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh god, there's only like seven of these, but <laughs> I, I've had one bite. That's not even the sauce on your fingers. You're bleeding. That's what it is. <laughs> Good. Oh my god. Oh. All right, Peter. Sixty-five. I don't know. Fingers? There was stuff on my fingers. <laughs> oh, I did the math oh. wrong. <laughs> this is. Oh my god. I just feel like when it was like I ordered these. And then it said, you know, I wanted the hottest flavor. And then, so to get Armageddon is $5 more. Oh, my God. You, what? Yeah, you, can, you have to pay, you can pay so for $5. For and then death sauce is the second hottest. I was going to get it with a side of death sauce, but I didn't want to. Um... Oh, <laughs> yeah, so death funny. sauce would be a relief. Are you <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, that was. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do we? Do we have to eat dolphin. All of it. Is it's that, a bit of a dolphin. You know? Nice, you know that classic. Hey, Griffin's having a dolphin. <laughs> is, 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 a, this is what we call a dolphin. <laughs> this is what. That's what his poo is gonna look like. It's just. <laughs> we almost done what? Escaping well captivity. Done. Now, be honest. Do you think that it's like, are they, how hot are they? Like, really hot, or are you like, it's restaurant hot? Like, this I'd is say like a step above uh, death sauce. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're, I wouldn't know what restaurant hot is because I always order no spice and make it like very clear, not even mild, like no spice on oh, anything. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what artificial spice is or I'm going to suck on a celery. Yeah, <laughs> this is technically part of the meal. 
I don't feel like that's a cheating. <laughs> no, that's all part of it. I wish yeah. I'd known and I would have said that with no sides. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've had half a wing. My lips are burning. Yeah. Wolf. How are you? What, what do you think the Scoville units on that are? You know? <sighs> Probably nine. Know. Know. At least well, nine. The dollars are 130,000. <laughs> I, I can't. I had so many hiccups at the beginning of that, at which I feel like is a defense mechanism. Oh. Yeah, that's something that happens to people. Um, some people, when they eat really spicy food, they start hiccuping. Yeah, I don't know why that is. I guess yeah, this is the first time I've ever experienced something at this level before. Uh, Does anyone else want to start eating? Like, is are we just going to yeah. be watching Griffin? Just watch um, Griffin. <laughs> die, or I mean, I love this. No, we're going to start. Gonna start uh, I just oh, want to say, I looked up. I looked up the Armageddon. Is this from Duff's? Yeah, they're from Duff's. Yeah. 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 So I looked it up. The Armageddon sauce is 850,000 Scoville units. Holy okay. shit. Holy okay. shit. Right. That's okay. pretty hot. <laughs> it's why pretty don't, hot. Uh, why don't That's I what I say. Because... <laughs> <laughs> why, why don't I go next? Because based on this smell of this, I feel like I got it from Duff's too. Except it smells yeah. delicious. <laughs> We're getting into shock jock territory. I love fries. this. Fries. Those are delightful. So, I 100. Well, I did this wrong. I did this wrong. Yeah. Oh my god, you got wings too, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. So, um, okay, you could show. Uh, and there's probably some. <laughs> Just a regular spicy barbecue. My favorite right. flavor of wings. Charzel knows my favorite flavor. Oh yeah, look at these. So, <laughs> yeah, so we would go to Duff. We go to Duff's all the time. Like it was like it's our spot. It was like even like when for whatever reason like we had, we were doing like P ninety X. So <laughs> it's rich and raw. This Can I get a dolphin? Brought to you by Duff's wings. Everybody <laughs> just ordered each other Duff's Duff. wings. <laughs> 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 but we used to go there all the time. Like that was our cheat day. And oh I know like Mike introduced me to Coke Zero as well. A weird thing to be introduced about it. Like, so I got him Coke Zero as well. You and know me so well, Sargil. This is, I love you. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna, okay guys, I'm gonna do it. Oh. <laughs> it's crazy, oh spicy God. barbecue. <laughs> Chris, what's our history with Duff's? <laughs> Well, um, we did this podcast together one time, and I uh, thought, I'm going to order Griffin the spiciest wings. And from then on out, we would always go for wings together once the pandemic uh, uh, went away. And, <laughs> and not only, I, I, I forgot, I forgot, like, if you didn't like blue cheese, so I got you blue cheese and dinner. Oh, I <laughs> uh, no dip. I'm going to buy you dinner tomorrow. <laughs> because I feel really guilty because no. I bought you the thing and it's not this. It's <laughs> Mike no, just no. gets to have a delightful meal. I mean, he's doing a 12, you know, he's got the, well, Mariana better get something good too then, I guess, but. <laughs> 12 hours. You might well You're making the viewers mad. So who's next? I'm so who's, sorry, Chris. Let's get it. Let's get other people just in, in sort of some swamp of sadness here. So what, what are other people eating? Who's All right. next? More from Duff's? Okay, right, I'll do I'm it. Gonna... I'll go next. We'll do Chris this. with his yeah. stick. We'll do Let's this. go. Yeah, we got to go what with plastic bags now. You're right. It is. I thought it was just like a... I wonder right. if... It's I wonder if... Right? Excellent. Be Excellent. Oh, I, I mean, it says right on it what it is. Oh, this shit. It is a... Okay. Um, this is Juice. beef artery. Yes. Oh, that's so, <laughs> so cool. I guess, what is an artery? That's a heart. I'm having beef heart. I believe it's the it's a part of the heart. Part of the heart. A vessel in which the blood is delivered. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It looks kind of kind of good. Okay, I'm getting like um a definite a definite tofu vibe from it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Interesting. So it looks like your tofu, oh. but the smell is very, uh, it smells like smoky and it's going to be good. Interesting. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do one. Okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's good. The texture wise is kind of like, um, well, like 
cold fat. Oh. <laughs> 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 Wait, wait. It doesn't taste bad at all. This is um, really miserable. Like it? it is definitely um, or like uh, maybe like it's calamari esque. You know? Really? Yeah, it's a it's a firm, it's a firm taste. <laughs> Griffin, are you are you uh, gagging at my description or a, a real thing? He was gagging. I haven't heard a word you said. <laughs> So the, the chat is saying, Griffin, the chat is saying it looks like you have a radiation poisoning. <laughs> you know what? Like 850,000 yeah. mobile units is nuts because oh, I bought um, the Hot Ones sauces oh, so funny. from the yeah. podcast and the bomb, which um, everyone has a hard time with, is about 200,000 Scoville. No. Yeah. Chris, is that real? Yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, so eight hundred, almost a million Scoville is really, really a lot. That's Chris so did. much. Oh yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah, no dip. is it a lot? I didn't. I couldn't tell. <laughs> I couldn't tell that this was really spicy. I don't need no a number dip. unit on it. <laughs> no dip. No dip. Okay. <laughs> My All fingers right, are tingling. You guys should watch. It's on Netflix. Like they do. There's a documentary on competitive. Uh, like eating contests or anything that's competitive based, and they have one oh, for yeah. chili eating contests. Yeah, and a, Griffin looks like, you. yeah. Griffin, it's I will so say you. you are beet red at this point. You are extremely yeah. red. And honestly, cool, Griffin, cool, 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 wings too, and they're really not that bad. Like, I don't hate this at all. So uh, honestly, Chris, I'm glad you're enjoying that. <laughs> who's, who's next? We've got two more people. So uh, Shargel or Mariana? Oh, here we go, Shargel. Oh, we got yeah. half Me? an hour. Okay. We got half an hour to fill, though, right? Uh, we got half. How much more time? Yeah, this is the best. Yeah, I love well this. Try it out. This sound cute. All right, so <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Why is it in a cup? It's in a cup. All right, yeah. and uh, and each one. So. This each one has three sticks, three okay. sticks in it. Oh, okay. I don't smell anything now. But you did um, before. But I did before. <laughs> so it might have just been my just me. Um, okay, so it seems a little. You're gonna suck it on the <laughs> Okay. Ooh. All right. Look at this. So it seems like it's um it's beef. Okay. Oh, that smells spicy. It smells good. Who's this from? This is from Mike. From me. Mike, what have you done? Do you want me to tell you, or do you want to have a bite first? Should I have a? I'll have a bite first. Have a bite. It and says, guess. it says, attention, show, 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 okay. show. Hot. <laughs> hot. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is it beef? Well, uh, it's not. Um, it's I'll not. Okay. You, so we got two different ones. Uh -huh. uh, so that is either chicken hearts or chicken gizzard. Oh wow! Chicken heart, chicken gizzard. Oh, amazing! I'm also oh, freaking yeah. out right now. This is the first time in like the pandemic where I haven't left the food like close to the entrance and then like brought a plate just to transfer it. So there's no like cross contamination. Oh. Uh -huh. So Mike has sent you the worst uh, secret supper of all, the COVID contamination. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. doused in COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Eat it. You have to. You have to. I love that Griffin Griffin has not stopped eating the wings. Like, he could have taken a pause while it was Shartle's turn, but he's like, <laughs> he's going deep. Not, we're going to get a champion. A true champion. We admire Griffin's commitment level. These are really good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, great. <laughs> but I cannot tell. Poor Griffin. Which was a good dirt. <laughs> Mike is having a lovely time. I mean, I think the most perfect moment was when we cut to Griffin gagging right in front of the lens. <laughs> yeah. It was, that was beautiful. A beautiful I'm sorry. moment. I had to do it. I'm glad I, I just... cut up the mic for ASMR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I should have gotten you dip. Should I open I'm regretting not giving you dip. 
All right. All right. I'll go for it. Yeah, I mean, Chris and Chargel, it seems like Mike and I both tried to get you with some, uh, you know, guts food. But it's oh, yeah. Duffs? Two sticks? Yeah, oh, Chris, you got. Griffin's mad now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a crazy prank that was pulled on them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I was I'm just ready. ordering uh, Griffin some tasty wings. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Can, I'm so I'm gonna get some water. These are mild. Oh yeah, it's, well, it's, it's mild. Oh yeah. I think I just had Chipotle flavor. Chipotle. Oh my goodness. I'm yeah. opening. So okay, so Mariana, let's do your opening. What do you have? Okay. So I have a box that says my name on it. First of all. Um, <laughs> Griffin, uh, okay, well, <laughs> there's a card. Open the card oh. first, I guess. Oh, oh that's that's nice. Card. Sure. <laughs> okay. I want Griffin to be sucking the water out of that carrot. <sighs> Just the moisture. Oh, wow. Beautiful card. Really beautiful. <laughs> and it says, Mariana, I heard how much you love dinner. <laughs> so I also got you this card. Um, to celebrate dinner, I even had enough money left over to buy you dinner. Okay, nice. I'll play nice. that. Nice. I'll go uh -huh. right nicely on my tree. <clears throat> Very nice. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> Griffin. <laughs> Griffin, I want to thank you for bringing me so much joy. Oh, you're really doing the world some good right I now. I got all the great shows on the Sonar Network. <laughs> this time it's different with Peter and Chris. They do a different episode every time. Uh, it's always delightful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Marianne, I'm sorry. What is the meal? Fine. It's an egg salad sandwich. Ew. Oh. <laughs> you did make it. And I have to get up to do this. I don't even know how to get it out. <laughs> Sorry, Griffin's in so much pain. Oh, this is just really nice. Griffin, this, this is, is not nice. Cake, and it says, Happy Dinner, Mariana. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, Ever, Griffin gagged again. <laughs> <laughs> Happy dinner, Mariana. Um, I can't. It, I, I don't know how this, how people like eat this. Uh, like it doesn't feel like food. It Do you have like, that like know. sort of like um, pie that you get like that? Uh, you're just, like you know you. Not feeling that. No. Not yet. <laughs> no, not at that point yet. You, you, you never know. My egg salad sandwich might be even spicier than your wings. It might be cayenne in there. Yeah. How do you open this? A little this? bit of powder. Oh. Hey, uh, Sarge, how is yeah. the art from Gizzard? It's, uh, I, they're both great. Yeah, the sauce on it's uh, amazing. <laughs> I think I'm going to assume... <laughs> I'm going to assume the softer one is the Gizzard, and the chewy one is the heart. <laughs> what is Gizzard? What is a Gizzard? You know, I didn't even look it up. It just sounded gross, so I got it. <laughs> They always take out the gizzard from the turkey uh, during Thanksgiving. So, um, well, like oh, that's the do uh, what you will with that. This the wobble. I think it might be. Yeah, it might be. Is it the wobble? Is it the digestive tract? Even. Yeah, I, I feel like so with the out, gizzard outside of the body. Maybe. <laughs> gonna die you guys are just talking about Churchill's meal but this this yeah. is so clearly <laughs> happening the man who got a custom cake <laughs> for someone is paying the biggest price <laughs> I can't describe how miserable this is how many wings have you got through I've gotten through four wings <laughs> There are wow. four more to go. Uh, and I got to say, uh, I looked up a gizzard seems to be something uh, part of the digestive tract of an uh, animal. 
Ah. Um, and yes, yeah, so someone is asking if I can eat the cake without utensils, and I absolutely can. Yeah. Uh, but I am enjoying my egg salad sandwich. Don't show me uh, sucking on a carrot. <laughs> Go back to Mariana. <laughs> we, are, we are getting closer and closer to the end. So I will open my cake and I will eat it with my hands. Oh, Ginger wants yeah, I mean, some. None of us are using utensils, so you can't either. Okay. Ginger is going to get no, some No, you're not allowed. It's not Can't. good off. <laughs> oh, it smells so We lost good. Griffin. We lost Griffin. No. <laughs> it slid. I look like a scene from Magnolia. My my nose is running a little. I think I've had too much of this extra hot sauce shards on me. Do I have to scoop it? Do I scoop it or do I just bite You're it? You're the one with the sriracha shirt, too. I don't know. What does the chat think? Scoop or bite? I'm mm. gonna say both. Scoop out of the nice middle, slide. right? Yeah. The middle. <laughs> scoop out yeah, the middle. Yeah, scoop yeah. out the middle. <laughs> I think it's definitely a little scoop. I think it's definitely a little scoop. It's unorthodox. Yeah, don't yeah, respect yeah, yeah, Griffin's yeah. cake at all, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see that, Griffin? You see that? Yeah, no, I see <laughs> that. That's what we think of your cake. <laughs> now That's eat another fair. wing. <laughs> Griffin sucking on a carrot. <laughs> then you killed the death logo. All right. There's fog on your glasses. I don't. I mean, you know that. <laughs> this is so delicious. <laughs> Griffin, I, I just want to say, that, you know, I, I'm really proud of you. And oh, and get and please get a new get a new napkin. <laughs> Mirren is just in the middle of this cake. Can I you... got delivered something. We got to ask Griffin like a deep question right now. Oh, um, yeah. Is that... Okay, so Griffin. My girlfriend just brought me eat this will help. It's bread. Will help. It's bread. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so deep, sweet. That's here's so a deep sweet. question. Um, Griffin, what have you learned about yourself this year? Uh, this year from the beginning. Um, uh, okay. Uh, I, I've learned I actually don't mind uh, the extra solitude that comes with quarantine. Um, yeah. I've, I've gotten a chance to go on a lot of like <laughs> nice long walks. Um, I've managed to, uh, to funnel from energy into creative projects, which I really like. Yeah. I feel very pri privileged um, that I'm in a position where I can like, I don't know. All things considered, quarantine has been very good for me. Um, I've learned new things about my taste preferences. <laughs> uh, <laughs> things maybe that I won't do in the future. <laughs> um, but it, that was already stuff I knew going into this. Right. Um, Alaska. Nice. Yeah. Hawaii. Yeah. Okay. New York. Den Denver's not a state. I'm done already. The state of Denver. <laughs> state what of Denver. is Wait. Uh, oh, Colorado? Colorado. Colorado. Right. Colorado yeah. <laughs> So um, I couldn't name uh, it. I'm booking, Isn't there a song? The, uh, I'm booking the cast for a secret supper uh, for our next marathon. Uh, so Griffin, you're in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in, depending on who else is in the cast. Certainly. <laughs> I'm in. This is great. <laughs> oh, oh, this is well, so fun. Okay, like so, a, um, maybe a deep one for Sharjil then. Uh, yeah. Who's, yeah, having a lot of trouble. Mm, yeah. Being his. What um do you think that this year? What's the ratio of like uh, six uh, success to complete waste? You know success. what I mean. Like how much of the how much of the year is do you think? Is, actually, let's do that. How many days have just been a waste? Out of a waste. Sixty-five. Yeah, just nothings. Ju just I would. Good. Just a good. Tr okay, I would say. A hundred and seventy. <laughs> Why are you doing that? Oh my god! He's just getting Why? through it. He's, just, it. He's just getting through it. <laughs> what? That's... One more. Yes. Yes, Griffin. Yes. Yeah. Okay, for those just tuning in, Griffin is eating the spiciest wings we could find, or Chris Wilson could find in the city. And uh, um, golf swings, uh, Armageddon. Yeah, <laughs> 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 you're hilarious. I'm wiping your tongue with bread. Oh my god, 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, Griffin. He's never going to talk to us again. I mean, I didn't do this to him. Oh, we have to do another pod. I mean, you're going till midnight, too. So do a check in, maybe like with Griffin, maybe a live feed of it coming out the other end. Just not too graphic about it, but I think it'll be hot as well. Yeah. <laughs> Griffin, you're doing a really great job. You're really. You are. So much. I would have also said, like, if you didn't eat at all, it's making me go like, yeah, I have to eat all of these. Mm -hmm. I, yes. I have to. Yes, you do. But I'm not eating this whole thing. Also, sometimes, <clears throat> like, bread is sometimes oh, no, no, you for, like, soaking up, thing. you know, whatever's left. So, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure you've got, like, another uh, slice of bread. So, like, soak up what's in that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm doing that. You know what's you know, really helping me with the spice? Uh, this bit. <laughs> 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 Griffin, do you think dip would have been better or worse? <laughs> better, I mean, better. <laughs> so we'll get Griffin some hot tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a nice English <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> I'm seeing up there that um, Killed to Death has Nick Nemiroff coming up. Is that an old episode or a new one? Oh, new sorry. One. We recorded that earlier today. We'll keep an eye on our feed. It was a really fun episode. <laughs> Nick Nemiroff, very funny. Was I Nick? Nick's one of the most talented, you know, comedians working today. <laughs> and to have him on with so much fun, it's always a blast. <sighs> oh, yeah. Honestly, subscribe to... This Subscribe to Kill to Death. I mean, just as a pity thing, I think it's worth it. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to forget about Mariana and her cake. Yeah, let's see. Take another bite of that, Mariana. What about know. Yeah, this no, is my... I, <laughs> Your I dog eat so too. much cake. <laughs> and it's also getting all over the rest of my body. And yeah. it's, like, really sweet. It's, like, the kind of icing that, you know, like, tastes like chemicals. Mm. You know this mm. icing, like just so sweet. Well, I'm not much of oh, a cake. Griffin. Not much of a cake guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, Griffin, did you hear the icing on the cake wasn't that good? It's so, it, the That's icing kind of, was so sweet. <laughs> it wasn't that. It was good. She, she, yeah, Marianne, Holy no. shit. <laughs> Griffin, what do you got in the back there? Is that a 13 inch flat screen? Dude, what is that? Is that, is that 720p? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, Beautiful <laughs> TV back there. Beautiful. Is that a you got yeah, a PS3 <laughs> <laughs> so It's a PS2 hooked up to it. We've got a lot of fun games. <laughs> yeah, that, was all, that was Anya who just came down. I uh, meant to give me the food. <laughs> <laughs> what about like. I haven't had a good cry in a while. This is nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. You're the star. You're the star of this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute star. Shardo, um, how's your meal going? It's really, it's really, really good. I've been uh, enjoying. <laughs> it's. <laughs> I have um, one more stick to eat. I have this left. Can we all like toast each other? Let's all toast each other. This is like it's a beautiful, beautiful oh. moment in in, in uh, COVID times. <laughs> mm. Oh my god, I dropped cake on my keyboard. <laughs> Griffin, do you see what oh. you made Mariana do? Yeah, I'm so sorry. This is horrible. I am sorry. I am sorry. Um, but also, I think it's been really good. It's been really good for the network. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's really good. What a, what a highlight. You're always, saying, you're always saying if you can do something to help out the network. What? Just exactly. let you know. <laughs> um, Griffin's done sorry, a lot I couldn't make that out. <laughs> Griffin's done a lot to help us out over the years, but I think this is probably your biggest sacrifice. I just I can't get enough of bread napkin. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it's not like I'm just actual. You know, like how rich people might like you know like shark might like clean his mouth with money. <laughs> I don't like cleaning your mouth with bread. It's not a poor thing though because that's still more money than. Yeah, and, but even <laughs> even the way think. like Griffin did it, even the way Griffin did it, it was so civil. Like in a moment of distress, you were still so civil about it. Well, he's still like he just it was like. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, I have I'm, never seen I somebody no pop their mouth with bread and then. Eat. <laughs> <laughs> so funny to me. I've never seen that. <laughs> this, uh, this uh, screenshot is uh, courtesy of uh, Aaron Pin from uh, the Post Podcast. <laughs> Aaron, what oh, thank you so much, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. Everyone check out my post. Just because we keep going to your room, so I keep getting little details of your room. So your your um so nice. is that your your cabinets are that's a, a door that will not keep shut, so you have it <laughs> last you can. Is that is that the story there? Like it will not <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah, so well, it's opened a bit more, certainly. Get uh, it that's the. What's yeah. in there? Um, that's the. That's the um, breaker breaker system for the whole house, uh, including oh. the front apartment. So. So you um, have like a little bit of control of like, you can turn off everybody's lights and, I don't know if you if that's fun. Uh, maybe that. Maybe have uh, you yeah. Um, Oh, I'm. Oh God, I can't even lift it. It's, I'm about that deep in. Nice little well. Nice little it's apartment. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm just carving my little space into the middle. I'm just digging in, man. My dog is really hungry for it. <laughs> it kind of looked like if your dog was to eat that cake, and that that's where she, they would start. I would imagine right in the middle. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think if she were to eat this cake, it would kill her. Uh, the sugar content seems to be mm. through the roof. Uh, mm. I'm a little worried for my own heart at this point. I've eaten a lot sure. of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all go through and make one complaint about our meal. Yeah. Mine is that there wasn't enough of it. I've only got. Yeah, me too. Food. Mine is, I think mine was a little bit too thoughtful. From one of my best I wanted friends it. in the whole wide world, gave me my favorite meal, and it's I love you <sighs> and thank you so much, Darjo. What a of great course. prank that was! You pranked me. You got me. Got you, got you, man. Got you. When it yeah, said punk. beef artery, I did think it. Was, I, I wanted it to be a bit grosser. So did I. It doesn't but seem very um, bad. <laughs> it is quite. I mean, actually, like visibly. This piece particularly is that is a growth one. There's an extra like ventricle out of it, I guess. Oh, but the re none of them have been like that. <laughs> Chris Running Griffin like changed my mind. <laughs> You're rich. You're rich, Griffin. You did it. You're rich. <laughs> right, yeah, so we're gonna, we gotta, we're, we're we gonna wrap this this uh, session up. We're coming up on. Um, uh, coming up at, at six thirty is uh, Lindsay Mullins' "Truth Be Told" with ah. some special guests, including Sharjo, who will be just going and doing a show, reeling, just marathoning, a horrible meal. Oh my goodness! Yeah, this ah, uh, I don't, I don't want it anymore. Oh. oh man, we should have booked Griffin next. That would have been me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 just just That's him in real life right now. That's yeah. just him. He's. You can't move. You take, a photo of that. take a photo of that. That's the moment. Yeah. That's the That's moment right there. Yeah. Get that. Oh, there we go. Can we do a Cap. boomerang of him gagging right in front of the camera? Yeah. That. We'll just snip that out. <laughs> well, thank you so beautiful, much. Beautiful, beautiful boy. The thank moment. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, this <laughs> thank you for the delicious meals. An uh, experience. Yes, thank you, Sharjil, and uh, thank you, Griffin. Thank you. I don't even know thank what you're doing. Thank you so much, Griffin. Griffin my there he is. Oh. You're back. Okay. Yeah, nothing, no, no new updates since my internet went down. <laughs> All right, uh, Griffin, I'm going to need an update later in the night so I can uh, let everyone know on the stream how you're doing. Make sure you're still alive. Great. What? Food on my face? Mm. No, you, you look no, you great. Look good. You look no, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to go and fix this. 
Yeah. So, so we're gonna we um to we're gonna play a little vid and then we're gonna jump right into Lindsay's. All right. Yeah. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Uh, bye. bye. Oh, I'm on. Wait, am I live right now? Stacy, am I live? I can't even tell if I'm live. I think I'm live. Is this me live? Is this happening? You are very much live. Hello, hello, and welcome. You look amazing, and you are live. <laughs> I'm live. Wow, we went right into it. Okay. Hi. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the very first uh, live stream episode of Truth Be Told, the podcast. Stacey, I just want to check. Am I am I easy to hear? You're great. You sound I, amazing. You look oh, great. Sound oh, great. Oh wow. Yeah, oh, yeah. You even have a how are you doing, Stacey? You know, I'm doing so great. It's it's so nice to see you. I mean, it's just, you know, the pandemic just makes people so distant. And it's, this is so nice. Yeah, you just hearing your kind of omniscient voice, like <laughs> oh, really, I feel really connected to you right now. Wait. I feel like if I was on camera, people would quickly run away. Uh, our dress codes are different tonight. They are different okay. tonight. Well, you know what? I, that's fine. And you've been working this all day, so good job. Thank you. I want to I give this a real start because okay, you know, very sudden. So I want to feel like, like I feel like I'm talking to God right now. I feel like. Okay. I want to to make it feel like a show for all the people tuning in okay. in one minute. So in one minute, it's all going to start. And so I think I might even play the theme song because Truth Be Told has a theme song. Amazing. Do you want me to give you a little countdown? Do you want like a 30 second countdown and then we'll reset? Oh, I love that. So like okay. at 630, we'll, we'll start? We will start. I'll put up a little countdown, and then when oh. six thirty hits, we will start. And then when as soon as it's on me, I'm gonna play the song. I'm loving this. This is amazing. Okay, so yeah, we'll be back in. Watching, you're seeing behind the scenes a show, bit. All right, so this is gonna be a thirty second countdown, and then you will be live. Here we go. Okay. storytelling comedy podcast that was on for two years and it won some Canadian podcasting awards and 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 people from the comedy community all around Canada told stories that were true from their real lives and every episode there was a different theme and uh, they told some heart-wrenching stories some funny stories some cringy stories every type of story you can imagine was shared on this show and then I let the show die. After two years of doing the show, I went, you know what? I'm tired. I'm exhausted. It's the end of the world. I'm going to pack it in because I think it's important to know when to leave. Yeah. When to leave the party. So the world kind of fell apart. And I thought when I was asked by the Sonar team, if I was interested in doing a live stream version of the podcast, a visual version I was like, okay, let's let's give this a shot. This will be fun. I'm not amazing with technology, but let's give it a shot. So um, I was thinking, what what is the theme of this episode of Truth Be Told? What is resonating with me right now? And I guess the best way to put it is I'm very horny. I'm horny and I'm trapped in quarantine. And uh, 
I'm I'm like anybody else. It's it's cuffing season. I want romance. I want connection. I want to feel fireworks in my heart, even if the world is falling apart. That wasn't supposed to rhyme. How cute is that? That just happened. Um, and so I have put myself back out on the dating market during a global pandemic. I'm trying to be safe. I'm trying to be safe. I'm, uh, I wear a mask. We have the awkward conversation on dating apps to, um, to, uh, see if, uh, 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 we are safe. Are we having small bubbles? Are we being responsible? You know, I'm trying to be responsible while dating. It's great. Uh, but, in this search for romance and love, um, I've had to do a lot of reflection. I've had to look at myself and go, well, uh, what are my problems? What are my hangups? What are my issues? And if I wanna pick a partner, perhaps even a life partner, how do I do that in a way that is uh, smart? Because I'm 31 and I, uh, I don't wanna be on this merry-go-round forever. So uh, I want to invite you into my world, horny in quarantine, dating in the pandemic, um, finding love, sex, and uh, human emotional disasters in this, uh, in this pandemic. Horny in quarantine. Thank you so much, Stacy. How are you doing, Stacy? Are you good in quarantine? Are you horny? You know what? I think everyone's like pretty horny in quarantine. I think that's why like something like normal people really popped off. Like we, we needed those seven minute sex scenes. You know, I feel like right. we're all we're all needing it, you know? Yeah. We and I also need think it. people all... in, but also people in relationships are like grossed out with each other and they don't want to have sex with each other. That's true, too. I, you know? I wouldn't know. Uh, but but you sound like you're speaking from experience. Uh, maybe no. No, I'm just I'm saying like also like hearing like my friends also who are like married and stuff. It's like ugh, I can't even. Everyone's stuck in the same room and it's like and no one's at their best. That's true. We're all not at our best. I mean, um, you look amazing. You look at your best. I I really tried. I wore a house coat all day. <laughs> I got really excited. I got really excited, but this is the first show I've done in quarantine. All right, really? Let's, let's yeah, get into it. Okay. Yeah, you know, I was like, let's let's get into it. So I have a forty-five minute slot, and I have tons of really great guests. Um, but as listeners of the show will know, I usually do a story or something really truthful off the top that's personal to me when doing the show. So I thought, what is a truth that I could share with you guys um, about my journey in dating in quarantine? Well, uh, first couple of uh, confessions. I've gotten really into astrology and zodiac signs. I've even on dating apps, because I'm kind of new to dating apps, I used to just meet people at shows while performing. And now I have to join the rest of society on these, these apps. And uh, I've started selecting people based on their astrological sign. I weed people out. Like, I don't even want to bother with you if you're a Capricorn. I don't even care. I don't even want to meet you. They don't care. Are you a Leo? Let's talk. That's kind of what's happening. So I've been reading lots of books on your personality based on the day of the year you're born. Um, and I've been weirdly religiously following this kind of stuff. But also, um, I did a little experiment and it was very revealing and very truthful and even a bit cringy. I decided if I am to find someone that I can truly be vulnerable and in love with at some point, I need to self-reflect. I need to take a moral inventory and understand myself. So um, I thought I need to get feedback as if my personality were a theater show, I need notes. I need, I need feedback from the men who have known me the most intimately in my life. So as a fun little thing, I contacted four or five uh, ex-boyfriends slash uh, former flames, you know, like a lover, there is a difference. Um, and I, I contacted these men and I, and I'm on varying good terms with some of them. 
Um, and I, I asked them some very honest questions. I said, you don't just have to say nice things about me here. This is your moment to really dig in and let me know how I could be a better person because you got to see me in an intimate relationship. And they let me read these answers, some anonymous, some not, here on the podcast. So without further ado, Michael Savory. Michael Savory was on an episode of Truth Be Told. If you're a listener, you may remember we shared uh, a bath together and we we he was a Tinder date from New York City who flew to Canada and we were together for 11 months. Great guy. Um, I asked him some some questions. We are no longer together. We haven't been for a while. And he was kind enough to answer these questions so I could reflect on myself. I said, Michael, what is uh, my personality like in one word? He said, ardent. I had to look that up. Apparently that means passionate and enthusiastic. That's very nice. Thank you, Michael. Uh, and then I said, Michael, when you think of uh, a memory between us that stands out, what is the most uh, memorable experience? And he said, quote, we can't talk about those memories, LOL. Again, thank you for that, Michael. I appreciate that. That's very sweet. Uh, filthy, but sweet. Um, I said, what is something I should work on as a person? How do I become a better person? He said, learn how to ride the wave. You're too critical of yourself. He lives in California, so he brings up waves a lot and motorcycles. Uh, oh, and then I also asked him, uh, <laughs> if you could pick an animal to describe me in the bedroom, what animal would that be? And Michael said, panther. And then he quickly changed it to cheetah. And if we know anything about cheetahs, they're really fast, but they run out of steam. They have no stamina. I'm not sure if that's an insult. Okay. And then, uh, and then this person will remain anonymous. Now we're really digging deep. I said, uh, you could tell this person might've been with me a few years longer. I said, if you could change one thing about me as a person, what would it be? What is my fatal flaw? And this person says, you do not have a fatal flaw, but one thing that I think would make you a lot more happy would be to learn to enjoy your own company. I've, I've had a lot of time to do that these days. So thank you for that note. That's true. I'm not good at being alone. Um, and then I asked this guy, what is your greatest worry you have about me as a person? And he didn't hold back. He said, I have always had a low level worry that you were emotionally unprepared for the inevitable adversity that comes with life. All right. I'll take it. It's a note. I'll take it. All right, moving on to a different ex-boyfriend, Gavin Williams, who happens to be, uh, you know, my best friend. He's my best friend, and we are much better off as best friends, and he has a fantastic partner and a baby, and he has moved on with his life, and I've moved on with my life, but we are the best of friends. But long, long, long ago, we did have a time that we dated, and since we're best friends now, and he feels more like a family member, um, he was able to give me uh, some criticisms that really ring true. I said, um, I said, uh, what are three things you like about me? I thought, throw me a softball. The last guy was kind of harsh. Uh, Gav says, you're funny, you're ambitious, and you try to do the morally right thing even when it's clearly the wrong thing to do. <laughs> Which I don't know what that means. What, what, like, so something bad is the right thing to do? Maybe. I don't know. It's, uh, he's practical. Okay. And then I said, Gavin, you're my best friend. What is the most annoying slash upsetting thing about me as a person? He said, you make the same mistakes over and over. You don't look after your financial situation. You still owe me money 
for your website, which you put on my credit card and never changed. Gav, I said I would pay you that back. It's going to happen. We're in a pandemic. Jesus Christ. What is it, like $60? I'll get it. You'll get it back. Okay. Um, oh, I said, Gavin, you've known me over a decade. How have I changed since we first met? And he said, while your age has advanced in years, your emotionally... Your emotional maturity has remained very much the same. You have stayed young at heart, but still eat Chef Boyardee, which is concerning. Your outside is of a 23-year-old. Your insides are that of an 80-year-old. With friends like these. Wow. Thanks, Gav. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Um, oh, I had an on and off again beau who lives in California. And uh, we, uh, we've had an on and off again thing for many years. And he was very honest with me. I said, hey, uh, give me an elevator pitch, like a real short description of how you would describe our romance throughout the years. And I thought this was actually kind of poetic. He said, Always a nice time, never for a long time, never at the right time for either of us to give it more time. That's sweet. I think that's very sweet. That was kind of fun. Okay. Um, and then I asked him, any thoughts you would like to share? Um, and uh, he said, I think of moments that have happened between us a lot. And I always end up thinking, I wish there were more of those. I miss talking as regularly as we once did. And I apologize for the times I was the reason we weren't talking because I felt obligated to put some distance between us. That we've been friends for the 10 years is remarkable and amazing and I cherish it very much. That's very nice. Uh, and then I asked him if there's anything annoying about me. And he just said that one time we hung out and I was a bit of a bit of a handful when I was drunk. Yeah. No comment. Um, okay. Last person I'll mention. I had a lover for a time named Paco. And we met when I was 21 in Amsterdam. And we had a torrid love affair. And Paco is lovely. He's great. Uh, and uh, I contacted Paco. And I said, when you think of our time together, how would you uh, briefly describe it? And he said, eventful, surreal, on the verge like I didn't know what would happen next, which was kind of cool. That's true. Well, we were in Amsterdam. We were in the red light district. That, that would make sense. We wouldn't know what, what was going to happen to us next. Um, oh, Paco, best of luck to you and your business ventures. He works in business. We don't talk that much anymore. Um, oh, and I said, Paco, what is something about me that bothered you? And he said, I remember getting mixed signals on how serious you were taking us. Okay, thank you for your opinions, Paco. Thank you all the gentlemen in my life who uh, didn't pull any punches and let me know in which ways I am struggling. All right, moving on to the quote of the episode. We always have a quote of the episode and uh, the theme is horny in quarantine. And so I have two quotes because I thought that might be fun, right? Quote of the episode. And they're about sex and horniness because I thought that was apropos. Quotes of the episode. The first one is by the famous actor John Barrymore. And the quote is, sex, the thing that takes up the least amount of time and causes the most amount of trouble. Too true, too true. And someone named PJ O'Rourke, I have no idea who that is, they said, 
A lot of people are better imagined in your bed than found there in the morning. We can all relate to that, right? Yeah. Yeah, we can. We can relate to that. Moving on. Let's get to uh, some guests. Oh, how sweet. Someone just said they missed this podcast. That's very sweet. Thank you so much. I miss it too. Um, let's move on to some guests. I have some guests on the show because I didn't want to be alone in my horny, sad feelings. So I reached out to some very funny people. Um, I have four guests on the show today. I'll just give you a quick rundown. Uh, three of which are friends from Second City that I had the pleasure of working with and performing with who are lovely. And one of which is my roommate. And so she'll be sitting with me soon. Okay, but first, uh, let's patch in our first guest. It's a, a very funny comedian. Her name is Alessandra Vite. Can we get Alessandra here? Oh, hello. hello. <laughs> Alessandra, how you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. This, now, it's been a while. It has been a while since we've <laughs> seen each other face to face. Mm -hmm. um, Alessandra, mm. uh, the reason I'm having you on the show, not only are you a very funny and uh, super charming person to see on, on film, sure. but also, <laughs> I'll take also it. you and I are kind of in a similar zone where we're on dating apps during this pandemic. Yeah. And it's kind of a nightmare. Yeah, I just have to put it out there. I did a crushes countdown and now I'm talking about boys. I understand that I'm not being very feminist on this 12 hour sonar thing. And I apologize. Oh no, no, I'm not passing the Bechdel test. But yeah, I'm on those friggin' apps. And let me tell you something. Holy, do I swear? Do we swear? Yeah, yeah I swear. Yeah, holy, holy fuck. 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 Holy fuck. Like, fuck. so like, I've actually never really dated people from apps. Like I dated the longest, I think relationship I've had from an app person was maybe Three months, maybe. Wow. Yeah, I'm not an app person at all. I'm like you. I meet people. In comedy. I mostly meet people. I meet other comedians, unfortunately. I know. <laughs> it's a problem we have. We were on uh, Second City Tour Co. together, and we we would be dating stand-up comedians. And, uh, yeah, we did, actually. At the same time. And we understood <laughs> um, that, that, that talent crush that you get on someone that does what you do. Yeah, I don't even know for me if it's a, <laughs> this is going to sound brutal, if it's a talent crush, because to be honest, all of the men that I've like deeply fallen in love with, um, who are comedians, I've always been like, yeah, they're funny. Like, I've never thought they were funnier than me. Okay. Wow. That's uh, Whatever, wow. I don't care. They're not watching. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> I took a nap. I've had it between the last. No, that's fine. We gotta, mm. we gotta say it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I want to get your take on how men have changed on dating apps since quarantine began. Oh. I've noticed a difference in how they speak to us, even just opening the conversation. Lindsay, it's it's fucked up. Okay, so I was on the apps ever so lightly around March and then felt supremely depressed. So I got off them just because of pandemic, not because of how people were behaving on them. And then I started dating someone in the summer and then that ended so then from like basically october on mm -hmm. i was like okay let's get on these apps let's see what's going on and the men have been despicable like the the opening the opening so i i compiled stuff oh you have like some i compiled yeah I, I was taking screenshots whilst we were oh that's uh, whilst i was watching your thing where your exes were brutalizing you a little bit <laughs> <laughs> no they said some nice things too but i don't want to compliment myself on this this app this thing they did say nice things but it was very the, the mean things were very funny um <laughs> well not mean but whatever it was great i enjoyed it yeah. um okay so i'm gonna start off by saying two things mm -hmm. yes i have a big mouth like i have big lips okay i don't know if people are aware of that because I, I men are it. incredibly yeah. aware of that and these are the opening things so we got hey how's your week going how many guys comment on your sexy mouth? Uh, I would scar you for free emotionally. How's it going? You have sexy lips. This one's funny. He just writes, hello there. I write, hi. Two days later, you have a nice mouth. 
Alessandra, I hope those lips of yours do more than just look good. And by that, I mean are capable of producing interesting conversation. Oh, that didn't go where I thought that was going to go. <laughs> I was no, like I hate that more almost. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we have, we, we all have regrets. Hopefully I won't be one. I just, I just, that guy just need to be called out. It was super lame. That was lame. Yeah. Um, okay. So then this guy wrote, so then this is after, and those aren't the aggressive ones. Cause I, I don't have the aggressive ones cause the aggressive ones I, I blocked, blocked them. So I couldn't, I couldn't screenshot them, but this guy started, and this was after a day of like, I had just been annoyed and people had been saying gross things to me. Mm -hmm. And this guy started by saying, I know this isn't the best start to admit to somebody you don't know, but I can't stop thinking of French kissing those lips. First of all, Ugh. <laughs> like well, that's how you go in. Yeah. And you just, notice that they're getting kind of worse. They're, they're getting worse. And so I responded to him because I was like, you know what? I'm going to respond to this one because I'm, I've had enough. And I wrote, I know this is meant as a compliment, but most men on this app do start conversations this way, uh, saying something immediately about my body and then saying something sexual. And that actually makes me feel attacked. You're probably confused and think I'm overreacting, but I've hit my limit. We talk about consent in terms of physical stuff, but I would love consent to start with conversation as well. His response, come on. If you feel this way, you might want to consider removing that photo with strawberries in your teeth. It's provocative. Okay. <laughs> wow. Oh, I've seen that photo with the strawberry in your teeth. It is incredibly modest. I'm and copying a monkey. <laughs> okay. That's a bit much, isn't it? Can I tell you my situation? Yeah. I got, I, I'm nuts. So I got global Tinder. I paid a little bit extra to you get. Your yeah. I, oh I got global Tinder because I'm sick of the men in Toronto. So uh, I thought, okay. I'm going to start talking to guys in the States because I like their cowboy pew pew kind of energy. <laughs> oh, <you know>? okay. <laughs> All right, and, I'm overwhelmed for you. Yes. Yeah. And so most of my comments that I get, y'all okay over there? I almost <laughs> knocked over my computer. <laughs> Continue, yes. <laughs> um, most of my comments are in regards to like, so are you – in Canada, or most of my uh, right, okay, I get from men on Tinder, they're overwhelmed, and they're kind of overwhelmed by the distance. <laughs> and I just kind of I don't know what I'm doing, I just kind of flirt with men in other cities, and just I don't know, maybe it's a subconscious fear of commitment. So I'm making sure it's the border shut down. We could never have anything happen. Maybe that's what I'm doing. Maybe that's not a terrible idea in these times because. It's the same thing. Like I've gone on a few dates since like the lockdown has gotten extreme. And by dates, I mean like I've gone on a walk around the block. Oh yeah. And it's so impossible to tell if you're attracted to the person because honestly, I'm so in my head about like, should I even be doing this? I don't think I want anything to go further. I'm very like scared, blah, blah, blah. Like I'm sure other people have nice times on these dates, but I, There's I'm so much guilt and pressure and so much going on. And it's, also, if you do hook up with someone, because I've had a few romances in quarantine, it's got a little bit of a trauma bonding flavor to it. Like, yeah. Like at the end of the world and we're just reaching out in the dark. Yeah, yeah. I I was, um, well, what I'm noticing, so maybe I've gone on like 10 dates this year and I've only, and the one person that I actually like dated, dated, uh, was the only person that I physically touched because everyone else I was very like, but I could tell that the uh, the men were very um, wanting to touch immediately. And it's like, oh, okay. They've been locked up in their apartment. I know, but you don't know me. I might be I might be full of COVID. Like I'm trying to like suss them out and I'll ask questions. I'll be like, do you live alone? Do you work oh, can you check the bubble? alone? Yeah. 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 And then very like they they're I don't know they're they're weird about it and I'm like I think we have to have a checklist like oh well, yeah it yeah and I've asked these guys have wanted to meet and I've been like yeah okay here's my checklist of like do you live below blah, blah 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 I'll ask I'm not like a psychopath I'll ask it like in normal conversation right um and they get a little bit like whoa whoa and it's like what are we do yeah we, we can't get offended we, like, we all have to be careful oh 
I, I am running out of time. So I'm going oh, to yes. ask you go. But Alessandra, I <laughs> yeah. mean, I'm in it too. Is oh, it we'll be fine. fine. We'll we're be fine. fine. We're fine. Like, we're fine. We're fine. It's just, are men okay? Like, if I could ask um, the people watching, if any of you guys are stress, uh, cis straight men, are you okay? Like, what's going on? <laughs> it was lonely. Mm. Not an excuse. Not an excuse. Not an excuse. Um, if you are a straight dude, why don't you reach out and not in a terrifying sexual way? <laughs> Let me know you're okay because you don't seem well. Anyways. <laughs> Alessandra, it's been mm -hmm. lovely having you on the show. It's so nice to have you. Don't be weird. Thank Take you care. for having me. Bye-bye, Alessandra. Bye. That was Alessandra Vite. She's absolutely lovely. Um, I, I should share really quickly just one or two um, opening liners I got on Tinder uh, from Americans. Uh, one person wrote, are you in charge of helping scared Americans get safely into Canada? Thought that was cute. How sweet. That's cute. I didn't write back, but it was cute. And um, uh, oh, one other American wrote, okay, so normally I wouldn't match with someone 300 miles away, but given the direction my country is heading, I guess this is contingency planning. Kind of a fun end of the world vibe. All right, moving on. I have to get to my next guest and we're only gonna have five minutes together. So I wanna introduce you to my 22 year old roommate. She is studying fashion in school and her name is Laura Olson. Laura. Hi. She's here in person. Oh my goodness, Laura, how are you doing? You're moving back into this apartment this I weekend. This weekend, it's gonna be so fun. Oh, speak up so they can hear you. Hi, uh, yes, it's gonna be so fun, so romantic. Romantic, yes. sure. why? Um, uh, so, uh, um, this is Laura, she's 22, I'm 31. We have a TikTok account together and she keeps me young and she's gonna help dress me. So we're gonna just really quickly look at maybe one or two outfits that you've selected for me for future dates. Mm -hmm. And Perfect. then she also went in my closet and found things that, that she, that I own that she doesn't like. And so she's going to help me dress myself for a date. Let's okay, see what you perfect. picked out. What's something you think I should wear? Yes, perfect. So I'm thinking about quarantine dates and I'm thinking most of them are outside. So I got this nice jacket that everyone needs in their wardrobe. It's a Gore-Tex waterproof windbreaker, a perfect layering piece for Toronto because of the hood and the rain. Yes, yeah, show, sure, yeah. Yes. Oh, okay, so you want me to wear this shapeless white sheet on a date with a man. I do, because you know what you can do with it is put on this fabulous jacket I found. Oh, wearing. this is a beautiful coat. Okay, so you, you want me to- safe for the weather. Okay, safe for the weather. So when I'm sharing a white claw with a man in Trinity Bellwoods Park, I will be warm. Exactly. And my little oh, wait. perfect piece here for you. Yeah, show, show everyone so what, what you're, you're putting on. up with your dates. Um, I recommend maybe wearing this to start with because. Are you, are you? It's COVID friendly. You will be warm, and if they're catfish, you can just walk away. They're not gonna know who you are. Should I put this on? Okay, let's. May I? Oh, she doesn't okay. have COVID, and it doesn't matter. We live together, and okay. So you want me to wear this rape mask on a date? Yep, I do. <laughs> You'll be safe. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Oh, wow. Well, I can't, I can't wait to make love in this and then cat burgle all the stuff out of his apartment right after. Okay. <laughs> thank you. This was a good, what else do you have? You have another outfit that I should wear on a date? I do have another outfit. So this is going to be for your online dating that I know oh, you've good. been doing. Oh, good. Because we do like FaceTime exactly. dating. So That's fun. Perfect. So it's comfortable. And I'm playing with textures here. Let's see it. For the bottom, you can wear sweatpants because they're not going to see the bottom. Right. Unless they do, but they probably shouldn't. Um, so I got <laughs> Don't this. Don't slip me. <laughs> okay. If I want to show them the bottom, they can see the I'm bottom. I'm next door. Like, <laughs> okay. So I grabbed this top here. 
It's pleated. It's my favorite top. Well, look at it. Put it on. It's like ribbed. It is ribbed. For her pleasure. Polyester. It's perfect. <laughs> Love it. Oh, wow. Okay. This I can't tell if this is, in ter is really cheap or expensive. It's not cheap. I'll not cheap? That. Okay. It's, it's simiaki. And then I have this cardigan to put over top of it. So you're comfortable. There's a lot of cute. There's a lot of covering up and comfort. You can always unbutton it a bit. You can unbutton it. it. Okay. All right. Leave them wanting more. I love exactly. this. The mystery of you're, fashion. You're 22 and I'm 31 and, and you are studying fashion. You love fashion. You have great, I mean, you look amazing right now. Um, what would you say are the hallmarks of fashion nowadays? Like what is hip? What is cool? Um, for me, I think what is hip right now is, yeah, the sexy ninja. That's really good, Henry. So for me, I love being comfortable and also stylish. So I'll wear huh. a weather appropriate attire, anything Gore-Tex I'm very into, which is waterproof, waterproof material. Of course. I like dressing for the weather. Um, a mock neck is oh, kind yeah, of a staple nice. for me. Um, good layering pieces. Layering. That's yes. the key. Okay. Now I also understand you've gone through my closet without my permission and selected clothes that you thought were ugly, that you want me to stop wearing that I bought and that I wear. So let's see what you've picked out. Okay. Well, first things first, this was a favorite of mine in the summer of yours. The a favorite. Okay, yeah. this is like a. It looks like a rest, wrestling singlet. A romper. A it's a romper. Romper. I bought it off Fashion Nova because the lady looked really sexy that was wearing it. She looked like a Kim Kardashian type. But when I wear it, I look like I'm on like a varsity wrestling team. Yes, I would not wear this on a date. You wouldn't wear that? No, I don't think. Men I whistle when I wear that sometimes. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> okay what's the other thing you hate okay we got one for one more item perfect this t-shirt oh yeah my movie night shirt okay let's i think it's giving the wrong idea i love this shirt i don't care what you say i love this shirt whether it's a date night or you're by yourself movie night yes please don't wear this out for dinner i love that shirt Laura, thank you for being on the show. Big round of applause for Laura. Oh, you're, Laura, do you want to stick around? Yes. Yes, yeah, stick to. around. There's a glass of wine in the fridge if you want to grab it. Okay. And we can share it. Perfect. I'll go get the it. wine. She's going to go get it. All right. Wasn't that fun? She's a fashion expert, Laura Olson. You can follow her on Instagram at Neon Maroon. Follow her. Uh, all right. Let's get to our last guests of the show. Uh, it is time to check in with our quarantine couple. Yes, Sharjal Rasul and Nadine Jury. Hello! Hey! Can hey. you hear us? Hi! How are you guys? Oh, we're good. <laughs> oh, wow. Thanks, Stacy. Shout out to Stacy in the booth. Stacy, thank She's you. Rocking for it with those SFX. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, joy. Oh, love it. Hey. Hi. Hi. Hey, Laura. Good to see you again. Yeah. yeah. So I so, love the blazer. Thank you so much. <laughs> Where'd you, at? you were just at West, weren't you? Yes, I was. I was back yeah. in DC um, just to hang out with my family during these weird times. That's so I miss the city. I miss the city, so I came back. Yeah, I'm so happy to have her back. Of course. Guys, you two are our resident quarantine couple. Let's so Nadine and Chargel, you were on Second City main stage together, and also you happen to be the very first two panel discussion guests I ever had on Truth Be Told. The very first episode in 2018, I brought you two on. You were not dating at the time. No, I brought no. you on. Just to talk the shit about, oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Just to <laughs> shoot the shit. We brought you on to shoot the shit, and we had so much fun. And um, and your podcast what, survived that interview. It did. More I, impressive. I guess what I want to know is, like, did the podcast make you fall in love, or like, how did you guys 
go from friends to lovers? That's a great question, Lindsay, that Sharjah will answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. How did it happen? You I guess I was the one. I was the first one who had a crush. I was the first one who had a crush um, on Nadine. And then it just uh, eventually... Um, he wore me down. Uh, I couldn't say no after a while. <laughs> and here we are. We're lighting candles now. What are we? We're on the third night. Third third night of Hanuk- so, uh, Hanukkah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you have to finish the work. I have to finish no, but here's the thing. I, yeah. And you don't have to share anything that makes you uncomfortable. But you had a very special, unique situation where you're doing the Second City Main Stage show, so you're doing eight shows a week together, Mm -hmm. and you're in a tiny dressing room with a bunch of other people. Was there a moment when you went, oh, I think this coworker friendship has just felt a little bit flirty? Or was there a moment where it kind of dawned on you that you're like, oh, I like them as more than a coworker? Not for me. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, I think I, this is, Truths be told, Lindsay. Okay, I'm plugging your show. Thanks. Um, I think I always knew Charzel as a potential long-term mate, and I <laughs> and I think I just had to ready myself for my future. Wow! And where's Charzel from before I even know, knew him? I didn't even know him. Chris Wilson, is there a moment yes, there was I saw? Awesome. <laughs> okay. Let's get uh, let's get Chris and Stacy on after this. We can talk about romance. Okay, listen up. Stacy, <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, you that's always your... were eyeing him, weren't you? I wasn't eyeing him. No, I knew he was there always. <laughs> Chargel always had a special place. Uh, in his heart for me. <laughs> okay, so it eventually happened. Um, yes. And uh, now you guys are living together. I'm and- oh, sorry, I can't hear anything. <laughs> one sec, one sec, one sec. <laughs> this is too cute. What was that? How cute was these that, two are. Um, so now you guys live, well, so quarantine happened. You'd been dating how many months when quarantine hit? Like March, how long had you been together? It would have been just less than a year. It would have been so March, so April, May, June. No, uh, June. June. I've been. I can't talk today. Sorry. Um, Or April, May, June. So three. It's nine months. It was nine months we were dating. So, do you feel like the pandemic kind of expedited the relationship? Because you guys are now kind of shacking up together. I'm curious how the pandemic has affected your romance in comparison to the real world. (laughs) Well, here's the thing. Once you go through Second City together, it was already expedited right? to begin with. We've already been through the most intense experiences. Then the only difference is now he's always three feet away from me. Every Zoom call, I could just go like this. <laughs> and like I'm on the couch. <laughs> and he's there. Because <laughs> there are no rooms. Yeah, in I don't this have house. rooms. No right. rooms. No doors. No escapes. Nothing. And we just hang out upstairs. And we just hang out. Yeah. But yes, we did. We weren't. Pla- I, I don't think I had moving in on the radar necessarily. Uh, neither of us. And so what yeah, happened? Then if the quarantine, what, you know, we all get vaccinated, everything works out. Is, is Shargel getting the heave ho or is Shargel going to stick around? I've tried to give Shargel the heave ho many times during this pandemic. Plenty of times. He doesn't leave. Um, so I don't think so. <laughs> wow. So do you think you guys are officially moved in then? Baby. May- baby. Uh, <laughs> to baby, I say Maybe. You I know. love that we're getting the hot exclusive right yeah. now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. I mean, who knows? Like, let's see. We got to make sure the vaccine works first. I mean, Maybe. first things first, you know, <laughs> vaccine. Um, and then apparently you got to wait a month. So, uh, you know, it's step by step as new kids on the block. Uh, uh, I'm sure you're real romantic. I'm, I'm really, I'm romance. Sure I'm romance uh, <laughs> all around. You know, I've got, I've got chicken gizzard breath right now. Ugh. No, just because we did, we did. Um, no, just because the previous segment we just oh, did okay. um, All yeah, right. a supper. It was so good. It was it was actually so good, um, and it was so fun. Um, yeah, <laughs> I thought I got a bigger laugh, but I keep forgetting there are no laughs. And also with my comedy, there's never any laughs. <laughs> Dude, Laura loves you. No. Okay. <laughs> 
That's it. Save me um, with the blower, please. Would you, uh, what would you say uh, the COVID experience has been like being in a couple living together? Because I, I know my experience living with roommates or being by myself. Uh, what's it like in quarantine as a couple? Do you fight more? Do you, do you feel? <laughs> can I tell you our first kiss? No, can oh, I find out what, I need to know what yeah. Stacey's and Chris's first kiss no, no, was. I gotta... Get them on the podcast. <laughs> But our our first kiss. Um, so we were, we were. We uh, were. I'm sorry. Am I? Uh, it's okay if I. No, it's yeah, okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. So it's just like so we were just hanging out like uh, at her place. We uh, we picked up Ben and Jerry's. Our favorite flavor is chocolate fudge brownie. Um, <laughs> also, her favorite flavor. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then no, it was disgusting. Sorry. Um, so we picked it up and we um, just yeah, it was like a hot like it was a summer night. Um, we hung out like on her, like in her uh, backyard and then I wasn't like, I didn't go in for the kiss or anything. So it was like on the way out, like I put on my backpack, like a little school kit. And then just as I left, it's just, and I was just like, Hey, you want to uh, kiss? And she's like, Hey, let's just get this over and done with. <laughs> sort of I didn't thing. say that. <laughs> I didn't say like, that. She's like, yeah, I was expecting <laughs> it. You know, whatever. And then, sure. sorry. That definitely sounds like Nadine. This is me, yeah. And then she's like, look, but just just so you know, just so you know, she's like, I'm going to have my eyes closed. <laughs> I'm going to have my, she's like, I'm going to have my eyes closed. And she's like, just come in. She's like, I'll guide, I'll guide everything. I'm like, okay. Did I say that? I was, it was, well, you guided. You guided, like, she, like, closed, <laughs> her eyes closed. And then, like, just felt for my face to, just to bring it in. And, like, it was, this was the kiss. It was like. It was her eye, like eyes closed for the whole thing, like and just making sure she guided my face towards her. Okay, now my and, version yeah. of the story is like this. He, it was beautiful. It was, I it was actually amazing. I wasn't sure exactly where I stood. I needed to see, you know, is the romance there? We're not sure, but in the meantime, he's standing in front of me with the school bag on, going, "Is it okay if we kiss?" <laughs> I was like, I can't look at this teen boy right now. And so I had to close my eyes. But after that, now I only open eye kiss, guys. Which is <laughs> even weirder. Even, which is worse. You guys, I I think this is all very sweet. And uh, I actually, I feel like, you know, when you guys got together, I remember being, <laughs> I remember being shocked. And then I, and then five minutes later going, why am I shocked? That's the most effortless, perfect union. I remember oh, thinking oh. that makes complete sense. Why, why couldn't I figure that out at first? Um, so it's, so it's a beautiful pairing. You guys are lovely together and uh, happy Hanukkah. And um, yeah. Yes, and love uh, to all. Um, uh, I'm really looking forward to hearing Stacy and Chris's first hookup story. I would love to hear Chris's one, but they're very secret. They're top I seat. know. That's why we got to get in live. <laughs> Isn't that right? But for real, I, Stacy and, and Chris are the couple that I always want to know the hot goss on, but they secret secret. They tiptoe around, smooching here, smooching there. <laughs> Stacy's just showing off her tech skills right now. It's okay. very fun. Well, Stacy's killing it. <laughs> I want to thank you both for being on the show. Thanks so thank much for being on Truth Be Told. You're uh, a beautiful couple. Very happy for you. Thank you for all the dating. Peace and love. Life. Bye, everybody. Peace and love. Thank you so much, Lindsay. This was <laughs> okay. <laughs> see, 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 see. Bye. -bye. Okay, well, I think we're hitting the end. It's seven sixteen. It flew by. Did you have a good time? I had the best time. Are you sure you don't like the shirt that says movie night on it? No, we need to get rid of that. We need we'll talk about it. Why do we gotta get rid of that? <laughs> so that was uh um Chardine, as they're called, uh Chargel and Nadine. And um just a beautiful pairing. Uh how are you doing, uh uh Stacy? Oh, I'm doing great. That was so fun. I was cry laughing. I really, I loved it. So I love this podcast. You're so sweet. And uh, will you ever give me the 411 on, on you and Chris Wilson? 
Every- you know what? I would love to do that. And you know what? I'll even be a guest on the old podcast if you come back happily. Okay. Fantastic. Because I have, I've, I've pictured this <laughs> thing before and I would like wow. to see it in real life. Well, you know what? I'll give it to you. Well, it's the holidays. <laughs> it's the least I could do. Okay. I want to take a little video on your iPhone of you <laughs> giving a smooch and then text it to me. Oh, thank oh hell you. yeah. You're so sweet. Oh, um, yeah. Give me such sweet comments. I, I don't know how to say goodbye. So I just want to say, oh, thanks, Chris. Hi, Chris. Just tell people where we can find you. What are you What are you working on? What are you up to? Or is there anything you want to plug either of you? It's, this has been so lovely. What a, It's been such a nice night. So tell us where we can follow you for more. Well, she is at Neon Maroon if you want to follow her on Instagram. Uh, right? Yes. Yeah. I'm at Lindso Mullo. That's L-I-N-D-S-O-M-U-L-L-O. And I am trying to write things and not go crazy and not eat absolutely everything I see. And I'm failing at that. And I'm going to find love in this pandemic. You deserve it. Thank you. Um, Amazing. Well, thank you so much. And um, thank you for giving us the time. It was such a lovely, lovely hour. Come back anytime you want. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Hello. <laughs> I went to take a drink right then. And I followed through. How's it going? Thanks, everyone. That was great. Uh, that was great. We got some, it got deep on that one. I, I liked I, it. I yeah, we got some gossip. Um, um, I, I, I'm going to yeah. say that podcast uh, has brought me great joy um, through the 30 episodes that it was running. Lindsay, uh, how dare you uh, take it away from us? But, you know, we all got to do other things in our lives. I I hope maybe someday it'll come back. Maybe she'll uh, come back on our YouTube channel and do some uh, some yeah. lives. Lindsay, please. Oh, please. She wants the juice. We got to give her the juice. We got to give her those th- that, that juice. Got to um, give her the juice. Speaking of juice, I've made myself a lovely rum and soda. It's beginning. The... I hope by the end of the oh, night, the we, uh, shit face. Anyway, yeah. so so uh, we so we, are, yeah. we are we uh, are very excited for the next little bit. Uh, we've got Chris Locke coming up next with friends, uh, various friends that you probably know and love. Nick Nemiroff, um name the other one. <laughs> I don't know, but you'll see. They'll be there in just. Uh, few minutes and uh we've got tons of exciting live streams happening at 9 p.m every day for the next 12 days well 11 days i guess since this is the first day chris locke's podcast happy good is actually the first one tomorrow at 9 p.m sorry were you gonna say something mike uh no no that was gonna say yeah no go ahead <laughs> okay, so that so that's the one tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Catch Happy Good live right here on this channel. Subscribe and hit the little bell so you get a notification and you don't miss out. Um, and I will say, you know, we are uh, providing a lot of content today, and we're uh, we're truly <laughs> giving it our all. So if you want to support us in any little way. Um, in any amount that works for you, um, head over to patreon.com slash the sonar network, become a pod pal. Uh, you can give us two bucks just, you know, for the hell of it, because, uh, you like what we're doing, or you can, uh, pledge five bucks and get access to a lot of exclusive stuff, um, which we'll be putting out over the next 12 days after. Yeah. (laughs) We've got a, uh, we've got a, Sorry, there's a delay, but uh, we've got an exclusive uh, uh, podcast feed on our Patreon uh, with a, a lot of fun shows. And um, the, we just dropped our first episode today of a show called The Pitches, where people pitch us their podcast live on the show uh, for podcasts that they want to add to the network. And uh, our first episode is with Jay Baruchel, Yeah, if you could believe it. 
So uh, yeah, that was uh, pretty pretty crazy. Jay Baruchel showed up, um, sounded a lot like our dear friend uh, Chris. Sounded a lot like him. crazy. Kind of looked like him too. Um, um, but it was definitely Jay Baruchel. I can confirm that with certainty. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah so head, head over there become a pod pile to check that out um and just tune in for the rest of the night we've got chris lock coming up next we've got after that what's at 8 30 oh it's ev's, ev's turn um ev's turn from uh my gorgeous son my gorgeous son fans probably know that ev's turn is kind of like a spin-off <laughs> i guess we'll call it like a spin-off show um with everardo ramirez who is delightful um and at 9 30 we've got the something aptly titled the uh get tom hanks on the phone in 20 minutes challenge uh so that's like gonna be challenge. everyone's like you know we had planking right planking was big for a few years yeah. then everyone's doing the tide pods right everyone's doing the cinnamon challenge all that's old news because the get Tom Hanks on the phone is the new challenge that all of Gen Z is, is, is all up in arms about. Yeah. Uh, it's so very coming exciting. Yeah. And just like <laughs> speaking as like the youngest person here, I can say mm -hmm. as a Gen Z, like, you know, you're very much accurate and um, thank you for talking about us. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to take, uh, speaking of uh, Stacy being Gen Z, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to take a minute to just plug Stacy's TikTok which uh stacy what's you. the what's the TikTok um handle how does it work oh That's how me. does the okay so uh, i'll come <laughs> online for this um yeah. so here's the thing i um i've been on TikTok, so i've been talking i've been ticking i've been on the talks and i recently had the absolute pleasure of hopping on a trend and going semi-viral okay now <laughs> i was ready for everyone to lose my number forget my number um i'm famous now let the brand deals come in um Nothing has changed, okay? And um, I'm very much the same. The views are back down. And um, most recently I made what I thought to be a funny video. Friends have told me it wasn't landing. And um, I made a, a joke about printing money and I uh, a lot of men are now in my comment section explaining inflation. So um, it, I've been taking, I've been talking and it's been a really great time. Yeah, so what's the, uh, what's it, what is it? Just stay at, is it, how does it work? It's at Stacey McGonigal. You can look it up. You can have some fun. Um, if you love a 34 year old woman talking about firefighters that she's finding on uh, TikTok, get over here. Get over to the content. Get over there. Get and over there. Um, oh, yeah, it's going to be a good time. Uh, what can I say? And I didn't realize I was wiping my tears from uh, Chardine's interview, <laughs> and these are real tears. I also just wanted to quickly show a little picture of her Patreon so you can see what's like going to be available there if you want to become a pod pal. Um, which I just think would be great. So we've got Pod Fam, Pod Pal, Pod Boss. You know, get on over there. Have a looky loo. You know? Yeah. There's a lot more exciting stuff coming. Uh, I think every day this uh, for or for twelve days we have twelve exclusive pieces of content, and I'm hoping that we find you know maybe um, a secret supper up there more often <laughs> if yeah. Griffin yeah. is still alive. Secrets yeah. I checked in with Griffin. He said, <laughs> yeah, that's him. I, I checked in with him uh, during Lindsay's show and he said he's, all he said, he's, he's doing better. So. Okay, good. Good. <laughs> I think he's going to be okay. I think his butt will be different for a couple of days, but we've all been there and I, not to be too crass about it, but I don't think, I mean, I don't think anyone has ever had a day of diarrhea and the next day felt terrible. It's almost like a reset. And sometimes we need that. Yeah. So in a way you've given Griffin a gift. Yeah. So We've you're given welcome. him life again. Exactly. Exactly. How is your energies going? You guys have really been kicking along. Mike's now fully reclined. Mariana, how are you <laughs> feeling after the cake debacle? Um, you know what? I think I'm full of sugar. So I think I, uh, I, I honestly want to, I want to personally thank Griffin right here, right now for giving me new life in a very different way. Oh my God, you know, I've never met um, a bunch of sugar that I didn't eat instantly and then spiral <laughs> the next day over. So this is a, also I, a gift. At some point I was, I did find myself 
pacing back and forth in my kitchen and listening to uh, Alessandra on Truths Be Told talk oh about my Tinder. God. What and vision. I was just walking in circles in my kitchen. So um, now I'm finally sitting, which is good. It's good okay, for great. me. Okay, great. How are you guys, um, how are you feeling about my sound cues? Or are we thinking too shock jockey? Are we really enjoying them? How, <laughs> how are we feeling about them, really? Uh, I'm loving it. I'm loving every Thank you. single one. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mike? And Mike, I know you're writing an email, so do you want to tell us about the email you're writing? I, I was just checking in with our next guest that uh, is supposed to start in three minutes and just making sure he uh, is aware that... Um, oh, we're good. ...how to get in. Um, so, can, Mike, can I ask a couple questions about your background? Yeah, I'm Italian. Uh, I grew up <laughs> from uh, immigrant parents, uh, but I was born in Canada. Uh, but I did grow up with a lot of Italian culture and... Uh, and uh, Italian heritage, so, so yeah. Wow! And did they gift you with that very thin tree in the background? <laughs> they actually did. Uh, I don't like you uh, side shaming my tree, though. I, I'm not side shaming. I, I mean, listen, it's a beautiful tree. I just, I like the idea of, I like thinking about you having to set it up and making sounds like, oh, it's not staying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure Mike did that. 10 seconds before he got on camera. So it's, I don't think it's normally like this. I, I feel like, Mike, do you have lights that go on it? I don't, I do not have lights. Oh. Um, and I was not even planning on really doing anything. Mm. Uh, and then Mariana said something along the lines of, well, all I'm gonna say is <laughs> this is a big event and I think that you should do your best. <laughs> so. <laughs> Absolutely. I like, I like this dynamic between Mariana and Mike. It's, 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 uh, you know, it's, it's very nice. That's a, that's a sweet thing. Thank you. Thank you. I've done absolutely nothing. Um, I just have my sign back here, uh, that asks, welcome. Does it smell? Please tell me. Um, that's my one rule in my home. So, um, what, man, what, would, you want, it, what huh? would it smell like? What is well, the got, smell that I've got two dogs. Um, my huge fear in life is that I will smell, um, that my house will smell. So, um, and they're just like old dogs. So you just want to make sure that they everyone's fart. having, yeah. And they fart and they just generally stink. And, um, I just want to make sure when people are entering my home, that it's nice. Well, your home looks beautiful, Stacey. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's quite a disaster. Like, that like here but yeah just this is okay. just off frame yeah. just off frame. Oh, oh you yeah, should yeah. see what's happening yeah, behind this wow <laughs> why do you have a ladder there because i had to go up into my crawl space to get all my christmas stuff that's actually really okay this is again another reason that you would kill it on the bachelorette <laughs> right because you'd go oh my christmas nook Oh yeah. Oh, I'm just hoping that my little Christmas nook's okay in my condo that I own. Yeah. Oh, I he hope that that's okay. Be, he would be worried about his Christmas nook. He, be, he, he would home. talk about like, oh, I imagine us having Christmas together and me getting my ladder and reaching my little Christmas nook. Yeah. I'd so be a hit. I'd be a hit on The Bachelor. Everyone knows I, it. I think you would uh, have to wear this onesie. Oh, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And and do you think if you were on The Bachelorette, you would take a Chardine piece of advice? Now, would you be, are you a closed eye kisser or are we, are we opening? Are we having to see? I think I'm a closed eye kisser, but I don't know that I'd necessarily communicate that to my... I don't think you communicate ever. I think you just kind of kiss and then you, you find out you who find you out. really are. You find yeah. out. Yeah. I think we've all, have we all dated an open eyed kisser? I have. Yes. Me too. It's mm -hmm. weird to me. Uh, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to kiss shame anybody. No, uh, but it's not something that I prefer. I will say. No, no, I will say Mike sounds like he's getting a lot of messages. Um... <laughs> Chris, Chris says he's backstage right now, but I don't see him here. I think he might be in the other. Um, I think he's in the other stream. So you'll have to resend him this link oh, so that. Okay. Yeah. Now, Manny says he's kissing wide open, okay? And, and um, you know, Manny. that's, yeah, that's interesting. That is bold. That's a bold move. That yeah, is yeah. bold. Because that's an absolutely bold move. When, when, the, when the person you're kissing, if they are a closed eye kisser and they open their eyes for a second and they see just this. An eye, I know. 
I know um, we've all done I, it. We've all been there. <laughs> I can't, uh, I just no, I can't tell you that I haven't had a few glasses of rosé and have maybe been caught, you know, with an eye open. But, um, yeah, Manny says I want to know if, if I'm kissing good, and that's you not gotta, the you got to ask. You got to ask some partners there. That's just yeah. that's just how it goes. Yeah, and just watching uh, them uh, is not the way to know. Sorry, Manny. No, I've tried. I've tried. Um, yeah. So I mean, like you know. It's are, we hearing, Mike, are, are we hearing that every time? Is that what's happening? Yeah, Mike's doing a lot of messaging and he has the opportunity to leave and he wanted to stay and let us all know that he's Mr. Hollywood. Okay, and I'm really right. glad. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I think it's important, Mike. I think it's important well, to set your status. I got to make sure that uh, Chris is all set up and he's in place and he's good to go. Great. Well, let me know. Um, let me know that, and then we'll do a little uh, shift into uh, the lovely and wonderful Chris Locke. Great. Uh, I think we, we said everything we need to say. Uh, you know, Chris Locke is one of my favorite comedians Perfect. ever. He's delightful and hilarious, and he's got a great podcast. Amazing. On the network, and he's going to do something. We don't know what, and it doesn't matter because it's going to be great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, so stick around for that in any second now. Plus, oh, yeah. come back tomorrow, 9 p.m. He's doing a live Happy Good right here. Well, so amazing. Different link, but yeah. So here is the lovely and wonderful Chris Love. <laughs> Hey, what's up? Can you hear me? Can me uh, say yeah? We can hear you. Yes. What's up? It's what's Chris up? Locke. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I, I, my mic unplugged for a second. and then whatever. Who cares? Um, who? Yeah, that's right. Um, I got two other guys. I got a bunch of people coming on this to talk to me about this is such a gem. I don't even know how to start this. This isn't happy. Good. This is me interviewing a couple cool people tonight talking about films one is uh the first half hour is two guys that made a film recently and uh it's just blowing up on uh twitter right now and then the second half is two of my uh film uh nerd friends are coming on we're going to talk about real hardcore films and it's going to be awesome um this is last minute lineup so it's all dudes i apologize um but that's also like who gets back to me on time that's what made this lineup today so it's uh, all dudes so if um if you're if you don't want to see men you better get the hell out of here for the next hour but if you really want to see men this is going to be amazing there's like a bunch of men does that sound good all right <laughs> tomorrow though i'm doing a happy good live stream where i will make all people relax and feel good. And then also a half hour interview with one of the funniest female friends that I have, Jackie Pirico. So that's going to be sick. Do we got my first two guests in the waiting room? Yeah. Happy good tomorrow at 9 p.m. Yeah. Um, we are we still, no, we're still waiting for your pals, but we can resend them mm. this new link just to make sure that they're like in and set yeah, up. Yeah. Resend them. Uh, it's, uh, yes. Yeah, you know who it is? We'll send that right now. Yeah, we'll send it right now. Um, oh, wait, they're talking to me. Oh, they are? Oh, yeah. Well, Nick, sa Nick has the same thing that happened to me. Says I'm backstage, but also seemed like the stream ended. So, guys, okay. that happened to me, too. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, it's Chris, okay. You uh, guys, this, is how it, this is how it goes. You're so nice. Okay, we'll send yeah. them the new link, and we'll yeah, get it Jackie. to them right now. Jackie will be a blessing tomorrow at 9 p.m. Hey, there's people I can talk to that are watching right now. That's cool. Ask me a question while we're waiting for the first two guests. Uh, okay. Do I get a question? Yeah. Oh, uh, what's your favorite movie? Oh, the actual Sonar Network's asking me. Um, favorite movie? That's hard because there's like a million. What did I have for dinner? That's better. I can look at it right now over there on the table. I had uh, hot and sour soup. 
um, from a Chinese restaurant in my neighborhood. What are they called? Uh, I forget. Green Door or something? Behind the Green... Any film buffs out there? It was called What's Behind the Green Door? Behind the Green Door. Wood-fired Chinese grill. I had Han Sour Soup and I had General Tao's Chicken without rice. And that's it. I got some seaweed salad, but I didn't get to it yet. And I drank a Diet Coke for some reason. What the hell's that all about? Who the hell drinks Diet Coke? Okay. Do we have my guests yet? Ask me another question, guys. Mm, yeah. So I, I'm just, do I have a Christmas tree? I, uh, yeah. Um, hold on a sec. Huh? Do you ever get to see that on uh, a great late night TV show? The host just be like, oh yeah, let me just show you the rest of my condo. Um, that's a fake Christmas tree, but you know what? I just like, uh, Hey, all right. <laughs> we got one guest. What's up, Nick? How's it going? It's going good. How are you? I was watching you, um, list off what you had for dinner. That's great. Yeah, man. Like I feel like these days and you can probably like you and I are both like we're glued to the screens. We're glued to the socials. We're trying to stay hot. We're trying to stay active through the pandemic. All of this craziness mm -hmm. is happening. You have to admit, being funny these days, not as important as just being a super honest, real dude. <laughs> I agree. I think that's my favorite type of comedian, my favorite type of thing to read online. And uh, that's the future of comedy. Yeah. my My whole comedy persona now is like, shit man yeah i'll just tell you the real thing <laughs> yeah i i do that and then i also love um guys from the 30s and 40s in the rat pack that's kind of my style of comedy now that would be sweet yeah do you um do you ever like just make a video of yourself like sincerely dancing like a guy from the rat pack uh for your instagram account or anything like that I do. I kind of film it in my bathroom on Friday and Saturday nights and I comb my hair back, slick it back and yeah. uh, sort of dance my little heart out. Yeah, that's sweet, man. That's what I'm talking about. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, like my com my kind of comedy now is like just saying stuff like I'm putting a act I actually putting a warmer shirt on right now. <laughs> Someone the other day told me they're like, Twitter has gone from joke to sentences now. And I thought that was a very <laughs> good way to put it in <laughs> what comedy is on Twitter. Yeah. And also like, if you're like a comedic personality, you've got to trust that those sentences, when they're read by the person who follows you, you have to trust that that sentence has your stank on it. Yeah. So, I, so yeah. Okay, so yeah, Harrison was stuck in the same. Okay, what am I uh, drinking? I'm drinking some tea. Okay, Harrison's got to do the same thing. We both, both of us. Hey, all right, never mind. Harrison's on the screen. What's up? All right, now we're, okay, yeah, Harrison, did you catch any of this? No, right? You got to get caught up. Oh, Is Harrison's on. <laughs> We need to, we need to help with Harrison's oh, sound. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Okay, yeah. sweet. here we go. He has a he has a tech guy there. Say yeah. something. You got a tech guy there. Nice. Yeah, I have a a famous tech guy. Well, Nick and I were just talking about how like a famous one. Yeah. <laughs> Name him. Uh, it's, I have um the engineer, like the sound engineer for the Beatles, is right here. My tech guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible uh, that's why it sounds so damn classic yeah i didn't guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i think it's i think it's a two bamp <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing He's got yeah yeah i can hear the whole like yeah it's the reverb <laughs> yeah um you're the british influence yeah yeah i can actually see you crossing the road without shoes on <laughs> <laughs> 
actually, there's a rumor that I'm dead. <laughs> <Started by him. laughs> uh, there's a rumor that we're all dead tonight. Trust me, if anyone's watching this. Um, all right. Oh, <laughs> you guys got sad about that? <laughs> Nick and I were just talking about how um, we feel that the modern pandemic comedian persona now, and you're a grinder too. You're on your socials all the time. You're checking everything Grind. out. Yeah, grinding. Like, do you think that the comedic persona these days is just straight up saying a real thing and that's it? Like, you know, like, um, take your time, Harrison. Pardon? <laughs> so yeah. Take your time to answer, Harrison. <laughs> Just say it. Yeah, like uh, a like a funny tweet now is like, um, I don't know. Like, oh, I thought my guts were bleeding, but then I remembered I ate beets. Yeah. Well, it's like something that's like. Wait, let me just put a little phase phaser on this. <laughs> Uh, I think it's like you say something that's like right off the top of your head, like so, so the top part, you know, of your head. Yeah. You don't even let and, it get to the bottom these days. No, like nothing in the rest, but like just in the super top part and it just flies off. Mm -hmm. But if you use the bottom part a little bit, people are like, no, no, you thought about it a little bit. You suck. Yes. Yeah, you know you're I mean? right. So just no the bottom of the head. Yeah. yeah no, no bottom. Oh, head. man. I wholeheartedly agree. Well, maybe we should talk. Thanks, Harrison. Maybe we should talk now about your latest film, guys. Yeah. You have a film that's, speaking of Twitter and all that, you have a <laughs> film that's blowing up. Uh, it's called uh, Harrison Meets a Guy Off Craigslist to Buy Some Weights. Right yeah. now, it's at 6.1K views. <laughs> Josh Damn. Letterman, Lettermass, old friend 99, <laughs> retweeted it. Okay. You, and God. he's got 24.8K <laughs> followers. Um, the one on your page, Harrison, has 198 hearts, <laughs> 13 RTs, and it's two whole minutes and 20. Oh, fuck, it's 20 oh my God. <laughs> oh, no. We had this whole plan. There's a guy. Dude, Tommy a, we have a we have our own troll. You do? Tommy Nook. Chris. Wait, Tommy. Yeah. Tommy, Tommy, give us a little mercy, Tommy, all right? Wait, is he <laughs> on here right he, now? Yeah, Tommy's in here. He just had a comment. What do you say? Dude, I had to delete his comment. It was, it was making oh, me so bad. It's depressing for real. Damn. Yeah, I believe was, him when he's, he says that. It was making me really I do sad. believe that Tommy is depressed. All right, Tommy, we're about um, to... Oh, go ahead. At least he... Yeah, Nick, you can you explain, like, um, like explain what made you guys want to create this film for social media, <laughs> and it's two two minutes and 20 seconds long? Well, unfortunately, the full film is much longer, <laughs> about six minutes, which is not, uh, you know, nobody wants to watch that. But oh, I watched that one. There we go. That's on Instagram, right? <laughs> yeah, it's the not Instagram. Tommy's cup of tea. Yeah, we were trying to go for the office type vibe. And <laughs> uh, I think I thought we had nailed it, but Tommy Nook commented on the video a few hours ago today saying that uh, it was cringy beyond belief wait oh shit where's tommy is he here someone's saying my tommy. mic is going wacko is my mic oh, yeah. my mic sound good guys i would say your <laughs> mic is sounds uh insane <laughs> right now <laughs> mic is uh is crackling on quite a bit tommy <laughs> Harrison, send over your tech guy to Chris. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. He's, gonna, he's gonna. He's heading over. And now we can't hear you at all. I would say. Me or me or Chris. I hear you, Harrison, but I don't hear Chris. But Chris, what if you mouth it really? 
um, clearly. And then we'll answer your questions. <laughs> Chris, have you ever watched The Leftovers? You can do like what they do there in that show. I haven't seen The Leftovers, so I'm going to watch that. Can, and can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yo, oh. watch, watch the yeah. series, Nick, and come back. <laughs> I will. <laughs> okay, so I watched the six-minute version of your short film. Director's Rick. Cut. Director's Cut, which I appreciate that if you're a hardcore, go on Instagram. The Director's Cut is up there. Um, can I just say what I really liked about the full six-minute cut? Sure. Well, um, at the beginning, you go, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I get the joke. This is six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, at the very end, there's a nice little button that uh, is a different joke. Right. That's true. <laughs> so wait it out, people, is what I'm saying. That, that's exactly Tommy Nook didn't finish it tommy you gotta finish it dude tommy finish it tommy there's a huge twist at the end oh, I, I can't tell if tommy's writing the same comment over and over or <laughs> it's, it's shown in the stream but well, I, 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 I would say like by the way this show is going it's a glitch and they keep showing tommy's one comment <laughs> dude. yeah it seems about right oh. <laughs> tommy, bye. <laughs> yeah, Tom, you got to watch the whole thing because there's one other joke at the end. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's very small, but you'll he'll get it. I'm he actually we were to... yeah. yeah. So the edited version that you had to bow down to the bow studios down. to to put on uh, Twitter or whatever. Um, does that still have that good button joke on the end, or does no. it end differently? Different. No? It ends ah. just with the... Yeah. All, All right. right. <laughs> but that's the one that gets, <laughs> one that gets you know, retweeted oh. by old friends. <laughs> yeah. It's the one that gets, that gets the views. I know. Every time you put something on Twitter, you can always um, depend on your old friends to begrudgingly pass it along, eh? <laughs> you can try yeah isn't, isn't that nice yeah. yeah and then some old friends don't and those ones we internalize and make it personal <laughs> oh yeah and then, today... and, and then we don't retweet their thing later <laughs> oh yeah nick today you tweeted that i'm gonna start a weird podcast or whatever <laughs> i saw that and i'm gonna yeah. Was, was that about me? I have a weird podcast. I know. You're the only one. That was definitely about you. <laughs> you're the only comedian and comedy industry in general is not moving towards that. So that was about you. <laughs> I know. I know. I was like, wow. Wow. What did I do to Nick? But <laughs> you just woke up and had your coffee and was like, I'm taking Chris out. Nick's the new right. cook. <laughs> yeah, I was inspired. Maybe I was still this age after that reading that comment by Tommy Nook. Tommy, you have to watch the whole Instagram one. Yeah, and Tommy, you got to watch the whole twelve-hour Sonar live stream because at the very end we do another little joke. <laughs> Tommy, this is <laughs> dude. I love. Wait, can I just say I love how Tommy couldn't watch the sketch but is watching this. <laughs> 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 I could not finish the sketch. Okay, I'm gonna watch their live chat for 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? This has like three different shots you can watch at the same time, whereas right. your sketch was um, the table in the living room, right? Like a wide shot the whole time, right? Now that was yeah. another question I was gonna ask. Did you guys want to keep it as just that wide shot for the whole six minutes? Or, or did you? No, you did some cuts, right? No, you, there's cuts in it. There were some cuts. We cut there's close-ups. First-person POV. And so you made a movie, of another film in the summer, where you guys meet on a bench and kind of do the yeah. same thing. <laughs> Dude, don't tell Tommy. Tommy, do not, do not. 
seek that but, out. <laughs> but you guys aren't quarantining together during this time, so that must mean that you did the Harrison get some weights one around the same time in the summer. That is true. See, a we like to give up a, a yeah a five month uh, break. <laughs> for people because we know it's annoying to watch a long video well you gotta wait until the first one has fully finally finished circulating the web right yeah and, yeah and, and then you strike again yeah i think yeah. that'll be pretty quick for this next one as well <laughs> that cycle is almost <laughs> over <laughs> is there any way you can sort of like restrain tommy from commenting on your videos before the hype dies down I like, would let like him to go. Physically restrain Tommy oh. and never let him out of the house again. <laughs> we can only, I, we can only just plead with Tommy for his mercy. <laughs> yeah, and does he yeah. ever respond to your pleas, or just does he say so. depressing? He shows, he shows up at the most inopportune times when we're doing live streams, <laughs> when we're just enjoying our nights with our friends. He'll fucking yeah. pop up. Yeah. I was about to, we were about to order some food over here and then bam, I look at Tommy's comment and I just got like flash banged. What food? Night's over. Doesn't even fucking matter anymore. <laughs> 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 Korean, we were going to order Korean food, but it doesn't even fucking matter thanks to Tommy. You can't, you can't let some sort of depressed hacker ruin a fun night of ordering food man tommy you got a you got a problem with korean fried chicken also <laughs> i cannot wait till korean tommy sees this shit. soy garlic korean fried chicken tommy <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get them i was gonna say something worse but i don't think we're allowed to say that <laughs> but we're gonna get them <laughs> Oh, there he goes. Oh, no. It's all right, Tommy. You're glitching out. It's all good. <laughs> what about you, Nick? Did you eat food? I bought pizza. Classic. Like, Don't order it for delivery? Do you, buy, you go outside and buy it? I ordered it for pickup at Village Pizzeria near Dover Court and Bloor. Oh, so you're in Toronto Shout right out. now? I'm in Toronto. I'm very close. I won't give away my exact address, but very close to Hawaii Bar. Oh, well, we should uh, hook up and make a movie then. It's really easy to make one. <laughs> Not that easy. You, you need to <laughs> have the camera that can roll for six minutes the same angle, and then that's about it. <laughs> Yeah, we could do it. I could make a movie about you and I talking and and it's like awkward and stuff and like I'll just use my phone because my phone is like a regular camera now. You know? That actually, yeah. That kind of actually works. We could do a video where we go visit Tommy and just Tommy? Give, him a piece of, give him a piece of our mind. Where does Tommy live? I feel like he lives very, very close to Harrison. Probably, and it's true. Tommy, come on, man, Tommy, come over. We're all we'll we'll order some Korean. <laughs> Let's put this behind us. <laughs> I just want to put this behind. You would us. have Tommy over to eat Korean with you. Yeah, I mean, I would make a You're... sketch with Tommy. <laughs> that's how much. Wow. Respect... That's Look how at much Nick's respect face. Respect he's earned. I mean, uh, it hurts hey, to hear I that. But make, I, maybe I did make a sketch with Tommy. And this is all like fucking uh, rogue advertising. No, maybe Nick. Maybe Nick is Tommy. We'll never know. He's a. Hmm. <laughs> that's <Nick>. pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So that's depressing for real. That's for I the think fans it's, too. Uh, I, I think it's cool that you diversify and kind of do like tweets videos and uh now now pranks <laughs> yeah yeah we're the most, uh, creative people in the yeah if if you ever pitched a tv show would you say i do everything even pranks 
<laughs> and then I would flick the nose of the exec. <laughs> Um, there should be a good Canadian prank show. What do you guys think? Are you guys in? I'm in. Well, yeah. I mean, I also consider Just for Last Gags to be that exact definition. I've never seen it. Do they do pranks? Yeah. It's all pranks. Yeah, all... but is it like, but is it like funny? Like, is it like an actor pretends to be a real person? Mostly police officer will like come to your car and they're like wearing a, just a bra. <laughs> I would say that's 95% of just for last day. I feel like they, they, they're trying really hard to be the office. <laughs> Tommy, do you agree? I'm watching just for last gags. Like, I mean, if I was on just like... for laughs, if I was on just for laughs gags and a, and a Joker cop came into my car. I would say all cops are bastards. Yeah, yeah, it would be hard to pull that off. After. I would be like, I know you're trying to be Dwight right now from The Office. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Dwight was kind of a cop. Yeah, he was a bastard for sure. Yeah. Hmm. Well, do you guys have any like shows lined up doing a tour anytime soon or what are you guys doing? We're going to do a tour of all the small towns in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> right? Harrison? <laughs> Why is I didn't that? Hear. I didn't hear. You didn't hear? The so we're doing our we're doing a show. We're doing all the small towns in Canada. We're driving through, and we're going to perform comedy. Today. Oh, right, right. We're going to all the small towns in our Where's Tommy Nook tour. <laughs> <laughs> it's the I'm We're so Coming for You Tommy Nook Cross Canada tour. <laughs> where's the video? Where's the video on uh, Instagram? Oh, here it is. I found it. <laughs> I found it. You guys are full of shit, man. Oh. What? I said, uh oh. Because you found <laughs> out that we're full of shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, Harrison, what's your name again? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hold on a second. Oh God, I don't want. I don't even like looking at your page, Harrison. This is disgusting. <laughs> I can't find any Tommy Nook on any video. He commented on our YouTube page or on Harrison's YouTube. I deleted it though, guys. It was so. You want me to read? Well, what did he say? This is depressing. A for real? For real. <clears throat> right, right. What is it? There this is so bad and cringy. I couldn't finish it. Like the office. Oh, I see. But with none of the jokes or likable characters and all of the secondhand embarrassment. Fuck. 22 minutes ago? And he edited it. Damn it. Fuck. That's hard. That's hard. That's harsh. Yeah. That's what it's like. Yeah. It's well, like when you try to bring people joy. Do, do, do you guys. Okay, I got to get going because I got two other guests coming on. But do you guys. I just want to end with this because um, I respect you guys as artists. But do you find that when you choose to be an artist and you allow yourself to be vulnerable and put yourself out there and then you get comments from people like Tommy Nook? Don't you think, do you appreciate how he's helping you grow a thicker skin or do you just fucking hate it? I am going to kick his ass. So <laughs> I don't appreciate it. <laughs> I like that answer. What were you, Harrison? Oh, fuck, man. Fuck. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, 
I'm totally unaffected by Thomas. <laughs> 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 My night has been totally unaffected by Tommy Nook, and uh, honestly, I forgot I forgot who he was until you just read that comment about. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, I'm about sorry, him. man. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's bullshit. I've got... Hey, Harrison, why did you stop Tommy tweeting Nook. so much? Did you get in trouble? Tommy Nook, who? Oh, whoa! Are you guys? I did. That? That's the sonar yeah. people did that for you. No, I just stopped tweeting because I was watching uh, Six Feet Under. You guys ever watch that? No. I've watched uh, a couple of <laughs> <And> I... episodes. <laughs> Too busy tweeting. <laughs> oh, I believe that. Oh, shit. Tommy Nick's making a troll face. Ah. Tommy. We can't okay, see you. Go. <clears throat> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Bye. Tommy, Bye, guys. Find you. Bye, guys. Thanks. Yeah, see Peace. you, Chris. Thank you, man. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Tommy. Okay. Do I have... Hey, Chris. Hey. Uh, <laughs> how's it going? Um, so, I need to... We need to send the uh, the new link to all of your guests. I think, uh, I think they still have the old one. Okay. Send... The new one to, okay, me, and then I'll just send it to them? Yeah, that'll be great. Thanks. Okay. Is anyone still watching this? Thank you very much. Oh yeah, people are watching. It's having fun. Tommy Nook is having a great time. Oh is yeah, he, is he a, a real person? Do you know who he is, or is he a mystery? Uh he seemed like a mystery to me. I don't know who he is. Oh, okay. We got we got everyone's here. I'm gonna drop off. Okay, sweet. Thanks. Okay, now for the next part of my streaming, <laughs> I'm gonna talk film with these two gentlemen. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> If you guys saw the, uh, if you guys saw, yeah, if you guys saw the Nick Nemiroff and Harrison Weinreb segment, don't worry about a thing. We can be as shitty as fuck. That was wild. Um, there was Harrison's camera was shaking, and I, I really liked that. It added uh, some variety to this sort of stationary, you know, stuff that everyone else was doing. It's a pirate broadcast, like Chris Shepard. A hundred percent. Chris Shepard, <laughs> pump up the volume. Um, Harrison did not give a fuck. What are you drinking, John? Uh, Ryan soda in a jar. I couldn't Very get it nice. here. No, so. that's good. I got this stupid old. Everybody know. Hey, no, not, not stupid. Steam whistle, everybody. What about Mike B? Yeah, what about Mike B? You guys know that I love um, the food scene in Toronto and, and in every city I go to. And a big part of the food scene... In Toronto is food trucks, taco trucks, sushi trucks, and there's a beer from H Henderson, a local brewery called Food Truck. Wonderful. They have the only food truck in the city because it just parks in their driveway and sells food to people <laughs> drinking heavy beer. <laughs> it reminds me, the name of the beer, Food Truck, reminds me of whenever I'm hungry and I think, hmm, I wish I could have some, uh, some food. <laughs> it reminds me of the song Police Truck by the Dead Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> but the, night, the night when we go downtown and we sell some food. <laughs> that's very good. That's Christmas yeah. right there. Jello B. Yeah. yeah, that song is about um like a food truck um <laughs> pulling Jello by Afro over on the sidewalk and just beating the shit out of him. <laughs> because he's too he's too political. <laughs> he's just too weird. Yeah. You know? yeah it's yeah. like, hey, you're telling too much truth. We have to kick the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe that um, after all these years, I, I guess it's about almost 40 years, Jello Biafra didn't change the world, actually. That sucks. I mean, I don't know. Did you hear his uh, single Shock You Pie uh, by Jello Biafra <laughs> in the Guantanamo School of Medicine? <laughs> Also, there's, there's no. an argument to be made that his electronic project called Lard 
sort of laid the groundwork for the EDM explosion. This is a true story because, as we all know, Lard is uh, a joint between Jello Biafra and the boys from Ministry. Uh, and I once convinced an ex girlfriend that I was getting a full back tattoo of the lyrics, The Power of Lard, uh, with Jello Biafra's head on one shoulder blade and then Al Jorgensen on the other. And she believed me for like 48 hours. It was just oh. a trick. It was a mean trick. <laughs> yeah, well, I got a tattoo on my belly that's kind of like that, but it just says lard ass. I like that. <laughs> lard life. Lard life. I just, <laughs> you know what? I will say this. In regards to Jello Biafra, at least 40 years ago, maybe he did uh, make a change for the better because uh, he did get us talking. That's true. And isn't that kind of, yeah. And I can't think of Phyllis Schlafly's name without hearing it in his voice, you know? Yeah. Was, was there a Jello? So, Chris, you were in. Oh, that's true. Chris is in the Phyllis Schlafly show. Was Jello in it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was it called? Mrs. America? Uh, I, 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 uh, I definitely watched every episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Unfortunately, I just forget right now for some reason because i'm really right. into the man in the high castle right now oh man what else um, but either way, and Jello Biafra's been, not in yeah. that for some reason but to because he told them to fuck off to speak it, to your point about not changing the world i read that book reagan land recently and it's uh, all about uh, ronald reagan and the mm -hmm. thing's like 1100 fucking pages and as soon as i got it i went to the index and looked up uh biafra jello to see if there's any mention <laughs> and no mention whatsoever he's totally been non-person from the reagan mm -hmm. era Oh, so that was what? totally a conscious choice by uh, Reagan on his deathbed. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Rick Perlstein, the author of Reaganland, just like couldn't get access to Jello Biafra for an interview? Or well, he's uh, a Chicago guy, so you think he'd be in with Ministry and all the wax tracks recording artists from the eighties? But I don't know. Right. Well, I won't be reading that book then. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Um, the Man in the High Castle is a weird show because. The whole premise of it is, what if Jello never got to sing Nazi Bones Fuck Off? <laughs> <laughs> and some other like re like reverse weird uh, Jello um, was called like, uh, sang some song called like Nazi Punks. Are good. Are good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What would be the, in what would the inverse of Jello by Afro be? Just like. Uh, liberating Allied Forces Fuck Off. <laughs> Or no, his name would be like uh, meat full of meat, and I'm fine. <laughs> um, Healthily what... full of meat. <laughs> What's the opposite of a biafra? <laughs> I don't know. That's what I was trying to. What was it? What was it like a? There, it's a. It was a part of Nigeria, or it's a region of Nigeria. I, I, I think Nigeria. It's, like a, it's like a rogue republic. I'm probably gonna get canceled for. But yeah, I think you're right, Michael. It's part of Nigeria. Uh, oh God, it it like made, a, I yeah. yeah, I did not know what it meant. I it just was like it up. there was a war, like some sort of civil war. I think that province or region, I don't know anything, uh, was trying to claim independence, or there was some sort of awful war, and then a a man who had a way with words used that country's name as his punk uh moniker this is what you get you got a couple history buffs on the pod <laughs> yeah um it's not a pod it's a stream i feel like pod <laughs> has just become the basic unit of interaction <laughs> we're all just podding about um <laughs> on twitter i said we were going to talk about films we have 20 minutes what do you think Oh, we were talking about uh, nine-year-old West Coast hardcore for <laughs> ten minutes, which is the best hardcore. You got to admit. Oh, I gotta ask Christmas films. Did you guys see that film Happiest Season? <laughs> no, I'm looking it up. It's on my list of uh, Chris of new Christmas classics to watch, but um, I tried to. It wouldn't play on my TV for some reason. It starts. Uh, it starts Dan Levy in it, and. Uh, uh, He's like a side character, best friend to Kristen Stewart. But then by the end of the movie, he just gets totally like adopted by this random family where he shows up at a party. And it's like it's it's like he won the Emmys while they were finishing cutting it. And they just work him into every scene in the last 20 minutes. <laughs> but before that, he's just like on the phone in a separate location twice. <laughs> I heard that Kristen Stewart, the only reason she got that role is because her dad is French Stewart. 
<laughs> yeah, it's all it's nepotism all the way down. And Patrick Stewart is your dad as well. What the, the hell? The Stewarts, the Stewarts run Hollywood, and it even goes all the way down to Stewie of Family Guy fame. They <laughs> oh. pull the string. They get people on uh, shows and in movies. It's awful. Hey, I got a funny sketch for you guys. Uh, Patrick Stewie. Oh, nice. Right? What would, what would that sound like, Chris? Uh, ugh, engage. I hate my mom. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, can I bring up a movie? I, I was trying to bone up on r- recent movie news recently, and mm-hmm. uh, I saw a headline today uh, that Harrison Ford, the actor, uh, married to Ally McBeal, he's uh, he's returning for a fifth and final time, apparently, to play Indiana Jones. And what's interesting about that is that he is 78 years oh, old. Oh, yeah. And then how old is Indiana Jones? Like, is he going to be, like, stopping 9-11 or something? <laughs> <laughs> He grabs both buildings from 9-11 and puts like a bag of sand where they should be. Yeah, he, he, he lassoes them back together. Or it's like Indiana Jones has to like save an artifact to stop the OPEC crisis or something. <laughs> that is interesting. Will, it, will he be just like seated like in every scene and just sort of like, like how will they do the action scenes is, is what I'm, I'm wondering. Unless he has like a young... Like, didn't he have an apprentice in the, in the yeah, last one? Short, I guess Short Round will be just giving him medicine. No, in the new one, he had Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> I think his days are numbered for uh, yeah. Indiana Jones yeah. movies. He's uh, a bastard, man. Yeah. yeah. Um, Maybe Harrison Ford can just crash planes into different airports around the world and they can put all that footage together as an Indiana Jones movie. It's Indiana Jones doing 9-11. <laughs> Indiana Jones he's, gets he's radicalized, <laughs> and there and there's a scene at the beginning where you don't see that it's him, and then he's going through airport security, and like uh, a door almost shuts, and then he grabs a box cutter at the last second, you know, <laughs> and then you see that it's Indiana Jones that he's gonna hijack planes. Yeah, hunting for use- treasure in the Middle East got his all those years got his head turned around. Exactly, <laughs> he, was, he was radicalized. He, did, he found an old tomb with like essays by Said Qutb and just became an Islamic fundamentalist. Yeah, he's Maybe like, Neil Wait Young. A minute. This kind of makes sh- sense. <laughs> I was gonna say Neil Young should rewrite and re-record "Let's Roll" to add a verse where he denounces Indiana Jones. Or it could be "Let's Roll," but it's about that big boulder from the first one. <laughs> 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 Do you remember? I mean, obviously you just mentioned it, but Neil Young's like pro, not pro 9 11, the attack, but when he had this like pro war in Afghanistan song, uh, let's roll. Was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. It was like, let's go. It was from the point of view, wasn't it, of like the, the passengers on flight 93? On United, I... United 93, yeah. But I think the yeah. general code of the song is like basically an ad for Operation Rolling Thunder or whatever. It wasn't like cheeky or anti, like it wasn't pacifist or anything. I don't think no. so. He has a weird, he has weird things like that. And now he just has a song called like the president's a joker. Yeah. And doesn't the president like use it at rallies and then he cu- tries to sue him, but then he goes off, oh, forget it. Oh, he uses keep on rocking in the free world, which is hilarious. Cause the lyrics just describe like a miserable dystopian United States. <laughs> I know these like Republican presidents never get the irony of like Bruce Springsteen or Neil Young. No, it's not their acumen. Uh, <laughs> when I was watching those, speaking of movies, although yeah. it's a TV show, but they did a Showtime biography or doc series with the Reagans. And Ronnie, Re- yeah, and Ronnie Reagan Jr. is like so radicalized where he's constantly trying to be like, I was trying to explain the concept of intersectionality uh, to my dad. And, and I went to the grave and was. Uh, <laughs> I don't know anything about the guy. I'm sure he's probably like Mark Thatcher. Like he's just like a total piece of shit. But he's just like coming off trying to be like, like just like pissing on his parents' legacy to be like. I remember during the. Yeah, he was. What were you going to say, Mike? I was going to say during like the um, the debates and like when uh, there uh, was the primaries for the Democrats, there would be ads on CNN between like between segments. And Ron Reagan Jr. would have these ads for like the American Atheist Association or something. Oh my God. He's probably like a, a men's yeah. rights guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I remember like Ronald Reagan Jr. or whatever being like a VJ on MTV or something in the 90s. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm gonna he used to hang out with Snit from YTV. I gotta, I gotta look it up. 
You'd see PJ <laughs> Phil. You'd see Ron Reagan Jr. Yeah, be, R- yeah. Ronnie Jr. would be throwing to Doug and Santo Paquito every afternoon. <laughs> so is Ron Reagan He hosted Jr. Saturday Night Live in 1986. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you I'm onto something. He did like something there, in entertainment. He had a talk show. I think he had a, a short-lived 80s talk show, and he was like a media figure briefly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. He had a daily three hour show. Three hours only? And his liberal <laughs> view <laughs> and his liberal views contrasted with those of his late father. Uh yeah, That's, there you go. It's such a funny move because like obviously the only reason anyone gives him a minute thought is because of who his parents are. And then you just be like, Well, I actually think that uh having AIDS is bad and that we should stop it. I mean, good for him, I guess. He used to say that in the 80s, and his dad would be like, well, no. Let's, well, not... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's not rush our judgment about AIDS. <laughs> Go to your room if you keep saying that AIDS is bad. <laughs> he was he, he threatened to shoot Ronnie with the Star Wars laser. <laughs> <laughs> he really goes, he goes hard on his dad in that documentary series. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like he's he's doing a little PR for himself or something, but uh, yeah. I don't know why. I don't trust him. I don't trust Ronnie Jr. If he's watching, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. His whole arc in that series is he comes out unscathed and more progressive than you could ever could imagine and ready to tell you the truth. Um, he, yeah, but you're also, right. Yeah, Reagan... but also, he tries to like talk, get, like talk his parents out of stuff. When he's like, well, I don't think my father was homophobic. I just think that he uh, threw gay people under the bus because he needed the support of the Christian right. It's like, oh, that's much better. Like, what a, what a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> he only twice in his life, once during the communist witch hunt and second during the AIDS crisis, threw his friends under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> Ronald. Have uh, they made a biopic or like, has, has Oliver Stone or anyone made a... Um, a, a Reagan movie where they just take him apart and make him look silly. No, but they should. Cause I rewatched the Oliver Stone Nixon with Anthony Hopkins as Nixon, uh, like last week. And Oh my God, what a hoot that is. It's like three and a half hours long of just like him yelling at a fireplace, getting hammered. <laughs> Uh, and then Bob Hoskins plays J. Edgar Hoover, and he's like, <laughs> most, like a fat gay guy, where there's just like a lithe Persian boy, like feeding him tangerine slices and stuff. <laughs> well, how are we ever going to know if that really happened or not? That's true. Damn. Um. Yeah. Do you think Oliver Stone is going to make a a Trump movie or what? Uh, I don't know. He better. I don't know. I said I saw that one with uh, Brendan Gleeson as Trump. The what is he Irish actor? Mm. Uh, oh yeah, I heard it was good. The Comey role. It's just like it's one of those things. It's like I had the same <laughs> feeling when you watch the Al Pacino Phil Spector movie, where the whole time you're just checking your watch, waiting for him to like show up in court with that fucking huge. Phil <laughs> <Spector> <laughs> <movie>. <laughs> Yeah, it's like so I'm. Funny. I'm only invested in this to the instant that like Brandon Gleason waddles out and starts. Does talking. you don't even <laughs> care about the part where he fatally murders someone at his house? Yeah. You're like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> boom, boom, bang, bang, get to the afro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is does Gleason do Trump in uh in like a? F- irish accent like does he just sound like <laughs> irish trump? uh yeah he sounds it's like more so than the mark critch trump where it kind of has that sort of east coast lilt <laughs> that is that is the way to do a trump you want to make trump everyone has their trump but you want to make him sound like he grew up in saint john's Newfoundland. <laughs> totally can you do it mike can you do uh critch a, trump and yeah newfoundland um, trump let me see let me see Many people are saying that <laughs> I'm the greatest president who's ever run the country. That's really I, good. I, 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 that's no good. That's no, no good. that was really good. What the hell? Yeah. Um, I feel like, um, well, Mike and I were talking about Caligula a while ago. And uh, we, were, we found out that um, obviously after he was murdered and buried in a shallow grave and etc., cetera, um, the all of Rome tried to basically never mention him again, kind of like erase him from the history books, tried to move on. Clearly his uh, reputation was so um, drastically uh, omnipresent and evil that we know about him to this day. It was impossible to do. But do you think that for the next little while, 
there will be that for Trump where it's like Oliver Stone even won't try to make a movie about him yeah, because, because we will try to erase these four years. I, as, I, I do think there's something to that idea that people always talk about where like it exists beyond parody where it's like right now my only like wish like if i had like a wish from a genie or a monkey's paw would just to be like frozen in ice for 300 years and then thaw out and then see how they talk about right now like with like the clarity of like hundreds of years of afterthought but yeah i don't know Calig they should make like the caligula movie but about trump like the one that bob guccione produced yeah <laughs> with malcolm mcdowell that's basically I just like a softcore porno yeah i haven't seen that since i was like a late teen and i saw it for the reason you mentioned and therefore ended up being horrified and disgusted yeah uh, i didn't want to associate jugs with like a horse being fisted at such a young age but um yeah was that movie anything but sensational or did it have an allegory to it at all at that time did, did it also have like real actors in it like peter oh, malcolm mcdowell yeah. peter oh, O'Toole, no. malcolm mcdowell was yeah. caligula yeah, yeah and Mirren? helen Mirren was in it yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's okay weird. now we're talking film we're talking film oh we're talking dame helen Mirren. <laughs> is she a dame she's a dime say like that yeah she's a dame to me <laughs> yeah. damn dame yeah she's in another malcolm mcdowell related movie the uh, lindsey anderson movie uh oh lucky man oh lucky man yeah, yeah. where she mm -hmm. um breastfeeds him and mm. uh that was a, a, a very big moment for me as a young man watching uh films the, the title referred to you watching it you were the lucky man <laughs> i turned to everyone in the theater and said this movie's about me <laughs> You saw it in cinemas. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, when I saw that scene in the theater, uh, I yelled out loud, well, this scene is just fine. <laughs> I said, I have no opinion about it whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah he, actually, I forget. I, I forgot. I said, I wish it was the opposite. And when are we going to see a woman nurse on a man's nipple? Because um, there was a girl beside me that I was kind of into and I was trying to impress her or whatever. Oh, by being woke, like <laughs> yeah, woke in like nineteen ninety eight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'd like to, I'd like to breastfeed a woman. <laughs> I was woke in ninety eight, though. I remember watching me, myself, and Irene, and going, "That's mean, dude." <laughs> to Irene, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <And> schizophrenics. <laughs> <laughs> me, me, myself, and Irene gets a pass because he's genuinely schizophrenic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the last Jim Carrey movie I saw. Uh, aside from the documentary about him doing Andy Kaufman was uh, uh, the Truman Show, which was 70 years ago. So I don't know yeah. me, myself, and Irene. I don't know Liar, Liar. I don't know. Um... No, me, myself, and Irene came up before Truman Show. What? Oh, shit. Wasn't it a Fairly Brothers joint, me, myself, and Irene? Yeah. Or it was, mm -hmm. It's in that gross out wheelhouse. But okay, Michael, you saw what is with that fucking Andy Kaufman documentary? Like, is that how Andy Kaufman behaved like that? Like, wasn't he just a guy who played characters and stuff? Like, that's the thing. Have you seen that, Chris? Have you seen Andy and Jim? Uh, Jim and I couldn't. Like, I just couldn't. I started you seem like torturing his assistant producers on this movie. And even <laughs> yeah, Andy that's Kaufman not what Andy Kaufman was like. Oh. His friends, like, who's the wrestler uh, oh, that he was? Uh, Tommy. I know who you mean, though. I can't remember the guy. Oh, name. Jerry Lawler. Jerry Lawler. Yeah. And, and other people who knew Andy Kaufman are like, Andy, Andy was not like this. <laughs> this is not, this is not accurate. And the scene where Jim Carrey dressed up as Andy Kaufman, in, like hugs and cries with Andy Kaufman's living family was, it's just, oh, he should be arrested and, and executed. Yeah, that was, and then like, I feel like um, it's probably just Jim Carrey in the first person saying, um, his family really appreciated that I did that. Like, <laughs> do, do you think Jim do you feel? Do you think uh, you're right, Mike. I just want to say you're right. Me, myself, and Irene came out two years after Truman Show. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I win. You're more filmed than I am. Do you guys think that Jim Carrey had that level of intensity for like all his productions? Like when he was making the mask, he would live as the creature of the mask and be like blowing an old car horn into the air of some caterer on, on set when he made ace ventura <laughs> he would sleep in an elephant's anus every night at the end of uh shooting ace ventura. Uh, yeah. to be in character <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, that's good acting. What was the last thing Jim Carrey was in? I tried to watch some show he made where he was like uh, a mentally ill children's entertainer. <laughs> oh, right. And there wasn't enough daylight between the performance and the, the character that I, I could really <laughs> enjoy it. <laughs> He was supposed to be like a, a sad Mr. Rogers kind of guy, or like was it just? Yeah, he was like a pup, uh, like a Mr. Dress Up, like a puppet guy or something. All and... his characters, whether it's him being himself in real life or him taking on this children, they all have that sad eye look. Like I'm, I'm being a fool for your happiness. You know oh, what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. I'm like saving the... you with my craziness like the robin williams thing where like every robin williams movie has to end with him basically being like christ where it's like yeah oh, it can't just be a funny movie it has to be like an advertisement for the idea of laughter <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah remember when life is beautiful won an uh, oscar or roberto benini did or whatever and then um a, next year robin williams made jacob the liar oh my god <laughs> you know i always that's where i was like i was just getting old enough to be like I get what's happening. I fucking hate this shit. You know, you know who uh, Benini beat out for that is Nick Nolte for the Paul Schrader movie Affliction, where he just plays like a self-destructive single parent alcoholic cop in a small town. I saw town. that. Uh, and I watched that recently. And his performance in it is so good, but it's like it's obvious that he like did it kind of as a favor because they're like, you, it's a big meaty role. We'll get you an Academy Award, and then he gets beat out by some fucking Holocaust clown from Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I remember Roberto Benigni's acceptance. He jumped on the chairs and made a mockery of our beloved institution. And he goes, he goes back, I don't deserve like, this. Yeah, he I didn't think deserve he it. Back, like uh, Italian, uh, the Italian cause by 30 years by playing a character when he received the Oscar. That's why they, that's why they had to make The Sopranos so that they could do PR for Italians. <laughs> We're actually cool. We're cool. We're not... Uh... <laughs> We don't wear tuxedos. We just eat sandwiches and wear track pants all day. Was, what season of The Sopranos was it where they put a hit out and they 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 uh, tried to assassinate Roberto Benigni? Uh, yeah. I... Well, he was making about his fourth Pinocchio movie in <laughs> Meadowlands, New Jersey. <laughs> they put the gun right to his face and he goes, yes, a, a buzz off. <laughs> I don't have the heart to do it. <laughs> yes, a buzz off. Buzz off to you, too. This is like, okay, so because, because of the pandemic, obviously you never see anyone. And, Michael, I feel like the last time we talked is when I was on your podcast, and we talked for like 10 minutes about Roberto Benigni. <laughs> <laughs> and, and his series of Dante lectures at Casino Rama in Aurelia, Ontario. Oh, well, after it's not unusual because when, when you know guys get together and the beer is flowing, inevitably <laughs> Roberto Benini will come up. <laughs> we got Benini on the brain. No, Chris, after Roberto Benini like won his Oscar for like desecrating the grave of Auschwitz. He did like a tour where he was giving lectures about the medieval poet Dante. Yeah. Uh, Cause like, I don't know if he had any particular expertise in it, but like, it's, it's like when you go buy a ticket to a Steve Martin show and he's playing fucking banjo the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, instead of like Roberto Benini just like blowing kisses for 90 minutes, it's like a lecture about Dante. Yeah. It's like you get to, yeah. Should we go see him? Is Benini going to be doing like fucking clown shit or is he going to be talking about purgatory again for half an hour? <laughs> um, okay, we got to wrap it up. That's 8.30. We talked about film a little bit. And we talked about punk and Reagan. That was pretty sick. Wow, okay. Did you guys have fun? Uh, I had a great time, yeah. Yeah, I had a blast. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> and we're doing, some guy says we're absolutely wonderful. Oh, the let's Duke keep going forever. <clears throat> Is this what is this for, Chris? Is this for charity or something? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I said uh, Sonar Network does me and Mike's podcast, and they're doing a twelve days of Sonar promotion, and we they wanted us to jump on and be ourselves. Cool, I love the Sonar Network. But yeah, we didn't make any money, and we didn't give any money to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> this is the future. Yeah. The only thing is, is. Uh, you got to promote yourself, John, to the Duke one two four nine or whatever. Nice. So the Duke one two four nine, check out John Semley's uh, articles and writings and books and Twitter. <laughs> I literally 
didn't know what to do. So I was like, well, then I guess uh, Mike, John, and I will have a beer. Oh, no. Yeah, I was just sitting around. I was just watching uh, Fassbender movies and playing video games all day. The Duke uh, 1204. Just smiles and joy. Okay. Just smiles. That is probably someone who works for Sonar. Oh, okay. It's a plant. <laughs> John, are you playing a Fassbender video game? Do they make a video game version of the bitter tears of Petra von Kant? Yeah, it's like you have to escape a very like uh, domineering marriage through like <laughs> stealth mechanics. <laughs> and, Holy, you read the soul. Or, or you play Fassbender directing a movie and there's just like a budget meter and a Coke uh, meter that you have to keep in perfect <laughs> harmony. I love the idea that there's a video game where your character has to make sure that their uh, partner can't tell that they're lying about their how they feel in that moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then like, you can... uh... <laughs> uh, okay, let's continue this convo somewhere else. We did it on the sonar thing. Okay, Thanks. bye guys. Thanks guys, bye. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> We're back. I immediately muted you. <laughs> um, I was like, it's my turn. Um, so, uh, yeah, that was cool. Uh, Chris Locke, John Semley, Michael Balazzo, um, great Nick guy. Nemirov, yeah. Harrison Wentrov. Yeah. So it was. We had fun. We had great. And uh, it's uh, eight thirty, so we're just gonna we roll. Do. We gotta move along. We gotta roll right into the next show. Uh, but you know all the stuff, you know, lots of great stuff coming up. We got Santa Claus coming in to say hi. Uh, we're going to play oh, Quiplash yeah. with Santa. You, you know, know what? Subscribe to YouTube, all the stuff. If you want to ask questions to Santa, feel free to drop them in the chat when he's around, or you can even email them to Santa at the sonarnetwork.com. Yes, he works for us. Yeah. So let's go. Everard. All right. So, so any further ado, Ev's turn. What's up? Welcome, uh, welcome back to the live stream. That's right, the massive twelve hour sonar live stream um this is ev's turn and i am the titular ev everardo ramirez yes um that is me we have a a, a, a crazy show for you lined up uh tonight we have some uh we, we're gonna be exploring all about uh the world of social media and tiktok uh we have some uh exciting social media influencers coming up uh but before we get into that sonar did ask me to um make some announcements and actually before i do uh before i do that okay are my guests in the are they ready to go i don't know who knows i don't even know who i'm asking uh they are uh, not yet they are not did you, did you okay. send them this the the <laughs> updated link um i think i did <laughs> but okay. i'll i'll make sure that i let me just check that right now check in with just, them yeah um but you know they are social media experts they should know how to do this yet they are uh seem to be failing quite miserably in that regard and kind of bringing the whole Kind of bringing the whole show down to a grinding halt, which a lot of people are upset about in the comments, as we can see. But that is, as you know, no fault of my own. So please do not do that to me. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we sent them the link. Hopefully that works. If not, oh boy. <laughs> uh, but we'll give them some time to log in because actually Sonar did ask me to read some announcements before we get going. Uh, we are in uh the prime time of the sonar uh marathon hour eight i believe very cool um but coming up 
on the show. Uh, we are going to be live streaming with the host of Red Pilled. That's right, the uh, men's uh, issue po and politics and fatherhood and music podcast. Uh, they will be doing a beef chugging challenge, and that is raising money for uh, new workout bands. Um, so that is cool. Be sure to check it, check out the beef chug challenge with the Red Pill Boys. Uh, and after that, we have um, a couple audio engineers from Sonar will be raffling off Funko Pops. Funko Pops for death row inmates. And that is a uh, great cause that I'm happy to, to announce to you guys. Funko Pops for death row inmates. They will get um, maybe a Deadpool, maybe a Thanos, maybe a Dennis Franz Funko Pop, hopefully. Um, so check in with a, uh, a couple audio engineers from Sonar in, uh, after this. And uh, one last thing. Tonight, we are launching the all-new Sonar YouTube channel. Uh, and if you are a fan of uh, viral videos, then you will love YouTube, one of the uh, websites where you can check out all sorts of viral videos uh, and other things, I guess, also podcasts now, because that's where you're watching this already, so you already know about YouTube. Uh, but also be sure to check out the all new Sonar app. That's right, the Sonar app, uh, the place where we can hang out with all sorts of our, our, our favorite podcast hosts and, of course, audio engineers. Uh, and fans can ask them questions, kind of see what kind of music they're into and all sorts of stuff like that. There's a, a great app. Um, and it is, uh, we're brought to you by the same people who. Uh, brought you the Jeremy Renner app. If we remember the Jeremy Renner app, this is the all new Sonar app. So ask your favorite Sonar audio engineers uh, what their favorite music is, uh, maybe about their uh, workout regiments uh, and other kind of beliefs. And the app is, um, it's only $29.39 uh, per month. And that is the beginner app, um, which just gets you into the, um, the app and you can only see profiles and if you want to be able to comment and interact and give people um, stars which is uh, kind of the whole app is based on a star system um, you can pay real world money for tokens that can buy you stars and then so you spend five dollars which gets you uh, three tokens and if, when you spend three tokens, then you, if you have enough tokens, then you can eventually give a star and you can kind of give your star to your favorite Sonar host. If you want to give a star to maybe the, the host of Spooked, um, it's only uh, about eight tokens, which is about 42 um, real world dollars uh, for one star. Um, and so these are all the functions that we will be advertising and um, coming up including um we are extreme we have uh we will be streaming heathcliff comics on the app we have the licensing um for heathcliff and we're excited to see that including the all new uh heathcliff podcast which is um it, it's a mix between um serial and this american life and is hosted by heathcliff um, okay, so that is the announcements that we have. Um, and other than that, oh, also we have a sponsor, very fun sponsor of the show, which is, um, this is a guy I've, I've been working with him for years. He is uh, one of my favorite people to work with, always has quality products in the world of men's wellness. And that is, of course, Dr. Oz, all natural uh, style Chia Vapes. And that is Chia Oil uh, Vapes, natural, um, all sorts of health benefits. Dr. Oz, uh, Chia Oil Vapes. And these are vapes that can cure any kind of problem uh, that you have. And I, w I go through about, I go through about four, four canisters um, every day of vapes. And... You should see my apartment. 
I'm walking around the place. There's can there's vapes canisters clinking around. You'd think it's people think it's uh, Santa's jingle bells, but it is my Dr. Oz uh, vapes, and these are health vapes made with chia seeds, which we all know is one of the most uh, powerful seeds uh, known to man. Which is why people have been eating chia seeds for years, and actually, um, studies show that uh, if you feed your babies chia seeds. Uh, the raw chia seed from a young age that they can grow up to. It basically is nature's limitless pill. And these babies then grow up to be the world's uh, millionaires and billionaires. And so check it out. Dr. Oz, uh, always happy to have him on board for the Sonar live cast uh, Ev's turn portion, which is, uh, I'm telling me they are not uh, officially endorsing this, as for sonar, but this is an official endorsement for the Ev's turn hour. Um, okay, so let us just uh, get right into it. Uh, let's get into the show. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Everardo Ramirez. I am a podcasting student, veteran student at Ryerson uh, Podcasting Academy uh, University here in Toronto. And um, I even uh, was so lucky to intern and host on a show on this very network. And it became immediately one of the all-time most popular podcasts uh, that Sonar has ever seen. And they had never seen anything like it, they said. And many people uh, said it was one of the greatest podcasts they'd ever heard, one of the most imaginative uh, voices to come in the world of podcasting. And... We were so lucky to even go to uh, Montreal for Just for Laughs and perform our live podcast in front of Victor, the pesky green little elf of Montreal, Just for Laughs himself. Um, In what was critically uh, claimed one of the podcasts on our program by the Just for Laughs critics. Um, So after... Conquering the world of podcasting, a lot of people are wondering what I've what I've been up to, and well, uh, it brings me a great pleasure to announce that I have conquered the world of podcasting, and I am looking for my next mountain to climb, which is social media. Um, social media, one of the great tools of the modern age, uh, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and everything else. Social media, we love, everyone's using it um, to share funny videos and viral videos and all sorts of things uh, and kind of news and beliefs on social media. And a lot of people are making a lot of money on it, which is why I have invited my next guests to come on the show. Uh, They are officially TikTokers, and by that I don't mean clock makers and Maybe they do that on their own time. I'm not actually sure. We, uh, many people are dying to know. Uh, but they are TikTok influencers. One of um, the, They have an a influencer house uh, called Swag House. So uh, please welcome to Ev's turn, the, uh, the, the influencers of Swag House. What's up, guys? Yo, what up, Andy? What up, Mark? Hey, guys. Thank you they so much. They are not there. Me. They are not here. It's just All right, me. true. No cap. Fair. What up, Evan? What's going on? Uh, it's just Dev. <laughs> what's uh, what's going on? What are your names? I, I forget. I just, I just, my producers just have Swag House written down here. Uh, is uh, my name's Rico. I'm kind of like the E boy slash B boy of the group. Okay, okay. E boy, B boy. I'd love to le- learn those terms. What they mean? <laughs> uh, I am Kyle. I was an open mic comedian in Toronto, and now I've kind of changed my goal to now I'm a TikToker. So I'm pretty excited. Awesome. That's awesome. I'd love to talk to you all about that, all about grind and what it means on TikTok. What up, Everardo? So about the name mix up earlier. Um, hey, that's cool. No worries. I'm chill. Cool, man. You don't even yeah, have to say anything. I'm, uh, I'm Reggie X. I'm kind of nice. like the uh, motorhead of the group. 
<laughs> it runs on four wheels with an axle. I got okay. it. I can cover yeah. it. I'm open to oil. I like oil and gas, but I'm open to electric. Nice. I love that. So, so you guys all live together. Uh, you're all influencers. You're all massively popular in your own right on on TikTok primarily. Uh, and for those of our our listeners who aren't familiar with TikTok, this is a website that a lot of teens can do dancing on. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a right. lot more than that. But Adults yeah, too. You can get, that's true, that's not about TikTok teens dancing. You can also get financial advice uh, on TikTok and you can also sing with a um, elderly Filipino woman, which is part of it. If you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, if you make it to the top, sure. Yeah, a lot of them got us blocked, you know. So, so what kind of uh, what kind of videos do you guys usually uh, usually do on your page? If you could describe to the, the viewers who may not be familiar, uh, we're kind of like a class. We do a lot of classic TikTok dances. You know, we're always coming up with new stuff. You know, new trends, new viralities to fucking send out there. Uh, we got yeah, we got a lot of dances on the go right now. We got one dance. You go to the mall, like with your good friends. Okay. Uh, and then you find like the oldest guy in the mall, right? And you throw all this stuff in the fountain. Okay. And that's a dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a yeah. dance, yeah. I, take I, my dance. Okay. I think I've seen that. And it's you can, like put music to it or whatever. <laughs> yeah, there's like a really uh annoying what could only be described as the world's most annoying song. <laughs> 15 yeah, yeah, yeah. Ever. It's like crazy yeah. frog, but like all the reverbs up for some reason. <laughs> Like if yeah. Jason Derulo was Crazy Frog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if Crazy Frog was one of the ghost Pokemon from Lavender Town. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're trying to go up that hotel. Yeah. Crazy yeah, Frog keeps popping up. So that's blaring. And then we're throwing all this stuff into the fountain. And the guy, he's crying. He's like, that's the, all the stuff I own. It's so funny. <laughs> so yeah. funny. Oh, shit. Like, in a good dance. That's a one-way right. ticket. That's a one-way ticket. Yeah, That's yeah, one yeah. way uh one-way ticket for what for likes. Just yes, it's a one-way ticket to likes, shares, and I think I've seen the next part of that video where the guy is then asking everyone. He's kind of bringing it, other people in. It's almost like a flash dance because he's asking people to help him find his change because he actually needs that to get home and his cell phone in the fountain and people are kind of like what the hell right and that's yeah. a two-part video yeah, and the yeah. second part nobody helps him right yeah yeah that's yeah. an important part of the dance that was hilarious so someone mm -hmm. tries to help yeah. him you got to get involved separate them mm -hmm. yeah right make sure he's alone i love that you know what uh <laughs> so uh yeah any other kind of videos that like what kind of i'm looking to get into tiktok i'm not much of a dancer but if now that I know that you can that dancing involves you can just push someone in a fountain, well, that kind of changes the whole definition for me. What that means? Yeah. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah, there are so many avenues you can take on the app, Everardo. You can have so much fun with it. Um, you can do you can do the dances. You can have the fun. You can also satis satisfaction videos. Those are really big. Someone peeling back an aloe vera plant. That's uh, huge yeah. right now. Satisfaction videos. I kind of do that with a uh, right my cars. Yeah, I follow. Uh, <laughs> I follow an account that's just a string of numbers, and it often shows how people fish in a mud hole with toothpaste. Oh, user seven one four nine eight five six one. Yeah, it'll be like a close up of like the world's most uh, work worn hand. And it's kind of digging through mud using toothpaste to lure, I guess, some sort of mud fish. And then yeah. it says, and then it just kind of says, that's how you do it. Yeah, TikTok's right. big kind of and advice. value too. Right. And then at the end <laughs> yeah. of the video, the fish smiles and it has pearly whites and wings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you're like, what the hell? Is that a, a filter? I don't know. So I guess my question is a lot of the time when I'm watching TikTok, I'm scrolling through and I'm just like, what the hell? So is that kind of what you uh, feel too? Yes, absolutely. I can say that uh, without a doubt. I used to be so embarrassed when I got into it. And then on my uh, on my 33rd birthday, something just clicked. 
Someone just clicked, and then I went full swing into it, and I'm not looking back. I love my fan base, and I love my friends I made from it. Nice. Pour it up. What was the, if, what was your kind of video that kind of broke you, to, mm. to kind of took you to the next level? Like what kind of, what was oh, what was your video that kind of made you viral? I guess and what. We had like a dance, another dance video that really popped off. So what you do is you go to the mall, right, and you get your dad to pick you up at the mall. And you tell him to meet okay. you at La Penza, and then you put a bunch of like shit in his pockets, and then you call security and say he was stealing all the shit from La Senza. <laughs> and that okay. kind of like blew up. Right. That hit like 4K views. Now, Kyle, I remember the video that you made, of course. Uh, it was kind of viral. It was like a, a dance video, and you actually injured yourself doing the Jack Be Nimble, Jack Be Quick dance challenge. Where you actually um, jumped over the candlestick so close that you actually did singe uh, your taint area. Yeah, no, and that was for a con uh, branded video. It was. It was Funko for, Pops. The thing about it, yeah, it was for Funko Pops. And so after <laughs> that lit on fire, I was freaking out. It was very like funny. And then I had some guys on the sidelines put some Funko Pops to make the flames go away mm -hmm. and then i was like oh i look in the ca oh funko pops do more than just <laughs> be good yeah we got a bunch yeah. of like baby they're flammable when funko pops <laughs> dusted up the yeah flame. i'm surprised you know the jack be nimble jack be quick is the most viral song on tiktok <laughs> well that's kind of how i found found out about tiktok it, this video was so popular um i, I saw it on I, I saw it on one of those cringe compilation uh dumb loser does jack be nimble jack be quick challenge and melts his taint um and a lot of the people this is what people don't know is that you did have a, a collection of funko pops lined up near the candlestick where you were dancing over and i believe it was a deadpool funko holding a chimichanga that kind of lit on fire <laughs> and that's that's kind of what caused the accident i know and this like and, crazy that it was crazy and that was on the cringe compilation that actually mm -hmm. my boy next to me made so our swag house yeah. we're literally a, a cringe factory nice. someone argue what we're doing right now could be cringe <laughs> <laughs> yeah some could say some, some could, could. Say. if they ever want if they ever knew what was going on right now <laughs> if anyone <laughs> knew what was going on right now <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah so uh that's kind of cool how you kind of embrace the jack be nimble accident and uh i mean hey, Funko was was not happy about it they kind of distanced themselves immediately yeah yeah that was a big growth growth moment for us just kind of learning to take the, take the l move with it turn it into something good cringe right. comp that's but awesome. I should say we are now sponsored by Funky Pops, which similar kind of off brand. They're uh, yeah, kind of an ex exported. They're not good quality, but they they're mm. do the exact they're just like Funko Pops, but they are they are cheaper. They're, they're great. Yeah, right. it's and like the heads really good. are a little smaller. Yeah, <laughs> <So> it's a <laughs> little less funny. <laughs> it's a little less cute and it's a little yeah. less funny the funky pops it's kind mm -hmm. of it's kind of a yeah. slimmer head you oh, know, yeah. a lot of people are saying it's uh a little bit kind of like what a brat's doll was to a barbie uh yeah and that's like it's brand it's funky yeah. pops funky. the brats to the barbie <laughs> <laughs> what's brat's doll did to barbie we do to funko pop <laughs> Yeah, we make them sexy. <laughs> Which, yeah. If you could, <laughs> or not, the that was the best you know? slogan. That was, I was kind of on the, I kind of made, came up with that slogan and tweeted it to them and they actually ran with it. Yeah. And yeah. you got compensated. Didn't you get like 1500 funky pops? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I got, <laughs> I got, uh, I got, uh, James Earl Jones Funky Pops, which a lot of people are, uh, a lot of people don't recognize right away. I could be <laughs> worth a lot of money one day. Funky yeah. Pops has a lot of problem with licensing right now, so they got a they got a lot of like 
You know when you would rent a movie, a blockbuster, and like Transformers just came out, and then there'd be like trans morphs <laughs> beside it. That's kind of where fun yeah. pop is right now. A lot of like trans yeah. morphs. Or yeah. like they won't have like baby Groot. They'll just have like a baby bonsai tree with eyes. And that's <laughs> kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll be called like Baby Spruce or whatever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> baby Spruce Springsteen. Kind of- <laughs> the only thing you can say is I'm Spruce. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sing a sad song about like a turnpike. <laughs> yeah, they got they have uh, a hilarious thing for any any cottage heads out there. If you remember Big Mouth Billy Bass, <laughs> they, have, um, they have uh, Sammy Steelhead, and he sings any royalty-free song. <laughs> <laughs> Name him. You can yeah. upload any 10-hour mix on YouTube to him, he and sings he'll sing it. He does add swear words, no matter yeah. what. <laughs> and that's uh that's kind of the thing so that's kind of how do you so if someone wanted to kind of work with these brands like uh sammy steelhead or funky pop or <laughs> yeah i don't know maybe apple or something how can you do that <laughs> it's how can you make a sick branded effect. content so, video uh basically you just start putting their stuff in your videos and then they'll email you usually or you can email them and tell them you're going to sue them because you did all this free promo mm-hmm. nice every then- video i make i have a mickey rourke shirt mickey rourke shirt on to get his attention and hopefully he picks me up but mm, that's nice. a fish i can't seem to land and do you know if he if he has tiktok or if he's uh paying attention to the, any of that or no, I'm pretty sure he's off the grid completely, but uh God man, uh yeah, I know the I know the wrestlers on some sort of streaming. I think it's on Peacock. So okay. I think uh yeah. I think I'll I'll just I'll just try and aim for more peacock content, and maybe Mickey Rourke and fucking noticed. Honestly, one of our dreams is having Mickey Rourke do one of our TikTok dances. Yeah. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I saw you guys collabed with one of the disgraced uh, dragons from Canada Canadian Dragon Den. <laughs> Which one? Yeah, Kevin O'Leary's wife. Uh, yeah. Or <laughs> yeah, I think Robert Herjavec was also disgraced. Yeah, I I heard you guys were doing actually collabing on a TikTok with Kevin O'Leary and his wife on a well while they were driving a boat, mm-hmm. and well, <laughs> well, yeah, it was while they were driving. The wife was driving, and she does not know how. I'll just say that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, that is what Kevin O'Leary definitely told the police. (laughs) That's when we came up with our most famous dance, which is you get Kevin O'Leary's wife to drive her boat into a family. (laughs) That one kind of took off. That That actually (laughs) became a huge trend. Yeah. I remember, uh, you know, other CEOs were were, – hopping on the kevin o'leary trend the uh the cfo of crabby joe's actually drove his suv into uh, a pine tree yeah and that was kind of inspired by kevin o'leary i know it is good the kl it was so good so so, um people are wondering what kind of what how did you guys all get together? How did you guys all meet? We, we heard how you, you, Alex, and uh, or uh, whatever the fuck your names were, <laughs> Reggie X. We heard how you, you two met, but uh, I'd love to meet how you all decided. I'd love to know how you all decided to kind of move in together. Because I'm looking to maybe get into TikTok in a big way, maybe get my own, uh, maybe hype house of myself on my own mm-hmm. one day. So I'm kind of wondering, how did you? Was there a vetting process? Were you guys know each other before or um so i was kind of raised on tiktok a little bit uh my dad is a music producer and he kind of encouraged me from a very early age to just do tiktoks don't go to school that kind of stuff uh so he really helped me out and he brought me down to la uh and he hooked me up with reggie who was popping off with his four-wheel t- uh you know driving tiktoks right. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then I guess like not that long ago, like just when the pandemic hit, we started seeing Kyle around. And then so we brought him into the house, too. And I feel blessed, honestly. Mm -hmm. And it's not really working out, but 
we're going to well, give it a, another couple of months. It's pretty good because I was in Toronto. I did open mic stand-up comedy. So I would go to the mm-hmm. Ossington, but then that closed down. I went to SoCap on Wednesdays and that's not, it doesn't look like that's coming back. And so I'm thinking open mic comedy as an industry is dying. Damn. What are the kids doing? You know, and they're dancing. And so I called up Reggie X and he said I could be on a probationary period, you know, and now I'm doing this. It's not as fun as, you know, being at a bar at midnight saying some misogyny, but it is fun, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I was a- very, uh, very nary to let Kyle into the house, but uh, I uh, don't really know what uh, I know some stand up. I know some. Um Nice. Larry the Cable yeah. Guy, all that jazz. Really? I've seen Norbit a bunch. That's but funny. uh funny. I think I would wanna like I think I'd wanna try stand up and I thought Kyle would be a good gateway into that. What he what he does seems very easy. But also Reggie X also mm. has bits and he is <laughs> good he's already funny. He could do stand up literally right now. Yeah, I could do stand up right now. I'd love I could to. do stand up right now if I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, let's I mean, why the hell not? I, we've killed about seven minutes, I think, of this live stream. Yeah, let's, let's kill some more time. Let's, uh, let's really watch Reggie got, X do some, do some stand-up. We only got uh, four more hours to fill uh, on this live stream. So, yeah, That's let's good. let's do some. I'll have to take a quick stand-up break and then get right back into TikTok. Or maybe maybe this is this a part? Is stand-up big on TikTok? You can actually put stand-up on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Nice. No word of a lie. I put a video on and it got <laughs> 200,000 views and maybe nice. 150 comments of people being like, dude, you are the least funny person on earth. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people are saying that it's not even about whether people like it or not, as long as they're engaging with it. Um, that's the most important thing. So, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. I have a lot of engagement saying that maybe I should quit. So, but it's hard not to take that to heart. I honestly, you and then you click on their profile, and it's Pepe the Frog <laughs> with the fedora, like giving you the finger. Yeah, I think I, before this, I was actually browsing your your TikTok, and I saw an account, uh, one of the accounts that I follow, which is kind of how I noticed the comment, uh, Mister Psycho Businessman, and <laughs> the guy that does, he gives out financial advice on his page that I've been I've been following deeply, and he wrote. He wrote that you are um, a weak bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Under I respect. And yeah. Then I respect. You got to respect him. <laughs> well, I I originally followed him, his meme accounts on Instagram. Uh, when he would, he would send kind of memes of like Bugs Bunny holding a gun pointed to his head. And it kind mm-hmm. of stuff like, if you ever trust me, I will let you down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Because yeah. you do not understand who I am. And I thought, wow, that is inspiring in a lot of ways. And I never thought about it in a business kind of sense. I know, yeah. I saw a Mr. Psycho and- Businessman post where he had Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck back to back. They were wearing suits mm-hmm. holding AKs. And underneath it, it said... Only the only if my family really knows me. And I was yeah. Like, that, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, that's amazing. I saw one, and it was uh, one of my favorite ones that I kind of always go back to when I'm looking for financial advice. Is actually a picture of um, Porky Pig, and he's kind of uh, looking at himself in. Um, st- he's kind of point- holding a revolver to his temple. And he's saying the best ideas are always done in an instant. <laughs> and I don't know what that means. Really, I think it means like kind of if you come up with a business idea, you got to jump on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I saw that. I saw one where it was uh, it was a poo poo. Who's poo bear? <laughs> yeah, Pooh Bear. <laughs> it's Pooh. It's Winnie the Pooh, and he he was holding a, a desert eagle, like the big gun. Yeah, he was skull, and he was like angry at the looking in the camera, and it said, "The ones who laugh the most cry the most inside." 
I oh, saw man. that. Yeah. Yeah. That actually brought a tear to my eye. Yeah. 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 I actually saw I one that was like Marvin the Martian, but it was like a girl version with like huge tits and a big juicy dump truck ass. Mm -hmm. And then at the top it said, if she doesn't like you at your bottom, then she doesn't deserve you at your top. Yeah. And that I one saw, I saw <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I saw one too. You guys actually brought up a, a deep memory down there. I actually you saw one too. <laughs> Give it to us. <laughs> a bated breath. All this, all this, all this, all this back and forth actually know. brought up a deep you memory can, of one that I saw. Uh, it a lot. I'd love to know if I also saw the same one. I, I think you might have. It was a uh, Tweety Bird, um, uh, making out with Grandma, and okay. also, which is pretty cool, I guess, because that's not really what happens on in the Looney Tunes. But she, Tweety Bird was grabbing uh, Grandma's ass. <laughs> and it said, uh, "Lions don't listen to the opinions of sheep." So, yeah, <laughs> yeah that sounds yeah, good. Yeah, that's like a that's awesome. That's the yeah. background on yeah. my neck. Yeah, that's awesome that yeah. that you just jogged that memory in me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you had that ready to right to go. Yeah, I, that reminds me of one of my favorite Mister Psycho businessman movies. <laughs> was it was actually Pickle Rick, and he had, I guess it was kind of like a gun to like. I guess it was his temple or something. And the kind of the line said, no one ever respects someone who replies fast. And <laughs> yeah. uh, that's yeah. kind of in so interesting that a, that a financial really? advice uh, Instagram is sharing this kind of stuff. And it's really mind blowing. Yeah. yeah well, I, I saw one too. <laughs> if it's not, <laughs> if I'm in, if I'm in, if I'm encroaching on anything, I might just remember one real quick. No, you go ahead. Yeah. I just remember one too. Oh, you got one unlocked? <laughs> I love. I wish we could talk to Mr. Psycho Businessman right now, but oh, I wish we could bring him uh, in too. The next best thing is just remembering uh, some of the <laughs> quotes. Yeah, most I, posts. I saw one of the uh, of the Punisher, and you know, in like you remember the remember the movie Spider Man Three? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was kind of like the cover of the DVD was like a uh, Spider Man, and then his. Uh, venom spider-man reflecting yeah. through the skyscraper mm -hmm. it was kind of like that but a little deep fried and it was the it was uh the punisher but his reflection was um mr bean and uh the quote said uh, um you can mess with my family you can mess with my daughter you can mess with my son but do not mess with my truck nice <laughs> Wow. And it kind of shows the duality of man between pun every are you a punisher or are you a bean? Are you a heaven or are you a hell? There's yeah, there's two type of people in the world. There's punishers and there's Mr. <laughs> Bean. Which one are you gonna be? <laughs> that like a long look. One of my all time absolute favorite Mr. Psycho Businessman posts, and I've been meaning to put this on a mug for years now. Um, it was actually Baby Yoda, and it says um if i if if uh it says if you google if you google my as it says something if you google my uh facebook i'll i'll google uh yahoo uh shit i don't know something <laughs> i don't know about google <laughs> it's kind of like no hold on it was kind of like google if i if you google my yahoo no it's kind of like if you google my ebay uh if you google my yahoo i'll ebay uh on yahoo something like that honestly that sounds like and, yeah. and it had baby yoda but he had I, I guess like i guess he was holding i guess it was like a gun and i guess it was kind of pointed at his temple or something so yeah, yeah. yeah. also it's not baby yoda anymore it's grugo <laughs> right his name is grugo and i will he, never i like grugo <laughs> <laughs> that. if he's watching it baby you will always be baby yoda to me honestly first episode when baby yoda showed up i on a betting website bet that his name was grugo i won around a hundred thousand dollars and that's why i'm a part of the swag house because mm -hmm. i have so much nice. money they wanted me in yeah he funds a <laughs> lot of them home dudes because i yeah. called grugo <laughs> so that you were able to buy that house with just by calling it Grugo, you you kind of bought that swag house and yeah, all them in. That's my awesome. room, the Grugo room. I sleep on that a big kinda, Grugo. 
Mm-hmm. That's kind of one of the one of the messages that I wanted to bring out on this show. That if you take risks, uh, some people will say, uh, "Call it a gamble." I call it a risk, and so does Mister Psycho Businessman. He says, "If you take a risk or a gamble, uh, it will always pay off." Yeah, yeah, and that mm-hmm. was so. That always text was over top like Aslan the Lions from Narnia smoking the big fat joint, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> this was actually over. It was baby. Uh, <laughs> It was Asa and the Lion, and he was kind of wearing like almost like a Bob Marley hat, I guess. <laughs> Man, yeah, it was like Kanye West sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. Stripes. If Aslan the Lion had the munchies, I wouldn't <laughs> want to be around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, the reason why I did that was because of one of Mr. Psycho Businessman's posts. It was Wayne Gretzky, and he had this uh, big gun. He was pointing it around his like temple, and he. It said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And Wayne Gretzky awesome. was so close to just ending it all. So <laughs> I was like, yeah. I wonder what shots he missed, you know? And he's and then there's actually an asterisk, or like in, in uh, brackets, I mean, sorry. And it says, I, I did shoot it a millimeter away from my head, which is what I was aiming for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they're like, why is that part of the, the quote? It's kind of unnecessary. Yeah. So that's kind of cool um but then there's that other smaller quote underneath that where he's like well thank god i missed because then i wouldn't have thought of this great quote and it's and i was like well now all three make sense Mm -hmm. and that's all in a watermark (laughs) yeah (laughs) which is i think cool i've been actually thinking about getting one of mr psycho businesses man's uh tattoo uh memes tattooed on my back Mm. And I was thinking yep. maybe it could be um I was thinking that maybe it could be dead uh Deadpool. Mm-hmm. And he's holding a, a chimichanga and I guess it's like to his temple, and he <laughs> said, Never believe uh anyone who trusts your personality. And then it also says that by the way, this chimichanga is a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Never believe anyone that trusts your personality. <laughs> That's my favorite yeah. Marco Marx joke. That's yeah. one of my all time. I that's where I got that was when I saw that meme. I decided to get a down payment on anything. I walked in the bank. I said, "I'll put a down payment on anything you want right now." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's thanks to the power of social media once again, changing people's lives always for the better. Mm-hmm. And I mean, talking about Mr. Psycho Businessman, that's why it hurt so much when he called me a weak bitch on my... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that man is truly a titan. Because he's one of the top influencers of all time. But yeah. we don't know what he looks like because of that anonymous mask, but he is so amazing. Yeah, he has kind of a... His profile picture is like an anonymous mask, um, and it's kind of painted in the colors of like Deadpool's mask. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's like an X on it. Yeah. And uh, it also sa- it says, uh, actually, it doesn't say anything. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's all it has. <laughs> it says enough. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, Rico, I just wanted, before you go, I wanted, I, I wanted to ask you now, I know you're kind of, no, not only for your amazing stand-up comedy, but also you are one of TikToks. Uh, you're kind of behind the scenes and in, in, behind a lot of TikToks. You're kind of a, a choreographer, and you kind of send these popular dances out to other other TikTok uh, influencers. Mm-hmm. And you're actually most famous, uh, known for uh, having one of your dances rejected by the Jabberwockies. Which yeah, 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 cool. yeah. Those guys are dead to me. Damn. Um, yeah, basically, you know, in addition to sort of the dances I do with the guys, I do like to, you know, sort of outsource some of my dances. You know, some dances mm-hmm. I don't think they can do, I don't think Kyle can do, or I don't think is right for us. Um, <laughs> right. See, I'm always like coming up with ideas. Like a lot of people, they rest, you know, they take breaks. I'm mm-hmm. always thinking. Like just this right. morning, I came up with like three new dances because I what I, I go to like parking garages and sort of like back alleys where there's like a lot of like hip hop competitions, like step up style. 
And then I'll right. sort of see a promising upstart and I'll take all of his moves and then I'll try to sell them to the Jabberwockies. Uh, and then if he comes at me, I'll, I'll be like, who the fuck are you? Nobody knows you. No one's going to believe nice. And that's kind of just my, how I do it. But I don't know. I'm kind of like a work junkie like that. I just can't yeah. shut it off. I heard uh, you actually also uh, choreographed the Canada Day dance that uh, the Dundas Square minions did. <laughs> it was a bunch yeah, of guys was a dressed, dream come true. <laughs> hanging out at Dundas Squares dressed as minions and Elmo. and Yeah, and working with the minions was a big, uh, it's probably one of my biggest accomplishments. I've been a fan of the minions basically ever since I saw that psycho businessman uh, video of like a minion and he's got like an Uzi strapped to his back and it just says, uh, mm -hmm. don't vote you fucking bitch. So I've always <laughs> loved the minions ever since yeah. that. And then, so actually working with them and sort of seeing their process, it was, a, it was a big deal. I actually got radicalized by, uh, one of Mr. Psycho businessman's political minion memes. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, and it was kind of, yeah, this kind of don't vote. It said voting doesn't matter. It's just, you'll pick your next king. And yeah. it kind of, <laughs> <laughs> brand kind of mm -hmm. <laughs> it, yeah, it was kind of, a, it was a minion, but it was kind of like in the style. It was like if Russell Brand was a minion. So you kind of knew yeah. to read it like that. Yeah. Which I thought was awesome. I saw that Mr. Psycho businessman uh, video of a minion <laughs> holding two Uzis. And then in Russell Brand voice went, you want me guns? Yeah. Come get him. <laughs> Take him from my dead ends. Yeah. And I was like, I, okay, well, maybe guns are good. You know, I was like, well, if the minion. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. The guy from Get Him to the Great. Yeah. Like, so. <laughs> yeah. If the guy who definitely smells like B.O. every day likes them, yeah, I'll, I'll have him. <laughs> Dude, if Arthur likes guns, I'm getting guns. <laughs> Guys, uh, before we go, I do want to shout out one more sponsor. It is uh, Mr. Psycho Businessman Merch Store. Uh, if anyone's looking for last-minute Christmas gifts, you can get some Mr. Psycho Businessman um, merch dot big cart, um, and you can get type in uh, password sonar, and you can get ten percent off some of their favorite shirts. I saw one that was actually it was like a minion. And he was kind of doing a Buffalo, uh, kind of like a Buffalo Bill stance. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? yeah, yeah. You gotta do the classic Buffalo Bill stance, if you know what I mean, where it's we all, all kind of squished yeah. up back yeah. there. <laughs> and, it, <laughs> and over top of it, it said, uh, some of the, uh, the richest people have over a million dollars. I bought that for everyone in my family because I thought, isn't that true? Yeah. I just got this uh, sweater for my dad, and it's the Mr. Psycho Businessman anonymous mask, Deadpool style. And underneath nice. it says, everybody wears a mask. Mine just happens to be awesome. And then <laughs> like, well, that's for my dad. For that's sure. actually mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. I got a I got a big weighted blanket. For my big baby sis, uh, it's from it's it's a Mr. Psycho businessman quote. It's uh, but with the bear from Ted, Ted, okay, yeah, and uh, it's uh, him kind of hugging Mark Wahlberg with a with a big AK forty seven, and it's just and it just says unemployed, take a nap. <laughs> that's awesome, and that's yeah, yeah that is you actually kind of bring up a good point because the Mr. Psycho Businessman uh, dot big cart dot merch store actually does have a lot of gifts for everyone on your list, including uh, your your girlfriend, your mom, your sister. I actually got my mom. It's kind of like an oversized nighty t shirt, and it has it actually has Mini Me from Austin Powers. And he says, um, always believe uh, in whatever you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's and really valuable gonna, information. And he's actually holding uh, a gun and he's pointing pointing it. I, I guess you could say it's like near his, kind of near his forehead, kind of near his temple a little bit. Yeah. yeah. I, I also, I also, funny heard... because the gun is the same size as him, which is awesome. Yeah. I just got, yeah, a, I got a, a beautiful that. leather gun holster for my niece. Uh, and it's embroidered on it is all the Muppet babies. And they're doing like a ton of Coke. 
and it just said it just says like if you're not big enough for the moon maybe you're big enough uh for the stars and that's kind of i don't know i got that for her because it just reminded me of it. Mm -hmm. mr psycho businessman should be grateful for all this all this plugging that we're doing for him but i i, I did hear this i do know about this if you there's a little uh code you can put in for a little 20 percent off and you use the mr psycho businessman big cart deal if you put the code in ignore all doubt ignore all doubt you get 20 percent off your order yeah. nice i use that code for my uh my mom i got her a mr psycho businessman head scratcher and it it's awesome. like a two in one so it's like you scratch she scratches her like temple but also it is a actual live gun that if it can works as a gun too so she scratches her head it's all scratched and then it's also just a gun. <laughs> yeah. no, right. nice that's awesome. Yeah, I got, um, I actually got for my uh, sister, I got some, uh, I guess it's like, I guess you could call it like a, di uh, it's kind of like a diaper. And it's Mr. <laughs> like a businessman diaper. And it says, uh, some of the biggest hustlers don't take a second. Uh, to, they all piss in their pants because they're working hard. And it kind of yeah. says that. It, it's kind of like um, you can't really read it until the diaper is soaked with urine, and then it kind of oh, yeah. it's like invisible. It. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Mm. Check it out. Uh, put in what the was that quote? Um, it was uh, some of the biggest uh, businessmen never take time to. They never go to the wash. They always pee in their diaper. Yeah. Yep. Um, I don't know. Sage advice. Something. Just thought I'd get it for my sister. I don't know. Let's mm -hmm. check it out. Password uh, sonar, and you can get twenty percent off on t-shirts. Yeah. Uh, any licensed Mister Psycho Businessman shirt. They have one of the Joker, and he says, "You think you know me now? Wait, I'm uh, I'm crazy." Yeah. <laughs> it's like that's kind of on the nose. Yeah. yeah. I know he's going to be doing a special. Ones. He's going to be doing a special Boxing Day promo too, where if you can prove that you're never going to get the COVID vaccine, you get fifty percent off. So that's kind of good. Nice, <laughs> I love that. And just check it out, anyone. Anyone who's a fan of Sonar Network is going to love it. It's going to love this real website. I actually I saw a Mister Psycho Businessman slash Sonar merch. It was like a. They kind of collabed where it was. Oh, yeah. There is an ex exclusive line coming out uh, this Christmas. Yeah. And it was uh, it was like uh, all the different Jokers. It was like Jared Leto Joker, Heath Ledger Joker, Joaquin Phoenix Joker, Jack, mm. Jack Nicholson Joker. They were all together and they all had shared the same speech bubble. And it said, we listen to Sonar. Nice. Okay. Mm hmm. And it's yep. like, it's never die. <laughs> yeah. yeah, under that. I loved the one that was like the four different jokers, and then uh one of the hosts from Spooked. <laughs> the host from Spooked was there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He's like, I'm also one of the jokers. <laughs> I like the one where it's like, like, yes, you are. It's like four <laughs> jokers, but then one of one of them is like Pennywise, and you're like, I don't think I think they think this is Joker, but you let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah like this is definitely uh, some sort of super collaboration or fake so yeah. check it out check it out on sonar um dot mr psycho businessman dot com big cart hell yeah and keep your eyes over for i think january 10th there's a mr psycho businessman takeover mm -hmm. of the cbc gem app where <laughs> the kim's convenience family gets taken over by the by the Family Guy family, I heard uh, that Kim's convenience daughter is get, look, looking to get some business and investment tips in the new season, and so that's kind of where Mister Psycho Businessman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So also check out in the new year, Mister Psycho Businessman. He's got a, a thirty-eight week intensive um, how to grow your social media business and make money on TikTok. Uh, mm -hmm. seminar which i um if i uh if you use promo code evs turn i get an awesome kickback from that so please do and 
uh check out mr psycho businessman dot instagram and tiktok and everywhere else <laughs> so if anyone do you guys want to uh plug some last minute things before we go um I had a whole show planned here, but I d we just got carried away. <laughs> Talking about all I wanted to plug was really this man's account. <laughs> I yeah. just wanted to make sure to get that in there. So okay. we covered, covered this that. This worked perfectly because nice. I was going to talk about the t-shirts and everything. Yeah, awesome. We're hoping yeah. Mr. Psycho Businessman joins Swag House. Yeah, this awesome. was perfect for us because... Yeah. Tweety Bird's been holding a gun to my head off screen the whole time, making sure I talk about Psycho. <laughs> That's interesting because I'm actually have my I'm thinking to start my own swag house with my roommate, me and my roommate Silent Bob. Not that Silent Bob. He's just a totally different guy who also wears oversized shirts and a trench coat and looks exactly like Kevin James. <laughs> but don't bring it up to him because he gets pissed if you do. And he's actually looking at me right now. And his eyes went full black, kind of like a West Borland thing. And <laughs> looks like his nose started bleeding on command. That's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to ask Kevin James. Yeah, he doesn't look like Kevin Smith. He looks like Kevin <laughs> <laughs> That was not a mistake on my part. <laughs> He's dressed exactly like Silent Bob, but it looks like Kevin James. It looks and like also, Kevin James in yeah. Hoobie Halloween. <laughs> And also does not speak. Uh, so we're thinking of uh, doing a hype house of our own. <laughs> I'd love to maybe do a collab with you guys. Um, maybe do an awesome uh, branded video where we maybe, I don't know, maybe we all do the Macarena or some shit. Yeah, it would be awesome to get you guys in a vid where I just give you like $10,000 to let the Silent Bob or something. And I pretend I don't know him. I just give him ten thousand dollars, and then obviously you give it back after. But that would be like a fun yeah, day. that'd be cool. I'd love to, maybe if we could get like Orbit Soda to kind of do a kind of sponsored content. That'd be awesome. You know, the soda with some <laughs> scum floating. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was <laughs> <laughs> Snoop Dogg likes it though. So. It'd be awesome to do some branded uh, videos with them. Maybe maybe do a podcast on Sonar featuring Orbits. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. That'd be great. Be huge. For anyway, us. Um, <laughs> is there any? <laughs> if, you, if you guys want to plug your real TikToks or whatever you want, uh, no, we have more. <laughs> uh, nope, afraid not. <laughs> yep. I have, right. oh, actually, no, my, follow me on Instagram at Mr. Psycho dot businessman. And then you can just see all my memes and stuff. Nice. Oh, that's you. No, no, no. <laughs> You're talking about Mr. Psycho businessman. I'm Mr. Psycho dot businessman where I take oh, that try to you just take a kind of grainy <laughs> screenshot of his Instagram and then post yeah, it yeah. to yours. Nice. Yeah. And you can still see his name in my yeah. photo. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, Okay, well, I guess that's all the time we have for Ev's turn. Uh, just a reminder, we are sponsored by the new uh, Gabriel Iglesias uh, Netflix special, um, Too Fat to Fluff, and that is what it's called. <laughs> we'll so see. Check it out. <laughs> out, guys. I'm going to get a little bit of fluff in there still. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh thank you guys so much for for doing this and for uh filling an hour <laughs> an hour of time and if anyone watched this oh my god thank you <laughs> <laughs> Very Hello. 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 We are back. Did you miss us? Um, I did take a, a little mini break where um, I had a lovely shower. Um, I'm wearing a, my third sweater of the day. I'm sort of an evening vibe. The the wolf is but howling. Um, how is everyone doing? Good. I don't want to stay here too long because I know that our next guests are on a time crunch. Oh, um, the night awaits them. You are right. Um, the yeah. night awaits both of these boys. Um, You're can not I tell gonna you? Lie, is it? 
I just want to say this. We're, we're bumping in and I'm coming in hot with a, with a fun energy because I'm newly uh, clean and fresh and I'm ready to flirt. Um, one, one of these boys is wearing a shirt I didn't expect and I'm glad that it's here. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's fun. It's flirty. It's now. Okay. The <laughs> other boy has updated their lighting equipment and I am proud. I am proud I, and I am boned up by the set and the lighting um, so much so that I didn't even wipe off my skin serum. Okay. I'm doing a face mask and I'm seeing it. I'm excited. This is great. Are you not excited for this? I, I'm, I'm excited. excited. Yeah, I got distracted by the, the skin serum. I, yes. I'm happy to talk about that. If Mike would <laughs> give me a podcast, I'd be happy to talk about skin care and skin serums. Yeah. You know, our exclusively. roster's all filled up right now, but, uh, that's what you keep saying. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Cody is correct. We are here for but one thing. And we are here, here for, for Hanks. Hanks. Okay. Hashtag here for Hanks. I dare the chat to not get boned up because we got some two fresh fly boys um, here. How, how, are, how is your energy? Are you like, are you eager for a shower? Like, how are you feeling? Oh, I yeah, would I'm, love a shower. Thank you oh. for asking. Um, Brian... Sorry, Brian Edwards is in the chat. He believes in the boys. It's our boys. He believes in them. I believe in them too. Brian Edwards is so positive. And you know what? I believe in him. I've been saying it all day. I've been saying it all day. It's the 20-minute get Tom Hanks on the phone challenge. And I don't see any way that it's not going to happen. Alex and Philippe, are, I have no doubt in my mind. They're going to do it. I have no I doubt. I am curious if they get him on the phone, what they're going to say. Okay, and I hope that they don't I, play around and be too cool about it. I hope that they put themselves out there like oh. I know these boys can do. You're going to ask him um, about COVID maybe? I believe, I, believe got I, have it. Question, I believe I have a question in mind that is too vulgar for me to repeat right this second. Oh, wow. Well, I'm hoping they, they just, they're vulnerable. Um, I've had the absolute pleasure of being on Philippe's Animal Crossing Island. I do have questions about that. Um, but I'm hoping that in the, in the truth that I found on that island, I hope that he expresses himself in that same way. Um, and I hope Clanko finds strength and confidence in his personality and his charm. And, um, and he doesn't ruin it uh, in any possible way, which we know that that is always a possibility with dear, wonderful Clanko. I mean, if you've never watched Disaster Show, you're in for a real treat. I've watched, I've seen, I've drank, I've absorbed. Yeah. Um, yeah, we want the boys to be vulnerable. So shall we get into it? Shall we just like give them the business? Let's go. Awesome. Let's uh, sweet. So let's give it up for, uh, what is it? 20 minutes. You say it, Mike. Uh, get, it's a uh, get Tom Hanks on the phone in 20 minutes challenge. Woo! What oh. up, yeah, we're in. Okay, so they ate four minutes of our time, but take it off the timer. We don't need it. <laughs> Alex, that is a nice shirt you wouldn't normally wear. Good job. <laughs> yeah, and your lighting setup is much better. Thank you. <laughs> that is what, that <laughs> what she meant. <laughs> uh, no, we don't. We don't, we don't want it. it. We, we don't, don't want it. Sure, four minutes. Okay, change the name right now. Change the name right now to get Tom Hanks on the phone in 16 minute challenge. I don't <laughs> care. I don't care how much updating it causes, Stacey. I want it to occur. <laughs> I do want to say, Clinko, your mic is doing a thing that is muffled in a way. Oh, no. Do we love it? Do we hate it? What can we do? Um, it sounds uh, like you're currently in the middle of eating a bunch of olives. How about right now? It, how does it sound? That sounds amazing. Great. I was clipping. I love that. Wonderful. Okay. Now the title is here and I'm ready for you to get him on the phone. Good Wonderful. luck, boys. Thank Great. you. Uh, uh, truthfully, we don't even need it all 16 minutes. It's going to happen real quick. I see no way we can fail this. Um, first questions first because we're going to succeed. Oh, yeah. Go, go for it. Hey, Google. Call Tom Hanks. Sorry. Who do you want to call? Tom Hanks. Is that Tom B or Tom? Tom Hanks. Google gave up on you. Google doesn't believe in the dream. Google did not care. Google does not believe in the dream. Okay, here's a question that was asked that truthfully, how little inf how little effort we put into it, I don't know the answer to that question, is what are we going to ask Tom Hanks? Uh, my phone started calling someone. Hey, Google, stop. <laughs> hey, Google, stop. We're going to have to call people eventually. Ask them if they know Tom Hanks. Whoever it is, just ask them if they know Tom Hanks. 
Uh, I think Google hung up. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, um, what's your what's your strategy for getting Tom Hanks? My okay, so we should pre-plan first. My strat is number one. Let's call the most famous people we know because we okay. know we're, we're connected. We're in the Toronto comedy scene. <laughs> <laughs> one, thing, one thing Toronto comedy is known for is it's quick shoots to the top <laughs> to the Illuminati that is Tom Hanks. My second pitch is a little bit more of a Hail Mary is one thing I do know about Tom Hanks. It, you're calling me right now. Yes. You've got two podcasts. You're pretty famous. <laughs> Hello? Hi. Uh, look, I'm doing this thing on YouTube for Sonar Network. Don't know if you've heard of them. They're like this great podcasting thing. Um, we're trying to get Tom Hanks on the phone in 16 minutes. Uh, do you by any chance have his contact information? I'm sorry, you're trying to do what? We're trying to get Tom Hanks on the phone. That's a fucking stupid idea. Uh, I think who, it's who designed this? What kind of fucking cry for help would he do, would design? Do you know Alex Kalenko? Somewhat. Yeah, it was his idea. I fucking hate him so much. Yeah, yeah, a lot of us do. You know what's weird about him? What? He's got these sunken eyes. Right. I've noticed that. It's it comes across on video too. It, it, and it, you know, it comes across in photos. In somewhat, some would say it comes in stronger in photos. It's the lighting. It's because f flashes go off, and your, uh, your like your wide brow would cover the flash and We're, darken your eyes. You know, um, I'm I'm just gonna hang up because, as a celebrity like me, I I don't, I don't think. Listen, if I knew Tom Hanks, I wasn't gonna share it to some random person. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, thanks for your time, though. You should uh, follow uh, Sonar Network and Bad Dog YouTube. Oh, I would okay. never. Oh, thanks. Okay. Uh, so no luck on my first attempt. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Apparently, Tom Hanks has, like, helped people out. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching this right now and you have, like, a pretty high number of followers, we'll say higher than 1,000 followers. Um, I have uh, higher than 1,000 followers. Can you tweet at Tom Hanks that we're trying to get him on the phone to raise money for Doctors Without Borders? Because I feel like podcasting he's not a fan of, but Doctors Without Borders he, he might be able to do. Like I'm, I'm dead serious. If you're out there right now, I think Cody Crane's definitely watching and definitely has followers. I'm going to call the most famous person I know. Um, he was in a Christmas movie. <laughs> That's on Netflix. And I feel like that puts him in the Hollywood elite. Uh, his name's Andrew Bushel. Oh, I know Andrew Bushel. That's fine. Is the speaker phone coming through? Yep. Good. I wonder if he'll pick up. No, it's Andrew. If he doesn't pick up for me, can you call? And if he picks up for you, can you get, can I, can you like, Yell at him for me. Absolutely. Oh, this is. I don't. I'm gonna be real with everybody. I don't know why you tuned into this. Like, what? Like, this is a, a great concept, but a terrible. I've been producing shows with Alex for years, and every time he gets mad at the audience for supporting the show. I'm gonna call Andrew. <laughs> yeah, call Andrew. Okay. Uh, my second pitch, and you might like this. My second pitch is that we find a typewriter repair store in LA and call them to see if they know Tom Hanks. Oh yeah, because doesn't he write scripts on typewriters? He loves typewriters. There's Andrew Bushel. There's hey. the man we're calling. No, he's not picking up. Okay, here's my other plan. Where does Tom Hanks live? I googled it. Uh, he recently got residency in Greece, but also LA. Okay, so LA's area code is 213. Mm -hmm. so we're starting with that. Ten minutes left. Don't worry. More, nine minutes more than we need. Now, a lot of celebrities customize their phone numbers. People might not know this. And Tom Hanks seems like a wholesome guy who, getting a bit old, might have trouble remembering his phone number. So Tom Hanks' birthday is July 9th, 1957, 1956. So we're going to go 1956 So 213-709-1956. He's going to call that number. Yep. Come in hot that, it, that it's Tom. I want to shout out AJ of the question of what if we get Chet Hanks might be an easier get. 
Um, if anyone in the profile picture thinks they look like a, like a 9 out of 10. You have reached area code 213-709-1956. I'm sorry we're not able to take your most important call. Please leave a message with the date. Now, I feel like that may not have been Tom Hanks. I th that sounded really like Tom Hanks, honestly. Like, I, I could have seen that be a Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That sounded a little like Tom Hanks. Okay, let's just do, let's just Google Tom Hanks' phone number and see what comes up. Okay, Tom before Hanks. you do that, I'm going to call a typewriter repair shop Ooh. in, in uh, uh, L.A. Uh can, you, can can I share my screen to show everybody it? Yeah, you should be able to click on the bottom share screen. Uh, application window. There we go. Okay, cool. So this is the typewriter repair shot I've been going for. Um, let me just put it in. Uh, does anyone know this typewriter repair, repair shop? Like, look, I know that we said we could do it, but we really are going to need your help. <laughs> Like, oh my God, I can't believe you didn't ask this. Does anyone know Tom Hanks? Does anyone, anyone, anyone met Tom Hanks? Does anyone have like a picture with Tom Hanks? Have met Tom Hanks? Um, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing and call. Oh, typewriter repair shop? I know that place. Oh yeah? Yeah, it's where they uh, repair typewriters. Is it calling? My phone's not calling for some reason. Here we go. Let's do this. Come on. Come on. This is going to be it. Oh my God. I can't believe we're about to get Tom Hanks on the phone. That's so exciting. someone who definitely knows Tom Hanks. It will definitely help us. He's probably there right now. Yeah. Oh, he's picking up. What time is it in LA? 6.43. 6.43 on Saturday? Who's not picking up random numbers? <laughs> company. The typewriter shop. Hi, uh, we're raising money for charity. Uh, if you could give us a call back uh, at here in the next uh, 10 minutes, that'd be really helpful. Thank you. Bye. Great. Great. Um, the seed's been planted. Alex, we're almost there. Yes. This is not a bit. Yeah. I actually came across this article with this. Okay. Literal headline. Yeah, what is Tom it? Hanks's wife, Rita Wilson, just shared her phone number in the name of coronavirus. What? Yep. Tom Hanks and his wife, Rita Wilson, have been a huge comfort to so many during the coronavirus pandemic. Since both testing positive for the virus in Australia two weeks ago, the actor is sharing updates about how the couple has been feeling. Uh, blah, 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 blah. It goes on about stuff like that. In her latest Instagram post, Rita shared her phone number in an attempt to help anyone who's struggling being cooped up inside while they prevent the spread of coronavirus. Yup, her own phone number. Can you call it? I'm going to call it right now. As soon wait, as wait, I hold on. It. Before you do, do you pretend to have coronavirus right now? <laughs> you have, like, it's, it's rude if we don't. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, look. Now, this, this article is on Yahoo Sports of all places. So you and, know it's trustworthy. <laughs> okay. Oh, here's her Instagram post. I the the phone number is not posted in the article for some reason. Okay, found it. Found it. It's on her Instagram post. It's three one zero two nine 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 two six zero. So I was I was close. I was close with mine. Three one zero two nine 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 two six zero. All right, come on, I believe. And when Rita picks up, what do we say? Like, pass it to Tom, we don't have so much time? <laughs> come on. Come on, Rita. Rita, my, I don't know why I thought this would be an entertaining thing to watch. <laughs> we never promised entertainment. We, we did. promised Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. <laughs> You've reached Kate Pernaronis, RN, clinical liaison with Season Hospice. I'm sorry to have missed your call. If this is an urgent matter, Why would Rita Wilson lie like that? <laughs> what? Rita Wilson gave a fake number! 
Why would she do that? What did that poor woman do to Rita Wilson? If this doesn't work, use the digit after this number. Thank you, Cody. Very smart. Great call. Okay. Are we going one up? Uh, yeah, one up. Zero, two, nine, nine. And while this is happening, if anyone nine, two, six, out there one. is a woman who looks like a nine or a ten, just message Chet Hanks. Because I feel he's feel like the kind of guy who would just slide into any DM. Or if you are a reggae superstar. <laughs> this is one higher than the number Rita posted. The mailbox is full and cannot accept any messages at this time. Goodbye. Rita, really got to clear that mailbox out. <laughs> Rita, you can't just have full mailboxes. Your people are trying to reach you to talk about coronavirus. Okay, I'm going to hail Mary right now. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to tweet at Tom Hanks. Doctors that boards rooms needs you, and then my phone number. Great, I love it. Uh, period. At Tom Hanks. Do you think Doctors the is Doctors of the Borders still around? Yeah, it's one of the best charities out there, actually. In like in my... terms of like how much money goes to people. Yeah, that's what I figured. That's why. That's why I think I. I it was in my head like that. So you, you, you know. Uh, those are boards. Needs you. Please call 416. I'm putting my real phone number out into the oh. world. Uh, How are we feeling about the bit? Are we feeling like we're going to sleep good tonight with the doctors? The absolutely. doctors bit? <laughs> oh, that, Alex? No, no, that's that's an Alex bit. I'm I'm staying removed from that. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I think I got Tom Hanks on the phone though. Okay. Hello. Hi. Is this, is this Tom Hanks? Hey, I know you. Uh, you, you know me, Tom? If Jenny went to a college I couldn't go to. It was a college just for girls. Tom, you seem to be near a lot of sound. Oh, yeah? Y yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tom, Tom, okay. So Some people don't think so, but they do. Tom, we, we called you up because... Uh, for this challenge, what I really wanted to do is I have a screenplay I want to pitch you. What? Okay. So, you know how you love World War II? Like, you've been in, like, Listen. 12 World War II movies, right? Listen. What? Listen. Yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm not a smart man, but I know what love is. Uh, I love you, and I'm going to see you soon, and you know what that means. Oh. Okay. Uh... Tom, so here's the screenplay. You are in World War II, but not a character. It's just Tom Hanks in World War II. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, go for it. Do you think we should meet? Yeah, I, I'd love to. Let's do this over lunch. Finally. Tom. Let's do this over lunch. Uh, where, where, are, where are you? You know what? Fuck it. I'll hop on a plane. I'll risk coronavirus because I, I don't want you to get it again. Oh, shut up. No, 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 wait, wait, I, I take that back. Why would you want to meet somebody you're crazy about? The, well, I, I can't speak of a reason you wouldn't want to. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Tom. Bye, Tom. Tom, I'm going to head towards Los Angeles. I think you have a date with Tom Hanks. I'm going to fuck the shit out of Tom Hanks. Honestly, I'm excited for you. This, yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Cody. To call it a career is a strong word. Um, I we did it. That that's the time. Exactly sixteen minutes, as promised. We got Tom Hanks on the phone. I don't know why people doubted us. Uh, Doctors of the Borders are out there. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> They're a fantastic organization. Actually, one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, uh, if anything, this is promoting Doctors of the Borders. Don't donate to Sonar. Donate to the Doctor of the Border. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really proud of you boys. I'm really proud about the conclusion there and the lot yeah, of the Stacey. thanks going to an amazing charity. Honestly, Stacy, thank you for complimenting my new ring light earlier. <laughs> no problem. I thought your lighting was great. I think the shirt is really fun, and I'm really proud of Clanko for getting out of the basement. <laughs> thank you, Stacy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, we did it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Do you want to tell people where they can find you or you just want to do you want to end it or you want to say anything about uh, things you just, do 
Search, search it on. Uh, I'm at Alex Blanco on Twitter and just underscore underscore just underscore uh, underscore turd on Instagram, and listen to my podcast of Shh, I'm watching a movie on Sonar and Bummer Boys, which is not on Sonar. Uh, I'm at Philippe Dimas on Twitter. Uh, there you'll find links to my content uh, at various other places like the the Beaverton Beliefs Nation, where I write a bunch of dumb dumb silly things, usually about sports. Thanks, y'all. Thank you. Hello, you are live. Uh, are we live? I am having audio issues, I think. Are you? Yeah. I think we can hear you. Stacey. Is Vicky here? Vicky is here. She just got here. So I can add her to the stream, but let me know if you can't hear me or anything like that. Well, Hi, Vicky. Welcome, you are live. I'm not hearing Stacy. Vicky, can you talk? I can hear Stacy. Okay, good. So I'll ha I'll let you talk to Stacy because my uh, my sound is screwing up uh, on Stacy's side. Oh. Let me know if you guys need any picks. I will put them up. So just call on me, and I will give you anything that you need. Absolutely. Well, welcome everybody to Squirrel Talk Podcast. Here we are live on the Sonar Network. So happy to be here. Hi, Vicky. How are you? We on right now. We're on right now, baby. Are you sure? Vicky. <laughs> are we early? Are we actually on right now? Stacy, are we on right now? You are definitely on right now. You're uh, you're early. It's happening. We're here. It's amazing. People in the chat have already been asking for you both. So we're here and just we're here. Okay. Um, wait, let me find where I am. Okay. I'm here. <laughs> All right. Hola, everybody. Happy holidays. Welcome to Scroll Talk Podcast, like Selena said. Um, we're figuring things out as we go. Yeah, we've never done a live podcast like this before. No. Look we at did, us. We did a podcast for Just for Laughs in Montreal. We did, but there was no tech involved in that. Not that we had to tech ourselves. That's right. Right. We didn't, right. We didn't have to tech ourselves. But we have Stacey McGonagall here uh, behind the scenes pulling the plugs. Doing a wonderful job over there. Thank you, Stacy, for being a wizard behind the tech from uh, from noon until midnight. That's a long time to be doing this. That's a long shift. It's a very long shift. Um, um, Vicky, it's been so long since we've done an episode. I feel like, are we on? Are we on? <laughs> <laughs> no, Vicky, we're not on. Let's say whatever we want. I just right got, now. okay, I'm all, I'm all kerfuffled now. I don't know where I am. Okay. Uh, it's been a while. It's been a hot minute. We finished in September. Well, you know, we're going out with the bank for 2020, baby. This is that's, it. That's right. We had a really, really busy 2020 with the podcast. There was so much Drag Race content. So it was much. never ending. Uh, it really wasn't. We had three seasons. Well, there were four, but we didn't cover Holland. Oh, there's Holland. That's right. So we, we can talk a little bit about Holland. Why not? Sure. Uh, Did no. you enjoy it? Did you watch the full thing? I watched all of Holland. I did really enjoy it. I thought they had some amazing runways. Yeah, so runways were killer. There were some standouts. Setterjean is my girl. I love me some Setterjean. Setterjean was the Vicky Licks of Holland. Well, everyone, well. everyone said it. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, I, really loved, I love Setterjean. She had a great fashion sense. She was funny. She had the full package. So I was when she left too early. She left too early, and then I, my my attention dropped off a little. I'll be honest. I'm going to tell you, I forgot it was airing every week. I'd remember by the end of the next week. Like, oh, shit, I got to watch it before the next episode. Well, it became MV Peru's Drag Race. And basically, it was like Drag Race Peru. I was like, what's happening? Like, this isn't even Holland. They weren't even trying. It was just like the UK when, when um, the Vivian was winning everything. Yes, but the Viv that one was at least Davina was giving her a run. Beg was very, you know, talkable. But this yeah. was just like it was MV Peru's Drag Race. You know? It certainly was. Now, we do have a chat. Any Drag Race fans in the chat? Wait, Aside from the, the, the chat? What's that? Where do I get the chat? Oh, you got you to gotta open a separate browser and look at YouTube. This is why I'm so far behind here. Okay. I so, was far, so far, it's just been one person reading us the entire time. What uh, is this? And it looks like they may have gotten banned, which is great. Oh, good. What were they reading? <laughs> what were they saying? Uh, just like um, you're the, the, you look like just like Brooklyn Heights, the thrift store version. Perfect. I'll yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it's our kind of humor, so we appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's a brand new season. We're never going to stop with Drag Race. There's a brand new season starting on New Year's Day. Right, so that's why we're kind of here. For, well, first of all, let's just say first that we're here to join the Sonar Network because we're very excited to be joining our podcast, which has been around for three years. Mm -hmm. And now we're becoming part of the Sonar Network. So this is our official um, joining it's, us. This is, a, this is kind of unofficial still. A, a real announcement is going to come later. Okay, great. Um, but because we're right now we're promoting the 12 days of Sonar. We, this is the 12-hour marathon is just for today. And then for the next 11 days, there's going to be more podcasts happening, coming at you live. So make sure you keep your eye on the Sonar Network, everybody. Somebody podcast. That's and, right. Uh, oh, I'm so happy to be here for this. This is very exciting. Thank you for having us. I didn't realize we we're going to have to be in drag for this. When was the last time you were in drag? Uh, a month ago. A month. It's a while. That's a while. But before that, it was like six months. It was a long time. I had a real dry spell there. You did. You you had a regular weekly show that was very popular on the on the uh, Instagram. Well, thank you. I got tired of that real fast. Well, I mean, you can only eat so much cheese. There's only so much cheese I can shove down people's throats other than my own. That's right. Um, I enjoy doing those, but it's also just like, you know when you need a live audience? I'm definitely that person that needs that live audience, I'm noticing. Like, I thrive off the energy of somebody else. So this is fun because you're here. That's right. So the movie Her wouldn't work for you. Her. Now remind me, Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix? That Joaquin Phoenix and the voice of Scarlett Johansson, who uh, once again is appropriating a culture that's not hers. She was appropriating AI. <laughs> okay. <laughs> of course, yeah. Don't, don't leave the AI alone. Okay. That's right. It's not your business, Scarlett Johansson. What are you drinking? What is that? Are you, is that a milkshake? Um, a milkshake glass? <laughs> no, this is a mug. It's a thermos. It looks like a bullet. It's a chicken smoothie. Look at you! A chicken smoothie? Is that what you said? Yeah, this is how I keep my body in quarantine. I don't understand. How are your muscles doing? Everybody this, wants to know. This is how we eat in the old country. Chicken you, smoothie, raw beets, potatoes. Are you still bodybuilding from home? Yeah, hardcore. Look at you. I've gained weight <laughs> and you've gained... my shoulders? Hello? I know, those are natural. Yeah. You're becoming the Muppet you've always wanted to be. Thank you. Well, that is 2021. I have some secrets to tell, but I'm going to be the Muppet Queen of 2021, everybody. Watch <gasps> out. I can't wait till we can reveal secrets. Keep your pig heart out, Miss Piggy. Yeah. She's one of my drag inspirations, by the way. I love her. She's very drag. Um, so we are talking about coming up. We're so early here. Are we ending early? What's happening? Because like, we, we're, we're supposed to be at a 10. Yes, you will have the, you'll end at the same time. It's no big deal. I've got all the drag race looks, whatever you need. They're all ready to go. God, thank you. <laughs> your voice make sure there's a net here, okay? I'm the net. I'm the net. I'm the net. A soft ass net. I was concerned. Uh, by the way, this is, I'm not going for Brooklyn Heights. I'm going for Christine Quinn of Sunset, Selling Sunset, of which I watched all three seasons on a Wednesday. Not recently. It was on a Wednesday, though. It's a very short season. I was joking because I came. Wait, I came here because I came here because Vicky's live on Twitter. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay, Phoebe. It's okay. We love you. We love reading. Oh, she was reading me. She was reading you. She's reading all of us. Um, she says Utica Queen will win RuPaul's Drag Race season thirteen. I think she has a chance. Oh, but hold we're gonna... on, I'm talking about Christine Quinn. We're, I, okay, let's go back to Christine because you just got into selling Sunset. And I got to tell you, it is a budget version of The Real Housewives, which I recently started. Yeah. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have binged from, 2000, when did it air? 2006? 2007 was the original. Or maybe it was 2006. Maybe. And then, and then um, I'm currently in 2000, I'm going into 2013. So I have watched 25 seasons of The Real Housewives in the last three months. Holy mother of Jesus. That's a lot. And I regret nothing. I only have I only have fifty two seasons to go until I'm all caught up. Okay, what's your favorite season thus far that you watched? Favorite season? I, season or franchise? Season so far. Oh, we got the looks coming up. Um, favorite season so far is probably oh uh oh ah oh a single season. I want to say season three of New Jersey. Oh, I don't even I don't even know if I've watched that one. Which what, was that one? Was that when the prostitution horse? No, that was seasons one and two. Um, 
season three is when Daniel Staub is gone and Melissa uh, Gorga comes in and Kathy Wakili. And so oh, we meet, yeah. Yeah, we meet, we meet Teresa's family. And the, the men on that season are so fun and lighthearted and the women are so awful and, and demonic. And it's so fun to watch. See, now, New Jersey has never been my favorite. I have to be honest. It's never been my favorite. Right. You're more um, of a Beverly Hills girl? I'm more of a New York girl. I love okay. my New York girls. I, I did like the early Beverly Hills, but it's gotten very dark. Gotten this very is, dark? Because what I've seen from early Beverly Hills was quite dark. No, it gets darker. Well, I mean, there's no more suicides. But, you know, Lisa Renna, she's pulling the strings, I'm telling you. That's not, people don't agree with me, but I'm telling gas you. Gas lighting. Gas lighting. Let's have some gas lighting. Yeah. So that's crazy that you watched all those. That's impressive. Good for you. Yeah, <laughs> listen. Pop culture. I am committed. I can't believe how much pop culture I've missed and that no one stopped me. Like, no one made me watch it before. Well, I talked about it a lot, so I assumed you would have watched it. You would think, but we, we bonded more over Survivor. That's true. Oh, well, let's get... No, we can't talk about that. We, we can't go... We can't can do I just this. say, you have great lighting. I don't... I have terrible lighting here. I don't know what's happening. You've got to get a ring light. I have it! It's just really small and dinky. I don't know what's happening. Mm. Wait, maybe, but you're a big woman. You can't just have a small ring light. No, that's fine. Everybody, just give me a give me a pass today. Give me a pass. I'm Christine Quinn. We'll Let forgive my, you. My billionaire fantasy. Okay. Phoebe Chan, be nice to Vicky tonight. Phoebe, She's sensitive. Calm down. Calm down, Phoebs. What is so this? our network says we look fantastic. I don't know who you look fantastic. Is, is directed at if it's both of us or one of us. But maybe it's you, Vicky. You do look fantastic. Well, I know. But thank you for confirming. I needed that. <laughs> oh, so Nard never confirms that it's both. I guess let's talk about, so there's a new season, season 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race coming out. They've also released auditions for season 14. They're popping this shit up. And they filmed All Stars 6. And UK 2. And you, oh my, let's talk about UK real quick. So, so here, you, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. You, go, you, go, you go. Well, the interesting thing is that they had started filming it pre-pandemic, but mid-filming, the pandemic hit. And so they had to send everybody home because they didn't know what was going to happen. They thought it was going to be for two weeks. Turns out it was like six months for them. They got up to episode four. Did they really? Yeah, so, so four people went home. So the interesting thing about that is that the rest of the cast got to go home Think about what's happening on the show already. Think about the looks that they've prepared already. They get to rejig their entire package. Yeah, if they were at the bottom before and people were reading their looks, they get to like, oh, what, what, what was they doing wrong? If, if they had that Widow Von Doom moment where they're like, I'm in my own head, they could flip that. It's a totally yeah. different way of watching it. I'm really excited. It's fascinating. It's, they've never done this before. They took a three-week break during season three after the Shangela Mimi fight. Did they? They did. I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah, it's fascinating news. Um, I listened Why? to another podcast. Why? Because apparently, well, there's different theories, but the main one going around is that um, the Shangela Mimi's fight got violent, and they had to just like break and separate everybody. Did they actually? So I'm just I'm rewatching old seasons of Drag Race. Remember you are. Season five when they redid the voiceovers of Untalked, and Alyssa. Yes. And uh, Mimi, Jinx is playing Mimi, mm -hmm. and Alyssa is playing Shangela, and Jinx picks up Alyssa. I'm wondering if that's a play on what actually happened. Well, I mean, that, that, that's exactly what happened on the show. Well, she didn't pick her up, though. I mean, she picks, she picks up somebody else on the show, but she didn't pick Shangela up. Oh, right. I don't think she picked her up. I think it was more like a fist fight. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. Because even watching that on Tucked, I was like, it looked like they both agreed to it. So it sounds, so it wasn't, no, it was, it was not consensual. I drink know. Throwing. You're excited. Like watching the Housewives, it's like, was this consensual drink throwing? Were we all in on this? Tamara throwing a drink in Gina's face and then that other woman pushing her into a chair? Oh, God. That's the best. That was good TV, uh, right? So I that's, they took three weeks off. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, fascinating, right? So yeah. the UK girls got six months off-ish. Crazy. Wild. Flipping the switch. Flipping the switch. So that's and, coming out. So there's a lot of drag race coming out. And rumors are Canada's drag race could be around the corner at some point, too. Who knows? I mean, it's gotta. Who knows? You know, I mean, productions are. I was on set for a different show many months. I mean, many weeks ago. Things are back. I yeah. mean, film sets know what's going on right now. So they're, they're doing a great job 
The Young and the Restless has been filming daily for months with a cast of like 50. I've watched Denise do those makeup scenes with the dummy. That's bold and beautiful. Oh, right. And yeah. by dummy, I mean her husband. <laughs> yeah, he stands in, Aaron. Do we ever see his cock? She talks about it. No, but it's like this, you know, she does this a lot. She's like, yeah. you know, like, wow. Yeah. Good, good for Denise. Yeah, good for her. God bless. All right, shall we get into some actual tea, though, of uh, the RuPaul's Drag Race season 13, the lucky season 13. Let's do it. Oh, look at that. Uh, Phoebe Chan is saying, can we talk about how Manila, Manila Luzon is robbed? Here's the reason why she's not robbed is because she was a victim of the rules. The rules were that whoever wins gets to eliminate whoever they want, and they chose to eliminate Manila. That's part of the show. The person who's really robbed is Shangela because production changed the rules mid-show to make sure that Trixie won. So um, this is my theory, is that they brought in the jury who didn't want to be there and didn't want to have to vote to screw over Shangela. So that's the person who's robbed. That's the person we should be fighting for. Now, let's go on and talk about season 13. Was that from like two years ago, Manila was robbed stuff? Yes. Was, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Let's move on. That's two years ago. <laughs> so All right. Season 13. This season came out real fast. I, was, I wasn't expecting it to be, but I think that's a great premiere day, New Year's Day. Why not, right? 2020 yeah. has been a real hot dumpster fire, so why not set it off on a good pace? Give us something at the end of the year to look forward to for 2021. We got the vaccine. Now we got season 13. That's it. That's it, baby. Thank you, Dolly Parton. Thank you, Repulse Drag Race. That's right. Um, so, how do you want to do this? Do you want to go one by one? Alphabetically, wanna... baby. All right, let's go. Oh, so my we... God. Oh, look at this. We have full tech. <laughs> I love this. All right. Um, who? I'll, yeah. I'll scroll it down. Um, it's Tina Burner. Oh, no. We can go. Yeah, we can go on. Yeah, we can go by. Okay, go this. You pop up first. Perf. So, this is Tina. Look at Tina Burner. Tina Burner is a New York City queen. Um, as we know, New York City has a reputation of having many girls on the seasons and winning. And this season is no exception. There are four New York girls. And Tina Burner is the first one we're going to meet right now. And Tina has auditioned uh, for uh, most of the seasons. I think she's been like the Nina West of New York, where she's auditioned for the majority of the season. So she's yeah. on. It's very exciting for her. Yeah, she's a very seasoned queen. She's watched all of her sisters get on. I don't think me. I don't think Tina. Bur like a lot of people compare her right now to Sherry Pie. Mimi, I'm first. Boa. I don't think she looks like any of them. Baby, baby, I'm gonna learn you right now, honey. You can't be comparing all us queens to other queens, baby. That's not the tea. You gotta, you gotta see everybody as their own individual self. Okay. I'm gonna learn you right now, baby. You can't do that. That's right. That's right. She is her own individual queen. I don't. Like, I see the fact that she's a camp queen, sure. Um, you can compare people's styles to similarities in terms of, you know, campy, comedy, all those things for sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. So she, she is, I, there are a lot of people comparing her to Sherry Pie and that kind of, you know, she has that kind of, she has a similar personality, I would say, sure. Uh, but very different, obviously. And that's obviously not a good thing to be comparing her to Sherry Pie. That's right. It's not very kind. Yeah. Um, she seems like a fun girl. She seems like she's going to bring a lot of comedy, a lot of personality, and maybe a little too much personality, I'm worried what about. What do you mean? What do I mean? I mean that there's a certain theater type. You know what I mean? Because I'm a theater girl. I went to theater school. You know what I'm talking about. It's someone who like thinks they own the room and, and just needs to be the loudest at all points. Sure. Hillary, yes. Call her out. Oh, come on. <laughs> we can. We love you, Hills. We love uh, our sister. Tina Burner. I, I'm excited to see her. She's a, she's a bit older, though, too, right? I, I don't know, actually. I don't know how old she is, but I don't. This? Is there an age at the bottom of this? Oh, there is, isn't there? Is there? I can't really see it. No, I don't remember. No. That's okay. No, there's well, no age. There's, there's no, no age. I Do sense it. that she's a bit older. Into, well, she's probably our age. So. I'm going to give her mid-30s. Yeah, sure. She's in mid-30s. Maybe early uh, even. Maybe even early 30s. I love this look on her. This is uh, this is the same design. So if anybody's comparing her to Sherry Pie, it's probably because she uses the same designer. So yes. This same uh, Flora Delis. Is that his name? Uh, Florence Delis. Florence Delis. Yes. And uh, so I love this look. I think it's great. It's got a campy edge to it. She's got a Tina Burner hair. Yeah. I, I got to say, I'm not a fan of her aesthetic. 
personally. Well, I think it's I think it's mostly the colors. Like she's very orange, which I normally love in orange. But she's a burner. Um, I know, but to me, it doesn't work on her. So, I don't. I. This is just my know, opinion. I want to know because she's obviously inspired by Tina Turner. I want to know if she's got the dance moves of Tina Turner. You know what I'm saying? You know what? I have a feeling she's she is a, a theater trained queen. So I'm assuming that she can dance. I don't know if she's a dancer, but I think she can dance. I think she'll do very well. I think she will probably get to, you know, top five, uh, perhaps top four. Who knows? She seems like someone who's going to like slay every, like she like knows the competition and she has her head in the game. She knows her aesthetic. She knows her genre and yeah. she has a lot of different skills and she's been wanting this for some time. Yes. Quite some time. Yeah. So Tita Bercher. That's Ooh, right. Who's next? who's next? Let's move on to the next human. Thank you, Stacy. Good <gasps> scroll. Denali. This one is my girl. This is the person I'm rooting for the most. Very Selena Vile esque. If we were yeah. to compare people, which we're not going to, Phoebe. <laughs> yeah, let's not compare each other, but like I get good vibes from Denali. I love her personality. She seems very sweet and cute and smart. Very smart. Um, uh, Are we she, from Alaska? That's right. The first queen who is. Born in Alaska. I was going to say, I was always thinking that I might be one of the nor most northernmost queens out there because I'm from like, the Yukon, basically. So where is Smithers, BC, where you're from? Well, no, I, I lived in Smithers, but I was also from Deast Lake, which was on the Yukon border. So we oh my God. The closest place to go get like a, a, a crock pot was the White Horse. You know? I think the key for you to get on race. By the way, race. we could plug in a crock pot because we didn't have electricity. Jesus. <laughs> okay. The way for you to get on a drag race is to sell that story. Like you need to know. Not, don't say you're a Toronto queen. You got to say you're a Boondocks queen. Wherever you're Trust from. Trust me, honey. I uh, know. And she used <laughs> that as well. So she is from Alaska. I love that she sells that. Um, mm -hmm. she, she, uh, she's of uh, East Indian descent. No, she's Latina. Oh, she's Latina. Oh, yes. Interesting. A Latina in Alaska. That's also interesting. I know, right? She has a drag. What was her drag mother's name? She's someone I follow on Instagram. I don't remember. Isn't Denali though? Like, isn't that like an East Indian name, Denali? I, I don't could, know. I just assumed. I don't know. Yeah, she's Latina. And she's Latina. She lives in Chicago. Right. So, she, so she's representing Chicago here. Um, she also has like a black belt and an ice skating background and can do backflips, which I'm excited to see. Right. That's really interesting. She is like such uh, an obvious person for Trey Race. Where yeah. it's surprising to see her on now, but you learn that she's only been doing this for two years. She's very new. I, I love it. There's a lot of queens on this season who are like, I've only auditioned once or twice. Yeah. Um, great. I'm really looking forward to her. I hope she does well. What um, do we think? Who knows, who knows what she's going to do? She's an athlete, really. Yes. Yeah. What do we think of this outfit? I dig this. It's very like uh, like a, uh, uh, um, not a starfish, a uh, seahorse. It, you know, who's the seahorse on uh, on The Masked Singer? Oh, it's Tori Kelly. <laughs> on the what? <laughs> the Masked Singer. I don't uh, watch the show, but I go into these YouTube deep dives where I'm like, once it's over, I'm like, okay, who is each person and what did they sing? <laughs> was Megan McCain there? Candy Barres won a season. Who? Candy Barres. She won a season. Candy Barres. Yes. Candy Barres. Yeah. Um, maybe Denali will move on in the next season. Who knows? <laughs> But Denali, I like this look. Do you like this look? Yeah, I do. I don't, like, I think the things on her arm are really cool, but I don't necessarily love it when it's not, Hold like, up your arms right now. Um, hello? Look at that. <laughs> this outfit is made by Kanisha Kardashian, who is here in Toronto. She's a Bahama queen from Bahama the Bahamas. Bahama mama. Bahama mama, baby. Uh, so yes, we like her. I'm really, she's probably one of my favorites to be honest from the Meet the Queens. Yeah, I like her a lot. Agreed. This is why I'm saying I'm rooting for her. I love her personality. Um, I have a feeling she's going to bring us great stuff on TV. All right, who's next? And Chicago. Chicago's a great drag hub. That's right. Here comes Rosé. <gasps> Who comes, here comes Rosé. All in pink to match her color. A little champagne the same rose. Same as me. I'm trying to wear it before everybody else compares us. Uh -huh. That's right. If you go through to Rosé, no, don't, um, don't go through it. No, no, no. <laughs> so right. here's Rosé from New York City. She's a part of uh, Stephanie's Child with Jan and Laguna That's right. Blue. Yeah, who we'll probably see on next season. But um, I, I must. <laughs> the, all three of them are very talented, and I think Rosé 
has a, a lot of the same sensibilities as Jan, but I think she's less annoying. Less annoying. Also very cute. I'm a drag. So um, I go to New York quite often, and a few years ago, I uh, chatted Price with her. On, I chatted with her on Scrub. Yeah. We could have been at. We could have had sex, but we didn't. I don't know why. Didn't why happen. didn't you dip your toe into rosé? I think I was like having sex with a bunch of other people, so I didn't have time for rosé. Oh, that happens. That happens. Yeah, rose that happens. Rosé is like uh, like a dessert wine, you know. Yes. She is like a dessert wine. She's incredibly talented. She's so well-rounded. She can literally do, I think, everything. I'm really looking forward to her. And I like that there's a, there's a lot of trade this season, honestly. This might be one of the heaviest casts of trade. With the heaviest cocks, because I'll tell you. Um, Excuse me. Immediately, as soon do as this have, cast... Do we have a scale on hand? Leave as, right here. As soon as this cast was announced, all of their nudes were leaked. <laughs> Okay. Yes, and Rosé's oh is um, quite impressive. You know what? This would happen to us, though. If we got on and be like, yeah, here's my dick pic. I would just send it to people and be like, listen, here's my dick pic. Put in <laughs> Toronto Sun. I don't care. It's going to be part of your promo. You're like, and here's the dick. It's going to be a, it's a two-page spread. <laughs> Are kids watching this? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Kids know about, they talk about dicks on drag race. Rosé is great. I look forward to her. I think she's going to be fabulous. I don't know if I love this look. I Listen, I enjoyed this look, but I don't love it. Okay, I want to talk, because people are talking about this in the chat. What do you think of the wig? Of the wig? A lot of people, well, I like this wig, because, you know, I'm that kind of bang girl. Um, I'm, yep. into, I'm into these kind of mullety wigs, though. Mullets are in. Listen, mullets are in. I'm going to agree with you on that, and I'm looking at the two of you right now, and I'm looking at how yours is very put together, and hers doesn't feel put together to me. Like, it just feels like a sloppy do. A sloppy do. I like I like what she's going for, but I'm not into the way it's actually styled. Yeah, the outfit itself is really cute. It's a full, you know, the, the rosé fabric goes all the way down into your shoes, into the gloves. Yeah, I love the outfit. Poofy shoulders. But the hair was a bit of a miss. I would say the hair, I like the wig, but maybe not with this look. Yeah. Right. I also find the pose that they chose for her for this photograph is very odd. Awful. I mean, what? she's bouncing off the weight of her dick. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I gotta comb my hair after that. All right, who's next? Um, I also liked in her Meet the Queens that she was very, she ended it by being very political and she was very like, it's our responsibility to have a message and that's what I'm here for. So that's the last thing I'm gonna say about Rosé. She so apparently she auditioned, auditioned the same year as Jan, and Jan got on. Yeah, um, yeah. So I yeah. she's ready for this. She's you know she had that extra year to prepare. That's right. Jan on right away, right? So yeah, maybe look, maybe she'll make it farther than Jan, but not win. And Laguna Blue will go all the way. Imagine Japanese child. I can see it happening. Yes. I do. I do think Rose has what it takes to win, though. I think she'll go very far. Yeah. And so far, everybody I thought would go very far. Here, we got Got Mick. I'm so excited about Got Mick. I think the world is excited about Got Mick. Well, they have the most uh, attention thus far, I would say. Yeah, well, they're bringing they're, a lot of attention to the series. They are making history right now. His toy. That's right. In that they are the first trans man to be competing on the show. That's right, our first. And this is what the series needed, and just in terms of like uh, revitalizing it, just for the new generations of like, yeah, look, there's so many different ways to do drag, so many different ways to be a man or a woman. Refreshing. Yes, absolutely. I think it's incredible. I think boring people will be confused, but a lot of people are going to be educated on who can do drag and what drag is. And I think Gottmik has some incredible looks to bring. I'm blown away by this. Um, by this promo look. What do you think yeah. of this? They are a professional makeup artist in LA, I believe, LA. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they've worked with all the Rue girls before. And mm -hmm. for anybody who doesn't know trans men, uh, they were born biologically a woman, but they are now a man. They they were always men. And, mm -hmm. and they do drag as well. And there's actually quite a few trans men that do drag. Um, yeah. Trans women that do drag. Uh, yeah. There's so many different ways, there's so many different genders and ways to do drag now. It's crazy. And yeah. there always has been. Yeah, it's no longer about just female illusion or men dressing up as women. It is, and it never really was. It is for everybody. Anybody can do drag. And I want to thank Gottmik for getting on this show. 
um, for proving that. And I think it's important, it's kind of a difficult conversation for some people because they're really like pushing for trans women to get on the show. Yeah. Um, but really just like ex celebrate that there's a trans man on the show. Like honestly, like they're putting down that he's on the show compared to not having a trans woman, but it's like there has been trans women on the show. There have, but there is still the argument that they've never let them on with breasts like post top surgery. Yes, and what um, I'm gonna say, and this is controversial, and this isn't my opinion on this, but this is just how TV works in terms of, that's what they signed up with for the show when the show was bought, is that men were doing women's drinks. That's just how the, the show was sold. Anything outside of that is kind of a different show for them to sell, and they can't really evolve the show. And I know you're gonna disagree, and I, I don't agree with that either, but that's just how TV works in that in that environment. I, you're right that I do disagree, and also I don't want to give any spoilers. But if I'm, if the spoilers that I'm reading are correct, this is all going to change with All Stars. With All Stars, what do you mean? All Star Six. There may be someone on there who does not have a traditional body for what we've been seeing so far. On well, Gia, Gia Gunn was uh, she had her surgeries. She did not have her surgeries. She did. She had breasts. I don't think she did. She did. did she? Yes, she did. So it's already been done. They've already had trans women. I mean, it's, it's a complicated thing to get into. I don't want to get into too much, too much with it. Let's just really celebrate that it's happening on a wide, a wide platform for Betty and Joe Beercan in Minnesota to watch and understand what trans men are uh, on, on, on primetime TV. Yes. Yeah. Come on, got me. And this look, do we love this look? Well, I'm obsessed with this look. I think she looks incredibly stunning i love this i love that she's got they've got little pasties on their boobies i love these shoulders it's very similar to another girl's look that we'll see later on though so i will say that but i love this headpiece i love that she's got an unconventional ideas yes the headpiece is stunning i think we're gonna get to see some really like uh, uh crazy makeup that we haven't seen before I'm, yeah I'm to yeah i love it okay let's move on let's this is Elliot with two T's. Ah, yes. I Elliot fucking with... hate this name. <laughs> I do too. Nothing drives me more crazy than like this made up name of like Elliot with two T's. I don't know. It just bothers me. I don't know why. I mean, I think the I idea just... of, I think the idea of it is funny, but I mean, you have to carry that for your entire career. Too much. Too much. It's like Tammy with an IE, but she doesn't say that in her name. It's Tammy Brown. Just call yeah. yourself Elliot. Yeah. Uh, all right. So this is a real Southern gal from Las, uh, uh, Las Vegas. Las Vegas, yeah. But she gives me, like, Texas housewife. Yeah, that's part of her brand. Yeah. She's also very seasoned. She's been doing drag for, I think, over 12 years. Okay, but she's 27. <laughs> so she's Is that. she? Yeah, she's 27. She, so she said that, or even younger. And I was like, so you started when you were 12? Like, what? That doesn't count, girl. Huh. girl. If that counted, I would have been doing this for over 20, 25 years. I mean, it would have been 15, not 12. But, um, I mean, it is possible that she was doing drag in her bedroom when she was a teenager. Yeah, but so was I. That's not, you're not, you're doing, you're not, you're not doing drag. Hello. Maybe there was a kid's drag troupe where she was when, from. When you get your pay kit check cut, that's what he did. <laughs> okay. Agreed. Okay, what do you think of her? I don't think much of her. I don't know. I'm just kind of like, I'm not getting a lot of um, uh, joy from her. I don't know. I like her as a character. I think she's really going to be entertaining. I hope so. Um, I don't know how far she's going to go. She's the first one so far that I'm like, maybe an earlier boot. I don't know. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. um, but I think she's going to be really entertaining. Yeah, she's a cute boy too. Yes. She's a cute boy. I think they're all, they are such cute boys. This is, this, I'm going to say, I'm just going to say this is probably the most attractive, like, man cast. They knew <laughs> that we were at home and not in the bars Thirsty. watching this this uh -huh. season. So they gave us people to jerk off to while we watch. I'm talking us from behind. So I don't love this look. It's a little bit too milk matey. Like, she's just got off from milking the cow. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, I'm bored. I'm a little bored. I eat with two T's. I hate that name. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. She's a uh, Heidi in closet of the season. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's better than Elliot with two T's. That that's probably a RuPaul decision. Elliot with two T's. Yeah. All right, who's this? This is Kimora Hall. Yes. She pronounces Chicago. it funny. She pronounces it K 
Ka Mora Hall, I think. She's like Ka. She emphasizes the Ka. Well, there's Kamora. Yeah. Uh, Lee Simmons, who she's yeah. not the name was. So it's Kamora. Let's not be confused. Now, is she uh, in the Jada Essence Hall family? It's, I don't know. I think Jada Essence Hall is more Milwaukee and she's more Chicago. I'm not sure how it all works over there, though. I don't know. I think they might be. But I, I, I don't know. I didn't do my research. I don't know. Anybody in the chat knows, let me know. Yeah, she did say her family is way more um, uh, uh, pageant. Well, Jane is pageant. Yeah, so it is possible. She's not... Um, what am I saying she's not? Uh, yeah, she says she doesn't do pageants, but she's more of like a glamour, park and bark kind of queen, which I appreciate. So Chicago is known for doing more conceptualized stuff where they don't have to do as much choreography, dancing, all that stuff as, as New York does, let's say. Um, mm -hmm. And they get to do more look stuff, which I love. I love kimchi, for example, obviously. Right. Uh, play, but kimchi is that kind of park and park look queen, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's not about her performances, it's about her look. Right. So I like, I, like, I, thought, I think she's got a great personality. She doesn't stand out a lot to me. Correct, I feel the same. Um, I don't know how far she's going to go. I think she, it's a, it's a look that's been done. I don't know. I can't say. It's hard to say. Yeah, it's all very generic for me. It's all very generic drag queen I'm seeing from Kimora right it's now. It's very drag of now, though. It's like the drag that we're, it's like the jewels and the hair, it's like the hair quaff. Yeah. You know, the stuff that we're seeing a lot of now. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not, uh, I'm not sold just yet on Kimora. Maybe too much now and not enough next. You know what I'm saying? That's what now is all about. It's about being next. <laughs> good snap. That was a good snap. Right. Thank you. I wanted to, I want, okay, here comes Candy Muse. So uh, I've known Candy for a long time now. She is in the house of Aja, a daughter of Aja. Mm-hmm. And she is very much uh, a character. I, I'd put her in the category of Miss Vanjie. She yeah. is. She's I like can a, see why they've held held off from casting her because Vanjie was such a big deal. Yeah. And they are very similar in some ways. Yes. Yes. Now, when Vanjie came on the on the show, she was very fresh. She was yeah. a baby queen. Candy is way more seasoned, and is way more established in like in the drag community and in who she is as like a character. She really is. I think she. I think she's going to be a big personality, which we need. I think she yes. might be the personality, perhaps, of a season. I don't know. Uh -huh. I think she's got the looks. And listen, she's the House of Azure girl. I mean, Dali went home very early. Azure's done very well. Yes. And, uh, but they, they're our look group. They, they know how to turn a look. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I love, my favorite thing about this look is the dead face. Like, I love that she just looks like a baby who's just waiting to be fed. <laughs> she is like a big baby. <laughs> I love that. A little baby some. I love that face. Her smoothie, her candy. That's right. I'm down with her beehive. I think it's super cute. I like this look for her. It's, a, it's unexpected. I wouldn't have thought of like this kind of uh, throwback look for her, but I like it. Yeah. But it's not, it's not Azure vibes, for sure, yes. Yeah, She and she looks like super, super cute. I love the pastels on her. Yeah. All right. We, I think she'll do well. I think she'll do well. I think she'll do very well. I think she'll be a force to be reckoned with, actually. I would be surprised if she made it far, far. But I think she'll make it midway to mid far. I'm excited to watch her lip sync. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. I'm excited to watch her do anything. She's a real character. Yeah. Who's after Candy? Ooh. <gasps> ah, very excited about this queen. It is Utica. Uh, from where? Wisconsin? I don't. I, it sounds like Wisconsin based on the way she speaks. Minneapolis, Minneapolis Minnesota. There you go. She's Utica Queen from Minneapolis, Minnesota. She's a real down, down, down girl with your, her sheepskins and her uh -huh. hands. Well, she is from a town called Utica. It's a farm town. She lived on a farm. Oh, she's she named herself after the town. She's the queen of the town. She is the queen of the town. I, I should have been the Smithers Queen. You can be still. You're right. Let's quit everything. Forget this. <laughs> the House of Smithers. We're done. <laughs> uh, what do you think? I love her aesthetically. I think she's a lot personality wise, but like aesthetically, I think she is incredible. I love that everything kind of looks knit. It looks, she, well, she has another knit look that we're not watching now, yeah, part of knit. her solo promo. The outfit looks like, you are you love comparing people to other people, Phoebe. 
Phoebe, go, you go ahead, Phoebe. Why not? Go ahead. Do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Um, she has another look, if you watch on the Instagram for RuPaul's Drag Race, that is like all yarn and knit when like coming out of her chest is a knitting needle. I think it's, she's incredibly um, thoughtful and, um, and yeah, very creative. If she, if I was to compare, I would compare to Evie in terms of just conceptual and creative. I, yes. I think she's got a lot of concepts and she has a weird personality where she's like, she talks like this. <laughs> like, yes. So I don't know how well she'll do. Uh, but I think she's going to have some great runways, which I look forward to. I love. I, I imagine if she doesn't do well competition-wise, her runways will save her every week because she looks like someone who can do her own stuff and is going to make them really incredible. Um, one thing about her personality is I find it's a very Tumblr personality. Like, she seems like someone who grew up on Tumblr and uses Tumblr language a lot. I don't know those people, so I couldn't, I couldn't respond to that. Um, right, right. Tumblr's still around. Not really. Ever since they stopped doing porn, um, people kind of left the platform. I think she's too young for Tumblr. I think she's more of a TikTok gal. There's no such thing as too young for for Tumblr. Tumblr's been around for a while, and kids were all about it like three years ago. Three years ago? Yeah. <laughs> Up until three years ago, I'll say. I think she's 19 or something. She's very young. Uh, but I like her. I like her a lot. I'm looking forward to her. Yes, I me too. I love this look. It's so many different colors. Would I ever wear this? Gone nil. But it works for her, and I love it for her. It does. She also said that she's the type of queen to stay out of drama. So we'll see if she's a, a peaceful queen like me. Oh, give her some drama, mama. I want to throw her to the hyenas. I can see somebody picking on her. Yeah. Um, who? Ellie with two Ts? We don't care for two Ts. No, we don't care for the two Ts. So maybe them. <laughs> All right. I think she'll do well. I think yeah. she'll do here comes uh, Lala. Is it we have to, Lala Re? Lala it, Re. It's Lala Re. I think Lala Re looks like Atlanta. a lot of fun. I, yes, my favorite. She is my favorite. I think she's an adorable personality. I love uh -huh. her. I love that in her Meet the Queen. She's like, I put on thirty pounds. <laughs> I, like, she looks so uncomfortable. <laughs> I also love that in her Meet the Queen. She's like, I know it's season 13. I don't know how to sew. I tried. I can't do it. Leave me alone. <laughs> I love this, too. We're going to talk about one more queen, but there's a family of queens on this season. Mother Which is the first time I think they've had a mother and daughter on this yeah, season. Yeah, and I think that's something that you can expect with perhaps Canada's Drag Race moving forward, Selena Vile. Are you talking about me and you, baby? Maybe. I mean, <laughs> I think with, like, because Canada is so small, they have to put families together at some point. So I'm excited to see this happen on the America version to see how that pans out for the first time. Right? It's cute. It's a it's it's a it's a fun dynamic. I can't wait to see how it goes. She's very new. Is she very new? Very. She's less. I think a year. Oh my like god! She, this was her first year doing this, and she they asked her, "Were, were you ready for this?" And she was like, "No." <laughs> That's funny. Um, I hope she does well. I don't love this look. I like bits and pieces of it. It's I can tell she's new. But I love her personality. I see why she's on the show. I really hope she delivers in the challenges because I think she has it. Runways, she might not, but I think she's got the package. She, I know. I'm, I'm excited for her as a personality. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't. I can't say how well she'll do. I don't know. I don't know. Too new. We shall see. Here's Joey J. Mm, Joey J. So Joey J's thing is that he doesn't wear a wig. He just uses his own hair. Which I think he's going to get a lot of criticism for, and I love it. I'm excited that someone is out there be, like breaking the rules of drag. And well, it's kind of like Sasha wearing her own hair, her bald head. You know, like it's, people do it. Nina, um, Nina um, Flores. Nina Flowers. Flores. <laughs> Flowers, yeah. Yeah. Um, I and she, it's this is very trade, very very trade. One of the hottest guys of the season as well, I would say. Very trade. I will say I've seen the nudes and I'm quite happy with them. Oh my goodness! I do want to see the nudes, but I don't want to see the nudes. You know, you want you you want to see them. All right, I'll see the nudes later. But I I like I like Joey J. Um, I would you know watching. Stop it! Hey you, my dog's ripping up the couch. Oh so. no, Una, stop it, Una. Oh, nah. So, I from the Meet the Queens, I would I actually would have never have thought they would like super tradey boy out of, out of drag. To be honest, agreed. Yeah, yeah, they very they very much transform, uh, they and I, transform. I love I love to see that. Yeah, yeah. 
So we're seeing some different forms of drag, which is really exciting. Some, ma some more male forms in drag. And I yes. like that because that's, you know, that's my vibe too. I'm into it. Um, what do you think of this outfit? Because I think the details on it are fascinating. I think they're incredible. Yeah, lots of details. I do. <laughs> what is it? I like bits. Of, I appreciate this. It's a bit like hodgepodgey in some ways for me, uh -huh. um, you know. But there are a lot of details, so they think about details, which is good. Yeah, I could do without the skirt part, but I think that gives movement, which is great. It gives drag to me. Yeah, we needed something. And Joey's from <laughs> Phoenix. Have we had someone from Phoenix on the show before? I think so. Or maybe I'm thinking of Phoenix, the drag queen. You know who this person reminds me of? Alona. Phoenix, the drag queen? <laughs> oh, yeah, but is she from Phoenix? Um, does she not remind you of Alona a little bit, this Joey J? Alona? Yeah. Alona Verley? Yeah. No, not at all. Oh. Maybe the pastels, but that's it. Right. I'm seeing uh, with the monochromatic. They don't with... have a lot of drag on the Instagram. It's mostly thought of pics of them, so I don't know what they're going to deliver. I don't know what they're going to do. I think that's but very smart. I hope there are some shower scenes available this season. Tell me about it, stud. Let's do I it. To choke my chicken. <laughs> that's, don't do that again. What was that? <laughs> I brought props. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. Tamisha Amar. Tamisha. Also from Atlanta, Georgia. She is the mother of La La Ree. She is a seasoned pageant gal. That's right. Now, I'm very fascinated by the fact that she said they didn't tell each other they got on the show. If you got on the show, I would hope you would tell me. If I got on the show, I would definitely tell you because I would need your help. You're not supposed to. <laughs> not but, supposed you, but, but you, but when you have somebody helping you, like you each sign each other's NDAs or whatever. Right? I guess. Yeah. Because everybody had help. I know. I, from the girls that I've been talking to, a lot of them had a lot, a lot of help, which was, I was surprised about because I thought you could have had maybe one or two people at the most. Yeah. Because um, that's what I remember from the Dre Race girls in the U.S. saying. So maybe it's different in Canada. I don't know. But they, listen, didn't know. they didn't know. Priyanka had um, her drag mother make a lot of stuff for her. And you're somebody that I would call on to help me with my package. So... It's fascinating to me that Lala, being so new to drag, didn't go to her mother first and be like, "Help me." Yeah, who knows? We'll find out on that. We'll find out on the show. I know. Maybe there's something there. It's a fascinating arrangement. Um, Tamisha, I she gives me Michelle Ross from Toronto. She is that yes. classic. She's a classic showgirl, um, pageant gal. I love that she's a, a bit older. I don't even think she's that old. She's well, she's best. she said she's been doing it for thirty years. Oh, she might be up there then, in her 50s, perhaps. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, she very well could be. And I hope she is, because more older queens, please. I'm going to be 50 by the time I get on. <laughs> Same. I'm already 50. Uh -huh. I'm 50. Phoebe read me. I'm 50. Uh, so I, I'm i excited. I agree. I want to see more older queens on the show. I think it's really important to show that they can keep up. And I hope she keeps up. I don't know. I honestly, I don't know how well Tamisha will do. I don't know. I think she might be an earlier boot. Yeah, I'm not impressed with the outfit. I'll say that. I'm not impressed with the chest plate or the outfit for this. It's, yeah. yeah. So I wanted a bit more. That's my concern. That's my concern. Um, but I like her. I like yeah. her. Yeah. Who's after Tamisha? It is Olivia Lux of New York City. Well, Brooklyn, she says. Olivia Lux. So this look is very similar to me to Got Nick. Uh, sure. in a lot of ways, because it's got the same chaps and the bustier. So they, similar, yeah. Similar, um, but, the, but the caping is different. Um, this is a brand new queen. She's only, she's been doing it less than two years. Olivia Lux coming from my licks. I see you, Olivia. Uh-oh. <laughs> we'll do licks and Lux. Uh, she, I, I like her. She's fun, too. She's a cute boy. Yeah. She plays um, piano at her shows, which I think is beautiful. A wonderful talent. She's very New York. She's very of the cabaret style. Yes. I like that she's a newer queen from New York, too, though. It's good mm -hmm. to balance with some of the older, uh, you know, Tina Burners and the Olivia Luxes. I like that balance. Yes, agreed. Yeah. She seems really cute. Like, personality-wise, like, I think she's going to be so lovable. Um, and she's gorgeous. She's very pretty. And I like her style. I really do love her styling of all this. I love the way with this. Yeah. I do love 
it, it's a little unfortunate that it's so similar in some ways, but it's, who cares? Who cares? They didn't know that going in. And know. for her to be less than two years into drag and to be this put together, I my tip my hat. I tip my, yeah, we tip our dick to you. Mm -hmm. Just the tips. Good job. Good job, Olivia. I'm into her. I don't know how well she's going to do. I'm going to say, you know, these new girls, it's hard to say with the new girls, you know? They can either it, do real, real good or just yeah. burn right off the top because they're so new. They're either going to be a Vanjie or a Valentina. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, Simone. I think this is our last one that we have to go through. I am so excited about this person. So Simone is from LA. Yes. Friends with really good friends with Gigi Good. I think they're in the same family. Um, Gigi actually made this headpiece, which is incredible on I'm Simone. Gonna say, I'm going to say this is maybe one of my favorite wig headpieces, whatever you want to call it, yeah. promo ever. It's so original. Perfect. It's original. It's got her names in it. It's got gold lining inside the circles. Yeah. It's got a personality, a point of view. I know who Simone is. Yeah. On this picture, it's perfect. Yeah. And going through Simone's Instagram, like, they're the type of person that I want to see win the show. Like, they are, so, they seem like they know exactly who they are and and they're the type of person that is, uh, that we want to watch. I and love, she had the gold, the gold teeth in. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, I think she's doing what's next. Yeah. This, yeah. I mean, that's very Gigi though. Like Gigi was doing what was next. Cap was in. Yeah. Cap was at the forefront. She, Gigi was doing it. I think Simone's got her finger on the pulse. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very excited to see what she brings to the show. Yeah. I think she'll do very well. I think she could do very well as well. Yeah. One of those people, I hope she doesn't get in her head too much, you know? Ah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. That is it. That is season 13. Are you excited? Can I ask but one question? Yeah. Who do you think is like, who is like your top, like your front runner? Both of you. I'm just curious. Do you have like a front uh, runner from all the gals? Uh, my personal favorite is Denali, but I'm actually, if I would put to put money on somebody, it might be Simone. Mm. Um, front runner to win. Oh, I don't know. I would say, I just forgot all of them. I don't remember. No. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I screwed you up. I, I just selfishly wanted to know. <laughs> what, what are your um, opinion? What, Stacey, what do you think? Well, I really love Simone, like, so much. But, yeah. like, I'm also a huge fan of Got Mick. So, like, I'm thinking yes. Got Mick. Like, I just think, like, they're just, yeah. yeah I just think, like, they're the one. Something I could see those two in the top two. With yeah. Drag Race nowadays, because they choose the winner after the show is aired and all that stuff. And they see who the audience responds to a lot through social media. Yeah. And they also play into who's already won and who hasn't won. So there's a lot of things that go into the winners nowadays. It's not the person who does the best overall, really. It's 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 a lot of different factors playing into it. So it's kind of who in the ether is speaking the most to us in 2021. Yeah. Is probably gonna win. For us in 2020, it was Jada. We were we needed to have Jada win. It had to be, it couldn't be anybody else. It had to be Jada. And before that, it had to be Evie. We needed that girl to win. Mm -hmm. so they're, they're, and Priyanka, let's just say, Priyanka had to win this season. We needed that. So I think you need to, you have to listen to what's kind of happening in the world for the show. And that's what makes this kind of a special show, I feel. Agreed. Yeah. <sighs> so we will see what they bring. And can you tell everyone where they can find you? Like, where can people follow you? Uh, all of all of the deets. I live at 471. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. That's not my address. Um, I, I am on the socials at Selena Vile. There's no I in team. There's no I in Selena Vile. I'm a solo project. S-E-L-E-N-A-V-Y-L-E. -E. And I am Vicky Lix, V-I-C-K-I-L-I-X, on all of the socials. And you can catch our Squirrel Talk podcast anywhere podcasts are available. So That's remember right. to subscribe because we will be putting out some new uh, episodes starting in the new year. I will be reviewing every episode of season 13 and whatever's going to come after that. Who knows? So exciting. It's going to be a year of Drag Race again. That's it. That's it. And we did a live podcast here in full drags, which we do in our, in our record. We do this in our recorded too. We're in full... Full face. That's right. Yeah. Full tucked. I'm wearing shoes. I'm not tucked. I'm not in shoes. What's wrong with you? 
I am. I do drag, baby. Oh, no. <laughs> From the shoulders up. Don't look at my face, but I've got shoes on. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for having us, Sonar Network. This has been such an incredible adventure for us tonight. And thank you, Stacey, for, uh, for uh, stage managing us. Thank yes. you. We're so excited to have you on Sonar. Thanks again. Woo! To enjoy the rest of the 24-hour marathon. Is it still going? There's an hour left. There's an hour left. Oh, just me. <laughs> You're live. You I'm are live. live. Oh. <laughs> I can join you if you'd like. Yeah, sure. Me, me and my going? little, me and my, my like young boy cowlick right here. Here we go. Yeah. No, you're <laughs> that looking was, great. I was really enthralled um, with Squirrel Talk. I love uh, the podcast so much, and I just am so excited about the latest season of RuPaul's Drag Race. I was really excited they went through the looks. How's your, how's your skin serum doing? It's actually really good. As you can see, um, it is sunken a little bit. Uh, I did. Um, I'm just I'm not I'm trying not to touch my face. I was how tempted to get my ice roller, but I didn't. Hmm? How long does that go on? I use a very, very thick lotion called Walita Skin Food. Very, very thick. I highly recommend Walita Skin Food, not sponsoring the pod. Um, and you just let it soak, soak in. It's cool. wonderful. Yes. Yes. It's dry season, man. It's dry season, but um, that was so fun. And like they, uh, first of all, Selena and Vicky looked stunning. Amazing. Yeah. Incredible. Incredible. That, that, whatever, like that thing that Vicky was wearing with the shoulders. Yes. The most beautiful thing I've seen. Yes. Yes. Also like, you know, getting shredded and working out. It just, you know, I've already had like seven cookies. Um, oh my God. If you a are beer. not following, if you're not following both of those uh, wonderful queens on on Instagram, if you, <laughs> I mean, they're both incredible. But if you follow Vicky Licks, I mean, the workouts. That oh yes. Going oh on, yes. Oh oh yes. It is. Oh. Yes. Um, it was uh, absolutely incredible, and I'm excited for uh, their podcast for season thirteen. Uh, yeah. Drag Race. That's, this is going to be amazing. Coming, uh, yeah, and they're coming along for the ride with us. So now, um, I wanted to just like point out that we've come to the point of an evening that I've been really looking forward to. I've had I've had more questions than answers truly about how this is going to go down. I have gotten a small preview of what you're about to do, and I can say that my mind is fully blown at the level and commitment of um, Mr. Ho 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 himself. Yeah, Mister. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know what you mean by commitment. I mean, that's how he dresses, and yeah. that's how he looks. I mean, and, and, we, we we can see him now backstage, and uh, he's he's getting ready. His elves are polishing his shoes. He's he's curling his beard. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, and you know, wow. I don't want to like give away who we're about to talk to, but what you know, um, I'm really well, we've been excited. Streaming it on social media all day that Santa's coming, so I think it's okay. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's okay. I, okay. Um, I I have my uh, Christmas candle in anticipation. Um, I'll leave you to it. Um, oh, can I just say just one more time, if you are listening to this, can I be a, a bit thirsty? Um, if you have yet to like the stream, it would be so helpful if you could just give us a like, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And hey, if you want to become a pod pal, um, uh, we are uh, going to be creating some exclusive content all through the next 12 days and carrying on after that. Really fun stuff from your favorite creators. Um, so, you know, like just join the crew. Not a big thing. Um, you're going to have a good time. And there and we go. Hoping, like, you know, even um, just if, if, if you feel like giving back a little bit uh, to us for all the hard work we're doing, you know, uh, we really, really appreciate that. I mean, don't forget what we do to our podcasters. OK, just yeah. never forget. <laughs> never yeah, if you forget. Weren't here, if you weren't here at dinner time, uh, uh, oh. Chris Wilson pranked Griffin into eating the spiciest wings he could find in Toronto. And Griffin, when he goes for dinner, he gets mild. Super wings. mild. Yes, he's he a mild boy, and so that's why we ended up with uh, this. 
you can't um, even, th th yeah. there are more pictures and i feel like we should put them up somewhere because there are other screenshots where you can really see him falling apart but i mean i don't want to toot my own horn but i was able to edit a perfect moment where griffin oh, was gagging slash almost throwing up and i was able to um on a moment's notice um show little to no compassion and put him in full view and i don't regret that at all not for Aww. but a second we appreciate yeah, no. you, Stacey. Thank we you. We appreciate it. And hopefully well, he's still alive. <laughs> I, I can guarantee his butthole is not, but I bet you Griffin's okay. Yeah. He will mm -hmm. be. Well, um, shall I leave us for the big interview? Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Let's, nice. let's freaking do it. Fuck Marie. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button, but fuck <laughs> Marie. Here we go. <laughs> Santa! Oh, oh, hello there! Michael! Oh, you oh, made it! It's so great to see both of you! Oh, oh, hi, Santa! Hello! Oh. Where are you? Oh, I'm at the North Pole, of course. Okay. In my cabin. In your cabin? Yeah. <laughs> cool. Is this where you go to get away from it all? or No. You... Mrs. Claus is in the back. You can kind of see her there. No, oh, she I'm is? hiding her all together. Oh, great. Fine. Oh, there she is. Okay. There. Okay, well, it's so so lovely to see you. Yes, it's great to see both of you. I know I don't have a ton of time. You know it's the busy season. Mm, of right. course. And thank you so oh, you much. Are, some you are going to, yeah, and, and you are going to stick around and play Quiplash with us after, right? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Santa loves Quiplash. It's one of his <laughs> favorites. He plays with the elves all the time. Oh, great. Do you have a like a? Do you have a a particularly ex a hilarious jab that once happened? Uh, you could say who's like the funniest elf. Who's the funniest elf? Oh, I think that's probably Tiny. He's a uh, he's actually larger than the other elves. He likes to eat, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and yes, he gets a little blue, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Salty language. Well, yes, yes, that's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So did you have any questions for the big guy right here? Yeah, we'll, we'll go. We have some questions in the inbox that have been accumulating throughout the day. Uh, I have and, one uh, as well. Great. So yeah, and we'll also go to the chat if anyone watching wants to uh, send ask Santa a question. This is, this is the time to do it. I mean, we managed to get time. Santa. This is the time to do it. Don't be yeah. foolish. When do you we got the man the at the, on the Santa? busiest his, on his busy season, we got him to come in. So yeah, now's a good time. Yes. Oh dear. You see this? This the stuff beside. This is Christmas spirit. If you see the little tinglies, yeah, that's just Christmas spirit. Oh, the little tinglies. Oh, okay. That's just, so Christmas spirit sort of just is around you like an aura at all times. Yeah, yeah oh. I mean that's how I don't die. Come on. Oh, oh, it keeps you alive. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like uh, it's like uh, I don't know. It's like keto. Oh. oh, oh! It's like a diet. Uh, yeah. Oh, you eat the? Do you eat the Christmas spirit? <laughs> well, yes, I guess. Yes, it's okay. I guess yes. That's the easiest way to explain it. But yeah, I eat the Christmas spirit. Yeah. Um. So someone did ask if the carpets match the the grapes, and I think that they meant drapes. Oh yes, of course, yes. We, you can see the green, the green curtains back there, the paneling. Yes, the yeah. floor is green. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> great question, whoever that was. Yes, if that was, that was Tina a, White Castle. Thank Tina you, Tina White Castle. We provided her full name. Uh, it appears there's a lot of black smoke on the floor. Is your house on fire? No, no, that's Christmas spirit. That's Cody, you need to. Ugh. Cody, honestly, this is like the fifteenth year. You're just not going to be on the list. All right. Uh, why don't you not oh. be a wise ass, all right? He's on the naughty oh. list. You know it every is, year. We have established that that is Christmas spirit and that Santa does uh, have it follow him around like an aura and he also eats it to survive. So yeah. That is now canon in the, at, in the sonar cinematic universe. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Santa, I have oh, a yeah. question. Congratulations uh, on your, your, your sonar, 12 days of sonar. I mean, oh, thank thank you. You. kind of a ripoff of what I do, but that's fine. I love <laughs> some of your some of your podcasts; they're fantastic. How oh, is it yeah. a, a ripoff? Are you serious? 
Yeah, I don't um, know. I don't. I'm not. If I'm not someone sure what you mean by twelve me. days of blank, you're okay. gonna get Christmas ninety percent of the time, unless you get some wise ass Cody. Oh, okay. 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 Oh, okay. Um, I think I see what you're saying. Yeah. So you did twelve days of Christmas first. Yeah, I did everything okay. first. Oh, I see. Okay. I thought. I thought. I, mean, I thought that we thought. It. It. Yeah. We just like kind of came up with we were we love the number twelve, so we were like, oh, yeah. Oh, 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 I just need to settle down. Sorry. Yeah, very, it's okay. I'm very yeah. strong. Santa, Santa comes I a, real hot. I, I have a question here from uh, the audience that was uh, mailed in to the uh, the the Santa at the Sonar Network dot com account. Oh yes, of course. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, it asks uh, how long have you and Mrs. Claus been married, and tell us oh, about oh, tell yeah. us about uh, your first date. Our first date. Ho, ho, ho. Well, now, dating the dating scene back in the, my day was very different, you know? Um, there was only like six or seven women in general, and really only one in the North Pole. So as soon as I saw this, this beautiful woman, she is my everything. Uh, as soon as I saw her, I was like, oh, I've got to have it. I've got to have her. And my goodness, I went up to her. I said, my darling. Uh, I had my cute little backpack on, and I was like, uh, uh, can I kiss you now? And she said, I'm going to close my eyes. Okay. And, uh, and that's what happened. And it was a very romantic, very beautiful, and uh, we've been together ever since. Oh, ho, ho, the magic we feel. That's beautiful. It sounds very similar to a story we heard earlier today. Um Shargel and Nadine's first kiss, but I guess just oh, quiz I've definitely never heard of either of them. No, Chardine is what they're no. called. No, are they the 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 little Christians? Uh oh. Well, they're actually, not really. they're not. Yeah, not quite either of them. They're uh, they're not Christians, but but uh, but. Santa, have you heard of Hanukkah? Oh yeah. yes, of course. Okay. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. So... I'm not. I'm not an idiot. I've, <laughs> I've heard of it. I have never experienced. Well, it. I don't I'm know. You know. Busy. You're so wrapped up in the in the Christmas thing. I just wasn't sure if you know you ever really venture outside of that. Yes, I'm um, aware of a bunch of things. You know, I know things. Okay. I know about Hanukkah. I know there yeah. are Jewish people. I can't see them while they're sleeping, but I know they're there. Oh, you, you can't, can't see them. <laughs> no, no, I only look. I got to be honest with you. All right, the population of the world has like doubled in the past. Ooh, 50 years and before that it's probably tripled in the in the last hundred years and before that that's when i was taking care of things you know wooden horse here and there but now these people want these playstation 5s and they're going to be upset if they don't get a playstation 5 bitch i can't get a playstation 5. <laughs> oh i'm so sorry santa uh just it's take a fine, breath but it's yeah very stressful there's no need to get to get yeah, worked we, up. We're here. We're all friends. We're all friends, and we love you. Cool. I'm sorry, Santa doesn't. Listen. Santa doesn't get to unload very often. Oh, right? we get it. Okay, There's, we get it. Always Look, listening. It's Mrs. Claus, the reindeer. You know, everyone. Uh, oh. Does Santa get a podcast? That is a great question. Uh, oh, cool. From it looks like our producer <laughs> Stacy. <laughs> Um, I would absolutely do anything for a Santa podcast. Yeah, that's that's absolutely absurd. I mean, and I do anything Mariana tells me to do. So is she, is she the boss? She's the boss. No. no I hear that. I'm not. Oh, did, did you ever? Uh, Tina, that's a big question. Trying to dig for the dirt today, Tina. <laughs> really? <laughs> Tina's. I mean. <laughs> Tina's a super fan, and uh, you know she wants to get into it and get the dirty. And I mean, that's what we do here. I mean, oh, we try to dirty. peel back the layers, really find out about you beyond all the workshops and elves. We need dirt. All right. Tina famously loves dirt. All right, I've been listening to your podcast, and they are uh, some of them are just honestly very adult. So I assume there's no children listening. Oh, no. Hold on, let me watch. I, I'm gonna. Assume oh no, they're all sleeping. Good. You're right. One time, oh, oh, we were having some of the nog, you know. This was uh, oh, December 26th, 1973. And Mrs. Claus and I, we were having some fun. 
We were having some drinks. And knock, 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 who comes to the door? But uh, this army guy, he was saying, oh, I'm here exploring. I'm at the North Pole. I didn't know anyone was here. And I said, hey, do you want to come in for a bit? Of course, he came in. Um, we got him some cocoa. We got him some eggnog. Wink, wink. And, uh, you know, one thing led to another. And we had, <laughs> let's just say we had a holly jolly Christmas. <laughs> Oh, but oh. oh, Mrs. Claus was very, very pleased. <laughs> and so was I. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So you had a threesome with a military man who came to your door. Yes. One time. But, I mean, we 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 fool around with the elves once in a while too. They're they're fine. They're just not they're not committed. You know, they're not into it. They feel like they have to. We want people that are into. Oh, it. you don't want that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we stopped doing that probably, I don't know, early 2000s. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm glad that you, you did stop doing that because it sounds like that wasn't fun for anyone. Um, oh. <laughs> did, did Mrs. Claus ever find out about your uh, little encounter with this gentleman? Well, oh. she was there. She, she was, was there. very she was, there. Let's just say she was in the middle of it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, All right. okay say that. oh boy. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah did you? Did you not even as, half as nasty as you, and I know you know what you're talking about. Yeah, Santa, would you would you go so far as to call yourself naughty? No, absolutely not. I, no, I, no, I'm letting loose a little bit right now. You know, I feel like I've listened to your podcasts. Quite frankly, most of them are filthy, so I feel like I could probably share some of this stuff. The this adult stuff that kind of, you know. <laughs> I just want to clarify that that we're not uh, we're not a fully fully adult content podcast network. We All do right. definitely oh, have yeah. some so, uh... <laughs> the bed post, and I honestly had to switch it off because there was elves around. Uh, I listened to a, a, one of your fifteen murder podcasts, and uh, I don't know. I mean, you're maybe not exclusive. It's it's that it's the oh that Chris Lock. Oh boy, is that good. <laughs> That is happy good. good. Stuff. What is it? Uh, happy good. Oh boy. Yeah. It's positive. Oh, it's all about positive way. energy. <laughs> Santa, I have another question from uh, Instagram. Oh, yes, of course. We have a question. Oh, this one's again from Cody Crane. <laughs> oh. And uh, it's rank the reindeer, please. Uh, least favorite to tolerable. All right. Well, I'm. Look, I'm gonna, I got some bad news for you. I, I don't really like sharing this very often. But the truth is, uh, you know all the song, the song with the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and it talks about Blitzen and Prancer and all those? They, oh, yeah. are, they are dead. They, those reindeer dead. are dead. We have new ones. We have cooler ones. We have better ones, more efficient ones, ones that run on gas. It's oh. But we don't – I'm sorry to say this. All of those, all of the reindeer you know are dead, you know? It was quite a feast for the elves, but they are dead. There's no Rudolph. No, no, no. Wait, there's wait, no wait, Prancer, wait. There's no Dancer. There's no Dasher. No Blitzen. None you're of them. Saying, you're saying, okay, so, I mean, I can even get, I, I can get behind the idea that uh, reindeer don't live forever. Yes, of course. Uh, but I can't... Uh, understand why the elves would eat them didn't you i mean so every time you get a new batch of reindeer and they die do you give them to the elves to just feed on well, okay look I, I don't know if you're familiar with you know the culture up up north right okay the truth is uh, and you might be from, you're from canada yes you know of the inuit they don't like to waste anything and neither do we and the truth is it's sad but why in the world will we let these things go to waste? We bury them. They're not going to decompose. They're going to freeze. So okay. might as well get some use out of them. We talk about stories and the, the things, the happiness that they brought, the joy that they brought us. And we eat. We eat them. We eat the beautiful venison. It is a delicious. I, I, I'm feeling judged. I'm feeling judged. No, no. I think that's really beautiful. Yes. It's more like the way it was back in the 1800s. You would have a relationship with your animals. You wouldn't necessarily, you would love them. You would take care of them and make sure that they're happy. 
but when they do pass, you would eat them every time. And uh, how do they taste? Does it like uh, taste like chicken kind of situation? Uh, yeah, it's like yeah, like shitty beef. Oh whoa, Santa! <laughs> oh sorry, sorry for the vegetarians out there. Yes, it's uh yes, yes, yes. It's like it's like shitty beyond beef. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, Santa, I got a question. Yes, oh. of course. I think one more question, and then we'll uh, we'll head on over to Quiplash. Oh, I would Maybe. love that. Uh, I have one last question. This is coming uh, again from the news bag, the mailbag, uh, yeah. the email bag. Uh, yeah. It's uh, I've heard a lot about reindeer games, uh, but what are the reindeer games? Mm. Oh. What are you oh. drinking, also? Reindeer games, all right. Sure. It's, uh, what do they do? They spank each other's bottoms. <laughs> um, oh, they do some grab ass. They bite each other's bottom. <laughs> it's a lot of, it's a lot of, a lot of bottom biting, really. That's the reindeer games you've heard of. I don't think you're supposed to eat animals that die of natural causes. Oh, well. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, looks like Believe It or Not podcast is on the naughty list. Oh, they're fine, but it's like, ugh, I don't understand. Everyone's judging me. If I started judging you for the things that you did, good gravy. I mean, it's yes. Constantly. But you but... kind of do that, right? You have a naughty list and a nice list. You're kind of judging everyone all the time. Absolutely. But I'm not critiquing them on every single thing. Some people, they get on the naughty list, big deal. Yes, you do deserve that. Big deal, you're on the naughty list. But the truth is, yeah, murderers who are on the naughty list, people like crazy thieves, people that are, are torturing people, they're all on the naughty list. But there's also just people who are like, oh, yeah, you're kind of a scumbag to your people at work. You're on the naughty list. Mm -hmm. There's a range. I really have to, you know what? I really do have to revamp it because the truth of the matter is it can't just be black or white. It's There's a, there's a range. Yeah, I, I think that would be great. So we established that reindeer games are that they touch each other on the bum. I mean, I don't really play. This is what I see from a distance. I see them. They're just laughing and biting each other on the bum. I'm sure there's rules to it and stuff. I don't speak. Yeah, butt games. I don't speak uh, reindeer. I can speak to reindeer. And, like, obviously you've seen the little animatronic, little claymation things. Reindeer don't talk quite like that, you know? You are, you can understand them, but they're not clear. They don't speak English. Got it, got it. Well, Santa, thank you so much oh, for oh, clearing a lot of things up for us. Um, just to recap, all the reindeer are dead. Um, several no, well, you know, we have a bunch. There's new ones, you know? There's okay, like, okay, yeah. There's new yeah, ones that run on gas. There's cool ones with cooler names, you know, like Bubbles and Sonic. Cool. Um, yeah. So, and uh, Santa had a threesome once. So, uh, actually, probably more than once. Uh, um, Santa, thank you. And I think we're going to jump into our quiplash time. We're just going to bring everyone into this room, I think. Who's playing? Who's playing? Cody Crane, oh, you your favorite so naughty much. boy. I'm a naughty boy, Santa. Uh, there are oh, other yeah, people yeah. as well. We but... have Vite, and we also have the wonderful uh, Eric Andrews as well. They're also oh, here. Oh, oh, I haven't seen him in a long time. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. Um, so are we going to get into some quip? Yeah, Everardo is here too. Oh, great. Join them all. Hello. Bring them all in. Oh, yes. Hey. This is oh. so fun. We're all here. Uh, Stacy, you're going to have to uh, help me learn how to share my screen. Okay, this is going to be so fun. And for everyone out there, this is going to be a really fun time too. So basically, you're just going to um, you're going to set up your quip. Okay, then you're going to select the option to share screen. Then you're going to say, yes, please. Yes! That was easy. This is really, this is, this is really exciting. I'm proud of you. 
and then you'll set it all up and people will join the room code and then we'll play some quips. How do, do we, how do we get to the quip last? <laughs> so, he, so Mike will set this up and then there's going to be a room code uh, that will come up and then you go on your phone to jackbox.tv. Okay. Um, and then, um, and then you just put in that little roomsy code. And then uh, one thing that you'll have to know is that there is a bit of, um, I think there's a small leg. So when there's a countdown, get the questions in faster than you think. Okay. Or not, if you want to be a little spicy. And winner gets this. <laughs> Hand delivered to your house. Hand delivered? Oh. Hand delivered. There you go. So everyone join on in. And Mike, when everyone's in, you can start playing. Wait, what's it called? Um, Jackbox.tv? Yeah, put that yeah. in your um co in your thing. Uh, is there a way for the audience to join? Yeah, I mean, if the audience wants to beat people, but if everyone here in this room wants to get in, and if there's space, then people can join. Yeah, and if they, if not, then they can use the code to join the audience, and then they can still vote on, on yes. answers and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, because I think that Trevor Pullman wants to play. But well. He's going to have to race whoever else wants to play, I guess. We got Lil Cutie in here. We got Ev in here. We got <laughs> Merrick Mondre in here. Okay. We have uh, Andy Humbug. We got Vite. We got Michael. Who else are we waiting for to get in the room? We're waiting for me, but my internet seems to have shot itself. Damn. I to pick a here funny name. Damn. <laughs> Cutie. <laughs> off to a bad start with this game. <laughs> <laughs> I never go with a funny name because the stress is too much because I know uh -oh. there's going to be questions, you know? <laughs> we got a question for MDM Cree. Uh, I assume that's Matt McCready, maybe. Uh, how yes. long did Santa work for Second City's Edco? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I was thinking with someone else. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have another Jackbox question. Please. Yeah. Once you choose your avatar, is it okay that it's still on the page of avatars? Like, or should yes. it have moved on? Okay, cool. It yeah. should be okay. That's where we'll be until everyone's joining. Oh, Dat Girl, is that you, Mariana? No, I'm coming in with the last name I used on <laughs> Quiplash. Oh, Fib and Marge. <laughs> wow. Okay, here we go. Oh. A lot on the line here. Yeah. I mean, that belt hand delivered to your home that's oh. incredible oh, yeah. cool. well, maybe I'll that play properly. <laughs> are we allowed to speak oh yes yeah. please <laughs> Bro, it's probably no, best just... if we're all just quiet looking at our yeah, phone I just... <laughs> yeah. i'm so concentrating block. so hard on this i forget that it's a podcast yeah my <laughs> jaw hurts <laughs> i'm stressed <laughs> I mean, it's competitive. Stakes are high. That belt on the line. Uh, I also keep forgetting that it's on my phone. And that I yeah. have, instead of watching the laptop. <laughs> yeah, I this is where it gets stressful. On. So wait, are people watching this? Oh, there's so many. Yes, Eric, people are also watching this. So that's so it's like an added pressure. <laughs> but it's like they're dancing to the Jingle Ball song, you know? It's... it's it's nice to not be a part of this. I can just kind of enjoy and um, still judge and laugh uh, with no pressure to step up to the plate in any way. And that's really nice. Do you want to switch? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay, we got, we got some answers in. This is exciting. Answers are happening. Oh, hell yeah, everyone's becoming one big ball. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got someone else joining the little ball. Who's anti humbug? Santa. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it was more like anti, like aunt and uncle anti. So. <laughs> okay, what will we do? You've got 26 seconds left. You might want to just get them in. The first round is always a wash. Oh, yes, 
I'm not happy with my answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's making me look at my answers that I typed in and just stare at the sadness that I <laughs> Merrick, Mandrews. There we go. We're all in. This is going to be exciting. Uh, everyone has to vote, right? Yep. That's the rule. House rule. This is fun because... Oh. oh, really? I hate this already. It doesn't... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> well, this is this classic first round. What will be the inside jokes? Will it be tapeworm? Will it be Beanie Baby? We don't know. It could be anything. <laughs> we don't know. Is a giant okay. Beanie Baby filled with giant beans or regular sized beans? It's filled with tapeworms. Damn, it's a tapeworm crew. Okay, I didn't know. All right, now All right. I know what we're dealing with. Yeah, okay. Stacy, what are you doing for this thing? I'm just fill in, fill in the gaps. <laughs> <laughs> Playing music, my foot, you know, my feet are kicked up. Oh my god! Oh, wow. No, <laughs> yeah. no. We had to take no. it there, and we're ready. We're here, and we're I here. I won't. <laughs> Did I come in too hot? You came in no. too hot. <laughs> oh. right oh, oh, little cutie. <laughs> Look at this little cutie. <laughs> oh wow. But then I'm gonna use Suck Santa for the rest of it. <laughs> yeah, and here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. kind of missing a Suck Santa. It would have been actually really cool. I've <laughs> seen that as well. This is the game where you can like then put the slogans on T-shirts, right? Um, I think that's a that's another one. But oh, that's another a, one? yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh no, you can only share these. Yeah, they're yeah, the just... more you draw. We can Maybe. go to a local shirt store. Yeah, they're all closed right now because of COVID, so <laughs> you can just break in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, okay, as much. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Murderer. I would have been nervous with the spelling of that, <laughs> if I'm being honest with everyone here. That's funny. Yeah, that's a spell check word for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's because the end of it's that's feeling funny to yeah. me. Yeah. You know, honestly, oh, I no. didn't think anything of it when I typed it, but I feel like it's right. But it does look weird now. That you Murder. Murder. Murderer. 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 Oh, so right. people, people who are listening to the podcast of this, they do they know who's speaking? I this don't is, think that we're going to no. make this portion a podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah. This wouldn't be very fun as a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> You're not that right. <laughs> oh, wow. Wait, have all these things been turned into podcasts today? Um, no. No, and certainly not uh, yet. <laughs> no, some of them, some of the, li the live Twist. recordings will probably be podcasts, but uh, some, a lot of it will just remain on our YouTube probably for uh, fun YouTube content. Oh, that's fun. Nice. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Well, okay. Oh, that man. Death, <laughs> it closed. <laughs> it's a very okay. similar. Yeah. There. My browser just went back and went I to met the last website I was looking at, which I guess was Gabriel Iglesias Trivia. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't okay, know. Okay, a tie here. You can, I, you can go back, I think. How did you do on the Gabriel Iglesias quiz? I was just, uh, I was just for research. <laughs> I was just boning up. Okay, and this is, here we go. Now we're starting to call people out. This is what I like from Quiplash. Oh. Name names. <laughs> we need drama. We need enemies here. Yes. Feuds. Oh, yes. Ginger, are you okay? Yeah, yeah I'm fine. Yes, we're all okay. Yes. Audience favorite. What a oh wait, I was so name. I was so happy that like I like I won something, but that wasn't my answer. It was just my name. Hmm, <laughs> <laughs> that's hard. Oh boy. Oh, yeah, this is just awful. Uh, <laughs> I actually don't know which one to choose. They're both perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Get these on shirts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's go to oh. a local t shirt store. Oh. <laughs> it's a tie. <laughs> it's, I can't say I was proud of that one. Not my <laughs> finest hour. No oh, good. All right. We're loose now. Oh. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm on charger. I'm on five percent battery. <laughs> Oh no, I'm so hard last. <laughs> I'll, I'm going to take my phone with me. I'll be back. Oh, oh. Points down. All right. Points are doubled. Here we go. <laughs> oh. <sighs> This is immensely stressful. I don't know why I said I would play this in front of an audience. <laughs> oh, those, the stakes yeah, are literally fun. nothing. It's just just silly and fun. Mm -hmm. You're killing it. The stakes couldn't be lower, but it still feels like I'm uh, taking a test. I'm going to lose my job after I'm done. <laughs> the last time I played this on a live stream, I, ha I, I did have to be quiet for a little bit afterwards. I, I definitely lost in a hard way. <laughs> Okay. Hmm. So how is everyone? <laughs> <laughs> Eric, can we talk about at. can we talk about your turtleneck and your red wine that you're enjoying right now? Uh yeah, whatever you would like to speak about. Oh, no, I just think you've cultivated a really beautiful holiday vibe. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm just I'm having some red wine. I'm having a little bit of uh, water as well. That's and nice. Just to celebrate a little uh, rosé. Oh wow. wow! What are you celebrating? I love, I love your sweater. Oh, thanks so much. I love it too. You like mine? Yes. It's, okay. It's a very thin onesie, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely <laughs> good. <laughs> very funny. Both of those are hilarious. Very good answers for very different reasons. <laughs> Listen, you give me a big fucking shit, you can guarantee I'm going to have a haha -ha and a hee hee on it. Absolutely. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, <laughs> okay, a flaming wheel. Sip. You know what? Sometimes you gotta go blue. You gotta do it. <laughs> the most challenging yeah. shore when you're a handyman for a haunted house. Oh. Wow. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> I feel I feel seen. Oh. Yeah, with the uh <laughs> Yeah, like there can't be that oh, much vomit. Oh, cleaning up. Wow, who is little cutie? Oh, well, who else would be a little cutie? <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> oh my gosh! Hello, hello. COVID. Oh, Vita has called oh, dibs oh, on oh, all oh, of them. Oh, I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> That is very funny indeed. <laughs> I did it. I dated all of them. I will tell you, I loved your chat with Lindsay, though. I wanted that to be, like, so long. Oh, I came in right. hot, like, immediately. No, I, need, I needed it. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, I was... Oh, no, I did that thing where I also fucked up. I'm out of the game. Oh. Go back. It's okay. You can go uh, back. You know somebody yeah. stole Lil Cutie's credit card when there's a charge for just too much chicken. <laughs> or something that Cutie wouldn't like. <laughs> <laughs> something lit Cutie. <laughs> Santa coming in hot with a little Oh, oh finally. Wow. I'm on yeah. the board. I like to with the gloves on. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, that's true. Lick cutie. <laughs> <laughs> we love lick cutie. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, both of these, yes. Okay. Oh, I don't know. I have to go. Oh, okay. But Stacy, that's the not rib. Is, we have to. Rib is, oh, sorry. That's what? okay. We. I mean, there's eight of us here. We have, we're gonna speak over each other. We're barely <laughs> speaking as it is. <laughs> that was a safety quip. <laughs> Okay. Oh, it was? Yeah, though. Why the McRib? Oh, the big fucking shit was a safety quip. 
No, there no, was no. no. <laughs> I would love, I would love the safety being so a big aggressive. fucking shit. The one thing that will always make a Buckingham Palace guard crack a smile. Ooh. This is crazy. When the queen farts, a howing than your <laughs> suck Santa t-shirt. Oh, wow. Oh, Eric was too excited typing. <laughs> It's unacceptable. I just got the bad news. Are, are not winning. What would you expect to see on cable oh, channel? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Listen. True. True. We're in Both callback of these territory. Sound like Quibi shows. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Right. Listen. I would have done too much chicken. I'm <laughs> off the board again. Audience favorite, though. It was an audience favorite. Audience loves the callback. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> I wonder if Santa's involved in this one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. Uh, Christmas oh. theme early is like, oh. see you come, right? Like, come. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, Santa, you got beaten by your own joke. Christmas <laughs> came early. Santa, I was hoping you were the other one. <laughs> no. Santa's so wholesome. <laughs> Everyone oh, looks wait, so wait, sad. No, yeah, people are bummed. Go. Oh, fuck, oh, finally. Oh, good. good. I moved Santa to the very bottom. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. First, third flash. Third <laughs> Third flash. Oh, I'm overwhelmed. You have to do three this time. Oh, no. Um, oh. What? God, this is a nightmare. Wait, this looks time? like intestines. Yeah, it does. Like, by saying, okay, the question, ugh, I can't answer it, or else we give away the joke. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about the question. Do you have a question about the third flash question? Yeah. Oh. I think we have to go with our gut. Hmm. Yes, Play-Doh, butthole. I mean, this for sure is supposed to look like a butt, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Every yeah. time I play this, it's all I can think about. Yeah. It looks fun. It looks fun. It looks like everyone's having a good time. Um, everyone, I will say the the little um, like icons yeah, look the thing, a little sad. But what's the thing floating above the anus? I think, yeah, that's my thing. It's like... Is it a poo? Oh. Like, is it an I idea? Think it's, I think it's all our shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's our baggage. It's our traumas. It's everything is in there. Get bigger every time somebody answers. But like, do you think like men in suits and like business people were had a conversation that this kind of this looks fully like a butthole? I mean, there has to be a conversation about that. It does I look mean, like. Uh, I, I do think they were men in suits. Jones. <laughs> Just cool people who have like. Oh no! <laughs> oh, no. I didn't finish. finish. <laughs> oh no! No, it's so close to finishing. I didn't even come close, and so now it's gonna look really weird. But we'll enjoy it. Oh, a poo. A poo. <laughs> yeah, that's what that is. Scientists just discovered these three surprising facts about pandas. <laughs> They're made of fucking shit. They fuck like crazy. <laughs> Super into S and M. <laughs> Listen, they suck Santa's. Both of these are aggressive. Yeah. I like. I really they like, like chicken too. <laughs> I like that it's they're made of fucking shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh well, Santa. Oh, 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 Santa got it. Santa coming in hot. <laughs> <laughs> Three pieces of advice you'd give your younger oh, no. self. Okay, wow. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. This is hard. This is hard. They're both really good. <laughs> Shut the fuck up and get the fuck out. It's amazing. Yeah. It's honestly, and it's just good life advice in general. 
Yeah, yeah <laughs> although rollerblading was coming back in a big way. Um, so, I'm, okay. What? Bib and Marge, don't. You didn't finish? That's why it just says don't? Can <laughs> yeah, you go one word in? <laughs> In 45 seconds? <laughs> no, I wrote stuff, I deleted it, I second guessed it, <laughs> and I tried again. The last three words you'll say before you die suck it, Santa. Yum, my bum. <laughs> Good night, sweet bud. Please cover I'm my channel. My phone is slower than the YouTube live stream. So I'm like, <laughs> really? I've <laughs> matches on YouTube before my phone. It's crazy. <laughs> Listen, yum my bum is something I'm gonna take away after this stream. So thank you. Thank you, Vitae. <laughs> yum my bum. Yum my bum. Please cover my genitals. I hope. Hope and pray. What? All right, here we go. So, so much Santa so content. Has anyone yeah, seen <laughs> Rod. Whoa! Damn! <laughs> what? Okay. All right. <laughs> oh man, this is so hard. Yeah. Stop this is so funny. <laughs> oh, that's fucking Santa. Stop. <laughs> By the way, Stacy, I think we found out what the inside joke's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no. It has to go. Vote for something. Oh god. I'm <laughs> trying to figure out how to get back on the nice list. Yeah, you're you're all you're all fucking mad. Right? <laughs> I like Santa Whoa. just holding a phone. <laughs> oh, what dar okay, here we go. All right, here we are. Hey. Uh, I'm gonna lose my place. Oh no, exactly the same. Oh, I fell right to the bottom. Whoa! Whoa. Michael. 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 That's fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Shall we play another round? How are people feeling? <laughs> oh God! I'm warm. Play one more. Yeah, now Everyone's we're ready. Warm. We got to do it we're again. Ready. My hands yes. are sweaty. Oh, yeah. How are your knee? How are your knees? Weak? They're weak. My palms. <laughs> cool. Yeah. No further questions. <laughs> I've been practicing with this this guy all day. Sorry, what? Oh, oh a marionette. What are, you, what are you practicing, man? You've been not make him walk. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were testing your quips on him. <laughs> That's I amazing. Like I don't like it. <laughs> I'm in love with That's his fuel. Is he wearing a Hawaiian shirt and pants? Yeah. It's floral anyway. It's beautiful. Yeah, thanks. Oh, let's. Uh, let's <laughs> joke now. Get him out of here. <laughs> the jokes. Oh. Okay, let's play. <laughs> So what are your guys' like hopes and dreams? Honestly, looking at my answers that I submitted, I hope that this <laughs> fails. <laughs> down before this game starts because it is an embarrassment. Um, but it'll be well, it'll be interesting to see what happens on the field. I mean, like, who's to say? Like, maybe we'll all just discover like a great inside joke among friends, and it'll yeah, just go it's down into this butthole. Yeah. <laughs> Eric, get your answer in. <laughs> you guys fucking walking up marionette across the he's... screen like a slow nightmare. <laughs> the You're testing fate. Hurry, you're just is your answer. Oh my just god. Gonna don't. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna Oh my gosh, I was so scared. <laughs> he's so calm though. I mean, yeah. Yeah, he's where he's drinking two types of wine. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Honestly, you can never have too many nights alone with my fun boy Santa or <laughs> goddamn marionettes. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> goddamn is another tricky word. Is it two or is it one? I, believe it's I don't one, know. But 
I don't think it matters. Because well, usually when you're dating... Two words. <laughs> wow! <laughs> My fuck voice. Yeah, really <laughs> oh, we've got a friend online. The next big romance novel no, for the love of... Okay. Oh, scary. Dog Backwards is like um, that movie Tenet. <laughs> I haven't seen Tenet. Everything's just backwards. Spoilers! Uh, <laughs> someone went to a movie theater in COVID crisis. <laughs> I did. There was only four of us. <laughs> was it worth it? No, no, no. Tenet worth it? If I had gotten COVID from watching that horrible movie, that would have been actually the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Michael Bay presents. I did a doo doo in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> or Megan Fox. <laughs> Ew, I hate that it's panties, not I just know. pants. <laughs> <laughs> so much more upsetting that it's pants. <laughs> it's an upsetting word in general, anywhere it shows up. Oh. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Santa's <laughs> <pissed>. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Quiplash with Santa turned into just Santa getting creamed at Quiplash and being mad about it. That's what you like? <laughs> Uh-oh. Get her on the naughty list. Oh, is. You're, all, you're all fucking terrible. <laughs> Santa, you have gotten very blue as soon Stop as uh, we passed the election. Stop wearing Santa! <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that it eats it, because it is that it is a butthole, you know, because it's like they eat it and then they poo it. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that Santa's here. <laughs> I mean, you've got to give it to Earth, right? That's great. <laughs> okay, maybe not. <laughs> I wish the K on the corn was backwards, though. I tried so hard. That's why I almost ran out of time. <laughs> yeah, I would have voted for that, but. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Strong opinions on both accounts. <laughs> I want to. You know, that's Trevor. surprising coming from Santa. You know, <laughs> I want to shout out Trevor, who is our the one person actually playing and voting as the audience. So every tiebreaker, he's the one breaking all the ties. <laughs> So, oh. Shall we dance? Sorry. Shall we dance it. or fuck off? <laughs> shall we dance? That's the best. Eric. Okay. Oh. After you like to dance, like it's clear. All an answer. Those two. <laughs> Wait, Eric. Are you drinking a little rosé bottle? Yeah. Damn. <laughs> I yeah, like your home. I'm just having a little bit of rosé. <laughs> Is it okay. sparkling rosé? Yeah, let's see. Wow. Oh, Very nice. fancy. Like it's New Year's Eve at your house. Must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> we got robbed, but no one died. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that to be like a name of a memoir, you know? Yeah. All right. I think it's time for a thrip lash. Gentle okay. music playing. Ugh. Little cutie. Oh, little cutie. Little back cutie back up there, there, man. I'm firmly in the middle. Oh, boy. You're like a cat, little cutie. You like to sit at the top the whole game and then come down at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Oh, 
Who's Michael? I am. Who said that? <laughs> I am. <laughs> Why do you uh, ask? Well, there's one that has your name. In, there's a question that has your name in it, so I just want to make sure. I wanted to see who I was going to write about. Okay. Oh, yeah, wow. Okay. Wow. Way to reveal. Wow. <laughs> You know, Mike, you seem pretty, like, pretty laid back for someone who hasn't submitted their answers. Well, I'm listening to you uh, talking about me. <laughs> well, guys, I submitted mine, and it was not even close to being finished, and I did a typo. <laughs> Watch it win. It's not a sentence. <laughs> Well, the, the answer yeah. don't one, so. Yeah, but don't is, you'll see. <laughs> oh, there we are. All right, come on. Here we go. Santa's going to win. See, this is exciting right down the butthole. <laughs> it's your big moment on stage. You find your spotlight, face the audience, and. Oh, I hope it's poop. <laughs> your pants walk home. Mom says it's okay. Blast a righteous fever. <laughs> okay. Fever. No wrong answers on this one. No. Oh, okay. One. Yeah, we're having a good time here. Righteous fever. Damn. Oh, I tried to put the wrong one. I mean, nice the is great. Oh my god. <laughs> I put a lot of work into that answer. An awesome side effect of climate change, hopefully. <laughs> so fucking why would... here, though. <laughs> Wait, why would it be why free haircut? That's a fair <laughs> question. <laughs> well, that's like the one thing that's gonna happen. <laughs> why like every not? answer has been a joke, and this is the one I'm questioning. <laughs> <laughs> There should be there should be a spin-off game where you get to explain your answer. Wow, it's Relax. a lot of poop out a lot of poop. It's you know, it's a tough game. <laughs> I feel there's gotta be a game called Pooping Pandas. There, that's just gotta be yeah. And what do you do? Get kids games are so disgusting now. I I'm know, like, they really are. They are gross. They're all like, dad's pooping. And you gotta smack dad's poo. And you gotta get it in the toilet before mom gets home. And <laughs> <laughs> like, what? In an alternate reality. We don't play with Blush Apart. <laughs> if that came from Cody, I'm gonna lose my mind. Uh, very good, very good. Uh, <laughs> suck each other's dicks and ass. I wish. Oh man. I approve hard. <laughs> there's g after COVID, there's gonna be one party for sure where everyone just goes right <laughs> to it. That's definitely happening all throughout. Freaks having an eye. That's a cool name. The name of Michael's signature dance move. Eric says, <laughs> oh, "He I'm waves Michael. and says, I am Michael.'" <laughs> Honestly, those are both moves I would. I do. like. I like. I am yeah, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> and I only said that because that's what you did. <laughs> <laughs> that was fair. That's fair. Well, it was either that or sucking dicks and asses, so I don't know what you mean. <laughs> 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 With our just act. This is, yeah. <laughs> Are these both unfinished? <laughs> no. You remember when Santa had sex with a military man and his no, wife? That's incompetent. Okay. <laughs> Mine's unfinished. <laughs> this this does require Eric's spin-off game of what not going to finish either. Fuck a military just... man with you is a scary <laughs> pornography. <laughs> Santa out of the military <laughs> guy. The most important lesson in a social media class for seniors is just forget it. Don't die. <laughs> Listen, we love. That's a sad one. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. But it would be a funny show. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great pitch. Yeah. <laughs> it's sad, but... The senior citizens. <laughs> they want to <laughs> yeah. the media. I mean, that's what we have. <laughs> Not so one of the book. But just like imagine it in like the prettiest font. <laughs> <laughs> Do my dead wife. Oh no. Santa. Whoa. Damn Santa. Is Santa gonna be number one? Oh no, I'm way in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, I can't handle it. Santa wins. There's no way I'm gonna win. Look at me. No <laughs> oh, yeah, you're so low. Why am I dead in the middle? I don't even move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, oh, wow, Santa. Flash. Oh, third flash. I thought we were done. <laughs> Damn. Right, here we go. I mean, a lot of these, again, these little icons look quite sad. Well, because we haven't answered yet. But then you don't see them get happy when you answer. They go right into the, the, the chunk in the middle. They have their game face on, and they're not fucking around. <laughs> You know, like when you order Little Caesars and you get that little dough ball in the middle? Do they still yeah. do that? Oh, yeah, they do. <laughs> little Caesars doesn't deliver to me, and I'm very upset about that. I, I wish that would. They deliver to you. How? What do you mean, how? Look it up, Apple. <laughs> Santa's little had Caesars it. seems like more of a walk-in place to me. It does. You know, they opened up some new place. ones in the, in the west side of Toronto. Oh, little this Caesars? is exciting news. Thanks, Ja. Santa? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm a big Little Caesars fan, to be honest. Oh, it's really good. Oh, I mean, it's like, the for the price, you can't, can't argue. Oh, for the price. Okay. I've never had Little Caesars. Oh, it's great. Yeah, isn't it's it kind of just greasy? It's better than Domino's? Oh, better than Domino's. I actually, guys, I love Domino's. What are you going to do? I know, me too. Hey, we all love Domino's. Food sponsored by me, fuck me, eat me. I love both of these so much. Whoa, I didn't hear the avatar in his. Wowza. The banana is really excited. Three words you don't want to hear someone use to describe your genitals. Wow. This is another suck me, fuck me one. Eric, like, oh. <laughs> 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 Everything must go is pretty big. Oh, no. What a news. <laughs> wow. Everado got out of this scot free. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Santa did too. Yeah, I'm so so, shocked. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's oh, Santa, Santa, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Wow, a tie. Uh, the three things Batman insists on doing every day. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, man. Listen, I love I a little work on therapy Batman homework. Would have time to both fuck and suck. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> Rock hard rager is pretty big. Yeah, I like rock hard rager. <laughs> yeah. VJ work on therapy homework. <laughs> it gotta, killed me. You got to do it every day. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> You gotta show up every day. Every day. <laughs> the three most satisfying things to scream from a mountaintop. <laughs> oh, it's 
it's the slow reveal that's very <laughs> yeah i really cool. like this one a lot yeah. <laughs> the one with Michael Douglas. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> uh, it's a nice scene. Yeah. <laughs> and something game. Yeah, the, the word you're looking for is the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The movie that. Oh, here we go. Let's find out. Oh, oh, wow. oh wow. wow. Little cutie. Wow. <laughs> Win, I don't have to go out to deliver the title. Damn. Oh, yeah. I think it's Michael won the last time, though. Duty. I did a doo doo in my panties. He's a good uh, How are people feeling? Do they want to do one more round? We've got. Well, I guess to answer your earlier question, I just I would just like to find something um, that I enjoy doing and then. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, Eric has a nice life. Yeah. Also, Eric, what did you mean by haircut? Oh, great question. Um, <laughs> well, I figured if there was global warming, um, it's going to get hotter. Mm -hmm. So the government might want to step in and <laughs> implement something. <laughs> Uh, free haircutting system so that people didn't overheat. Amazing. Does anyone else, would anyone like to question anyone's um, quiplash? <sighs> I think that was the only one, right? That was the only that one. Okay. The only one. <laughs> there. I would like to question one. Sure. Um, I guess this one would be to Vite. <laughs> so aggressive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do what? I do we like the marionette or no? Like <laughs> yeah, it wasn't clear. It seemed like you kind of liked it. No, yeah. I don't like it. it yeah, it'll like come it. to my no. Get out of there! Actually, it's so creepy to me. Uh, <laughs> oh, we got rid of it now. Okay. Sorry. Uh, okay. Good. 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 Oh wow. Well, um, yeah. So I, I will just say that we've got eight minutes left till the end of this, or we could just play on forever until we all collapse. Mm. Mm. Those are the two options. <laughs> do people want to do one more round, or what are they feeling? All right, quick eight minute round. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do, do it. it. You, like, you answer like, don't even think about it. Don't even okay. think about it. All right, last think about round. This one. Now this one's for the belt. Okay, here we go. Okay, okay, a little cutie. He knows how to uh -oh. play. I gotta be, I gotta be a little cutie. All right, let's get him. <laughs> Ugh, this is wasting our time. Uh. <laughs> Has it ever? Okay. Watch did tell me. Has it ever been this shockingly slow? It's been like this, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't let you skip the tutorial in this one. I don't think so. Okay. Wow, everyone's really concentrating. It's really <laughs> concentrated. I really like that Santa has not once, um, you know, changed his voice and he's really staying in character <laughs> this whole time. That's who Thank he is. You, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Santa. I just really want some really nice moisturizer this year. You need it. For some reason, I felt like <laughs> I to, to answer these, and like I answered them like truthfully. For some oh wow! Reason. I answered mine truthfully for too. Job or something. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes that's nice—just vulnerability, you know. Just really yeah. telling people, like showing people who you are. Peel back the layers. That's mm -hmm. what I say. I would say, you know, final round. Don't worry. Don't be funny. Don't be funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everyone what tries to be funny in this game. That's how that's how you're supposed to do comedy anyways, you know? You just I do have tell your oh, truth. Sorry. No, no. 
Please no. interrupt me. No, no. I do have friends that play this with their family and they do answer it um, earnestly. And I can say their report is it's not very fun at all. <laughs> I thought maybe it would just be like randomly way funnier. It, it might, maybe it is just a sensible answer. Yeah. It's like a good way to get to know your family. Oh, yeah. Weirdly enough, the NFL has agreed to let players celebrate touchdowns by a <laughs> concussion oh, no. movie. No answer. Okay, Vite, it's true. That is true. Yeah, cancel the NFL. I'm rewatching Friday Night Lights, and it's it's sad. It's hard. Who's that girl? Something that makes you go, ugh, fine, Wait, I'll do it. Wait, is that girl the computer? <laughs> I think Ew, Santa Sloppy ass crap. Oh, it's, it's so it's so gnarly. <laughs> and then it's like eat mushrooms is the alternative. <laughs> no. I like eat mushrooms. Though. That's really first of all, Santa calling his own ass crack a sloppy ass crack. <laughs> okay, which one of you used the Xerox to make copies of? <laughs> it's like, like a bottle with a small beard. <laughs> uh, I was hoping it, one of these would say Santa's sloppy bottle. I know. <laughs> I wish I wrote uh, What looks like a butthole with a small beard? Uh, not really oh, last chance is not quite oh. sure. Oh. <laughs> Trevor <laughs> prevented you from getting that quiplash. Oh, wow. Audience oh, still loves Trevor. me. That's all I got. I ran a sad when they saw the pinata was full of. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> 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 These are both so dark. Like, is the daughter dead? <laughs> is she dead? <laughs> yeah, where has she been? She just got yeah, unfortunately, she has passed. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh no, Mike! <laughs> wow. Oh, what? Uh, That's a quiplash. But the real, the, the real animals inside would also be. <laughs> yeah. Is that uh, a truth like or dare? Kids these days play truth or. <laughs> no answer. Guys, who the fuck is that girl? You're saving me. Is. That girl's saving me. I didn't even vote. <laughs> who is that girl? Stacey? No, Stacey? I'm not that girl. Why do hot single why do hot singles in your area want to talk to you? Probably because I want to a concussion movie alone or understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No <laughs> I also love a comma in this game. Oh yeah, yeah punctuation goes a long way. Oh my god, that one's fun. Oh Trevor, you are doing me dirty. <laughs> a fifty-fifty split. Dude, I need it. I need it to live. Alice in Wonderland is weird, but it makes more sense than Alice in Santa's <laughs> pretty damn deep between two of me. First of all, I'm loving the Santa's ass content. <laughs> How <laughs> deep, though, you know? I hope no one in my family is watching. Oh, damn deep. Santa, you did it yourself? Santa's <laughs> nasty. Santa, Santa has, knows what we like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's Santa true. Santa's, Santa's ass. For a wedding to be yeah. legal in Florida, blank must be present at the ceremony. <laughs> guy, if you, I mean, be, it's, it's <laughs> is he really guy? Is he yeah. really guy? guy Fieri? Gay weddings, several gay weddings. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he officiated a lot of gay weddings. Yeah, Aww. in Florida. Tons, like a Guy bunch Fieri. of them on the day that it went, it became legal or something. Okay, first of all, Santa's getting pretty casual. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Santa's background's different now. Like no. <laughs> December twenty sixth. Santa has so that has so raises so many questions. I know. It's so Hold on, are we? We're on the first yes, level of this. Is second oh, round. Fuck, yeah. This is gonna take forever. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted this. I know, I know. It's but guys, look, you did it. Twelve hours. Good job. Woo! Yay! Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> the I almost just ended there. But. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, the hat is back on, and I think we're all pretty thankful for that. Um... Okay, honestly, I know I spelled one of my answers wrong. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> it's midnight. Michael, Mariana, how are you feeling? 12 hours? Delirious. Yeah, that's the right <laughs> word. <laughs> Hungry. Also. Mm. Have you guys been on the whole time, the whole 12 hours? Uh, almost, yeah. Too much? Damn. Well, I mean, we're not in every show, but we're around. Come back in between. It's Man. been a long day. <laughs> it's been a day. And Stacey, it's been fun, too. Though. Stacy yeah. too has been here for ninety nine percent of it as well. That's I did wild. leave to uh, to shower at some point. It was really uh, really beautiful. It was really lovely. I can't wait to do I that. Oh, I know. Me too. I showered right before, but I am ready. I've been in this onesie. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, it's it's like, just immediately just the thought of being like, I gotta shower because like, you know what? Oh no. Oh yes. That girl. <laughs> Please have me go up against that girl. <laughs> she's she's a she's a liar. Really, whoever that girl is, peace out. The least convincing excuse for that hickey. Oh, <laughs> that girl. girl! <laughs> Ev. It really cool. is Ev's turn. <laughs> I don't like that we don't even get to vote. Like, what if we wanted to vote to the other side? What do mannequins do when the department store closes? <laughs> oh, today's to special Weiss. reference. Mouth stuff on Santa and they're bad they're at bad it. They're bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> Rhyming is a tough word to spell, and I'll, I'll just put myself out there and say that. Um, so Santa, way to go with your uh, hat off. Oh, I have bad. mouth stuff on Santa. I figured that that was Josh, because that's a, that's a today's special reference, and... Mm -hmm. uh, no one knows that show anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, good. it's good. Yeah, it's a great show. What are you talking it's about? Good. I that love is... it, yeah. I just don't hear about it anymore. Oh. <laughs> rock, rock, Ranger. <laughs> Listen, we love a callback <laughs> here. Never. Oh, <laughs> 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 what will it be? I do love processed meat. <laughs> <laughs> hard word. Hard word. <laughs> processed. Didn't even notice. A little secret. If the line for the bathroom is too long, just... Oh, this is going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking shit right there. This oh, is two this... very sensible answers. Yeah. <laughs> it made me laugh a lot. Yes. Oh, I like the little banana avatar. He's so cute. Is this music on Quiplash? Yeah. I got into no. jazz through Quiplash. Dude. Fucking that girl. <laughs> jazz. I think Stacy put this music on, right? This isn't Quiplash. Uh, no, that yeah, this is just some royalty-free stuff. If I oh, if people okay. want me to change it up, I can. Oh, I love no, it. I like it. Oh, okay. On? <laughs> it, I could not figure out what the fuck this meant. <laughs> I stared at it for so long. <laughs> not to get to them. Yeah, that's right. It's yeah. a tough one. It's a tough one. I get where you're, I get where both are coming from, <laughs> on this. <laughs> oh. Ooh, a solid pickup line from a hockey player. <laughs> okay. I love, okay. I love, ending, I love ending with a comma on this. Is yeah. very, very cute. It keeps you wanting more. 
very cute. I haven't been able to move past Tom Brady kissing his son, and, and I won't. I, it's, I can't. It's all so strange. I don't know about this, but I assumed he kissed him on the mouth. Yeah, right on the lips. He's yeah, getting a weird insane. massage, and then he... That? Well, he oh kisses God. him, and then he calls him back for a better kiss. What? Oh, that's bizarre. <laughs> that's fucked. <laughs> <laughs> you like during a massage, like he was getting massage, and he goes, "Hey, man, get back here. Give me, give me some goods." Yeah, that's Ooh. all. All of that. I don't like it. I don't like that. Just have a little, little YouTube little of it. People shouldn't touch their parents. That's a normal thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very strict, hard and fast rule. Do not touch them under any circumstances. Good for them. Oh, I'm going to drop. It was so nice being at the top. Bye. Ooh. He'd say, you're right beside like Dak Dak Girl. <laughs> Dak Girl doesn't even exist. <laughs> the third round. Dad Girl is third not flash. even dead last. A lot on the line here because if Santa wins, I gotta make a long trip to the North Pole to <laughs> deliver this oh, yeah. Well, I'm actually gonna be in the neighborhood pretty soon. Oh, good. Yeah, you can just pick it up from me then. Yeah, twelve days. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I hate this. It's the final round of the twelve-hour marathon. We've all got it. We've all got to put our best foot forward here. Oh, don't. Don't. Now you're making it more. The As best. As I was typing the word ass. So. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what that girl will say. Yeah, we'll find out. Nothing. She's taking so long to fill out all of her stuff. <laughs> hey, is that girl yeah. an audience person? Or like, She's like, who is that girl? I that don't must know. have been someone that just joined from the audience and then didn't want to Left. play anymore and just took off. Yeah. They're yeah. like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, oh, Although that girl does look like every audience member at an improv show that's like, do not pick me, please. Just <laughs> eyes away. That girl, hurry up. Uh, <laughs> Eric, hurry up. <laughs> Eric's petting a masterpiece. <laughs> Mine makes absolutely no sense, I think. So. Oh, so we just gotta wait for the time to run out, and then why don't yeah. we just? Last round. round. Here we go. Follow these three survival tips if you're lost in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> good. Good. That's... <laughs> oh, so good. That is amazing. What three roles would challenge even Meryl Streep? <laughs> they love Meryl Streep on Flash. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, both of these are great. My <laughs> mouth? <laughs> Santa's dick, Santa's balls, my mouth. <laughs> I love this new ending to Quiplash. Like, this is really <laughs> it for me. <laughs> <laughs> also, I made the mistake of watching John Wick 3 first, or the la latest one, and he doesn't talk in it, and I didn't understand that. Um, Why does he lose his voice in the second one, like no, Ariel? He, he just fights. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Three weird times to just start yelling, vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> Making your bed, cleaning your toilet, French in your trash. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, French in your trench. Michael, okay. Interesting. <laughs> I don't like Michael stuff. Yeah. That's classic Michael phrase. Super quiplash? What the fuck does that mean? I mean <laughs> Is Michael gonna that. win? Yes. Oh god, three weird things to make out of wood. <laughs> <laughs> Dick and ass. <laughs> oh, it's so hard to pass up on it telling me to vote for it, though. <laughs> I, 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 it's, it's, really, it's really... It's um, really sad watching Eric 
and how much he hates every second of this. And <laughs> also, Eric, you don't like this? Cover I think <laughs> Eric's having a great time. Eric, why don't you <laughs> like it? Someone, uh... someone walked by and he had to cover his screen because <laughs> he was like, no. Cool. Is that what happened, Eric? <laughs> Did I misunderstand? Oh, no, oh, you're you muted, mean? Eric. Oh, no wonder you sound miserable. <laughs> I, was, I was doing that for their sake. Yeah. <laughs> in case they didn't want to be on this. Oh, 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 that's really that's nice. You're hiding that's nice. No. Michael, you won. How? Sorry, BJ. How? <laughs> I was the one person that shouldn't have won. <laughs> oh, man, you're coming in oh. hot. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, you can be on. Well, well, we did it. You, 12 you, hours. You and Good job, Michael everyone. Were, that's our known you? enemies is that correct yeah michael's my my one rival we do have a raging feud that is on hold for these 12 days yeah actually michael he wrote me a facebook message and he said haha we're in a feud but not for now because i have to give you information <laughs> yeah i love the drama yeah, yeah. it's pretty good thank yeah. you everyone for coming to our uh crazy quiplash hour with uh santa santa thank you for being here thank you santa <laughs> and, uh, santa, santa, why? <laughs> santa i have some help for you for your uh sloppy butthole if oh, you go good. to uh manscape.com use the discount code boo at checkout you can get 20 percent off and free shipping it's got a little light on it so you can see your bum hole Oh, Damn. Cody, Cody, oh. are you just surrounded by photos of yourself? Uh, yeah, it's my Christmas decorations. Weird. <laughs> okay, we love it. Very <laughs> Fucking pack of matches and a soy sauce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, short well, on time. It's like a full murderer's house oh. you live in. <laughs> All right, well, um, well, gotta go. Yes, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, what a lovely time! I'm gonna say goodbye to everyone here. Thank you so much for playing. Thank you. Uh, Congratulations, Sonar! Thank, thank you, you. thank you for being. Thank you. For being a thank you. Uh, thank bye, you everyone. No. Oops. <laughs> well, oh, Santa can go. Um, we did it. We did it. You did it. We did it. Twelve we hours. Did. Oh, wow. I cannot so believe lot. we did it and it's done. It's We did it. We, it's done. Thank you to everyone who has listened. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed, everyone who has signed up. We have 12 amazing days left of content on both our Patreon and on our YouTube channel. So make sure to subscribe. Uh, Michael, Mariana, I'll leave the rest to you. So whatever you'd like to say. Oh, I, I, I'm extremely grateful to you. Stacy, I know you're gone now, but thank you so much for everything and for being here all day and doing tons and tons of production work. And, um, uh, and thank yeah. you, Michael, for hosting with me and with Stacy and being an all around awesome uh, person. And, uh, you know, I love Sonar. Yeah, it's like thank a cult. you. I'll we'll come here for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. Uh, but yes, thank you, and thanks, Stacy, of course, and thanks everyone for coming and subscribing and everything. It's been an exhausting <laughs> day, and I am going straight to sleep. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go watch uh, 90 Day Fiance in bed. But and thank you to all of the people who uh, gave us their time and their amazing podcasts and their amazing guests and everyone. Thank yeah. you so, 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 so much. much. So much fun stuff happened. And it's all, I think, Stacey, this is all going to be up on YouTube except for the one little copyright uh, situation. Yes. Everything will be up and then we will be um, cutting some of our favorite moments and putting them on our YouTube channel so you can all enjoy. Yeah. So make sure to subscribe again to YouTube.com. Uh, to our channel and to our Patreon and become a pod pal. Yeah, um, go, um, you know, toss us two bucks if you liked what you saw and uh, or five if you want access to things uh, like a brand new podcast we put out today and also come back here tomorrow, 9 p.m. for Happy Good. Hell yeah. All right. Sweet. Thanks so cool. much, everyone. Have Bye, a good everyone. night. Bye. Bye.